Welcome back to Metro Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is a Tuesday afternoon. We are only slightly behind schedule. Did I eat enough food today? No. Is he going to get more and more unhinged as the hunger levels increase throughout this afternoon until he's finally yelling at Daily Cast for some reason? It's not its fault. Uh, how's everyone doing? It is April 16th. What a mess he is. How's everyone? How's everyone? Uh, we're not streaming on Thursday, mind you. We have a uh, mansion running to go to. That's going to be fun. For those who don't know what that is, shout out to Dan B, who's been organizing this event in which a mansion is rented out, literally a mansion uh, on the East Coast of America. And you just go there and you hang out for a bit. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to see some people I haven't seen in a really long time and just get like hang out. Can I get a birthday shout out? Aaron, is it your birthday? Is it your birthday, Aaron? For real? Holy crap. I hit the button on my stream deck that says HBD and it just gives me an exclamation mark with yellow. Normally, this is where the birthday music is meant to come in. Everyone say happy birthday to Shoe Flower in chat. Why is Maddie just yelled happy birthday from the other room, Aaron? How? Why is the button not working? I have a button for this. Ugh. Um, how's it going? What are, what are your plans? You doing anything cool? You going out on the town? I, I'm sorry about the button. We were meant to be prepared for this. Um, happy birthday, Shu. Yeah, Daniel, how's it going, Jai? Made it on time. Welcome. But have a great time at Mansion Runner. Been doing some RAM deck building with Colava. Oh, for Mansion Ram? From Ram Runner? Mansion Ram Runner? What's the Random Access Memories website? Happy birthday, Shu. says Connor as well. Shout out to Danby. Yo, Sophie, how's it going? Excited to see you on the weekend. Maybe this will help me pick Mansion Runner decks. I think I've actually figured out my Mansion Runner deck. I haven't figured out the second one. The problem is I've been playing um, World Tree Ari and I'm loving it. I'm like undefeated on JNet, uh, so like kind of a big deal. Uh, but also the games are like 45 minutes and it's double sided voice. And that's like with computer shuffling. So I don't know how to play that. I honestly have no idea. Hot Pursuit had an ads, but actually had a Master Rank Steve. <laughs> yeah, people are wondering who the Penguin is. The Penguin is on Hot Pursuit. Hey Izzy. Excited to see you too. Eric, also going to see you on the weekend. Hi stream. Is this Hot Pursuit out of Seb? It's Hot Pursuit out of Seb. We want to make Seb faster. I think if I can make Seb playable, I'll be happy. Um, so far, the IDs in this new set have been kind of uh, not very good. Never looked at it that closely on balance. Penguins on bikes. If we get Andre and Pat dual discs, will we play? I honestly don't think I know what a dual disc is. Yeah, there's a penguin on this one. It's a weird one, huh? There's a little penguin up there. Penguin robot. No idea. What, hopefully, it can hang out with the owl robot from Aqua Ceres. They can just be bird friends. Hey, Diogen. Hey, Cold Lava. How's it going? Are you going to Mansion Runner instead of an NPC to you? That's exactly it. Yes. For what is worth, the Mansion Runner was scheduled way before uh, Toronto and NPC, so I'm not going to be there. I'm defeating on Jenny. Get a load of this guy. Is Ram Runner like Ram Ranch? I don't know what Ram Ranch is, Joe. I don't I don't know what that is. Tech issues plague us all. Not too bad. Yo, Yeti, how's it going? Um, yo, Neon Static. I laughed yesterday. So yesterday there was a stream on Neon Static. Uh, let's just go to YouTube. We'll get it there. And Jeff was on. And it's good content. I was surprised that Jeff was there. And then, uh, like, Jeff actually, like, sitting down and be like, okay, Eric, this is how you're going to play your decks better for the event. Because we did on Thursday. It didn't work out that well. It's fine. It's fine. But this thumbnail. So it's really easy to, like, make fun of people for YouTube thumbnails. I think this is generally a good thumbnail. Um, I don't like the fact that my YouTube thumbnails have me, like, smiling. I hate it. I wish it could be any other way. But it does work. And it's good. But this thumbnail is really, really funny to me because I sometimes will pick up my partner's phone and go through her YouTube scroll and like this sort of styling and color palette is like so common because she knits and crochets. So if you go to knitting, this sort of like pastiche or not pastiche, but like a montage of a bunch of people with white outlines, right? Like it's everywhere in the knitting community. Um, I'm not going to share if I'm going to get the same color palette too. Oh, uh, for her is like, yeah, okay. One in every uh, three videos looks like that. These are more tutorialized, so they're not. But if it's just like blog stuff, like, oh, this is what I did this week. This is my my wool haul and all this sort of stuff. It's all like this. Um, so you're on something, I think. But I saw it because I was making fun of like white outlines. Yeah, exactly like this. Uh, obviously, this stuff works really well. So it's just someone's knitting with pasta. Oh, that's really cool. Um, I thought it was really, really funny. Ram Ranch is something you should definitely Google off stream. It sounds like something I don't want to Google. I'm getting called out for my white outline YouTube thumbnail. Yo, hey, look, it works. It's good. Um, there's a lot of things on YouTube that just have to exist. It's just so funny because it was a punchline in our household to be like, oh, what's this? Uh, soft pink and purple and white outlines. Oh, what's this next video? And it's all the same. It's very, very funny. 
Yeah, Maddox is yelling from the other room. My fiance is big on watching knitting YouTube and mostly UK knitters not seeing loads of those outlines. For real, Connor. Oh, it's everywhere. It's really everywhere. This is what I meant to chip in and defend the ID and their playability. Seb seems fine. Yeah, Seb seems okay. Wonder if it's geographical. No, because I don't. Th I think a lot of the the knitters my partner watches are from Europe. I don't think a lot of them are American. Some of them are, or like North American. My partner just yelled a lot of Canada. I'm playing at the Apex CEO this Saturday, contemplating playing the AMT on Sunday as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, AMT on Sunday is actually like good time zone for this time zone. So I don't know how good it is for you, Jai. Let's check when this is. But it is like another North American. There's a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Obviously, there's Mansion Runner. Uh, there's an AMT. Apparently, there's an Apex CEO. That's sick. Those are almost always online, I'm assuming. Uh, usually, they are. Oh, this is not what I wanted to open. But um, yeah, there's another AMT at a time zone. I think it starts at like reasonable time it starts like 10 p.m local okay so not great for you but for me it's probably fine Axie wrote this i don't know Axie did stuff for for nsg america time zone yeah so it starts at 9 a.m cdt which i think is a bit later for me at yeah, 10 a.m one hour later it's probably just how youtube wants creators to promote a brand via the thumbnail i think it's just people like that's the thing with youtube is like everyone just copies everyone else and i mean that in like sometimes the best way possible sometimes the worst way possible like i'm guilty of it everyone's guilty of it but like a lot of times <laughs> it's holding a monster uh you just do something else that works and it works it's a good thumbnail it's genuinely a very very good neon static thumbnail i like it a lot i'm just gonna make the outlines incrementally more obnoxious each stream until it consumes the whole background <laughs> i like it and I, I do like it like i i want to be very clear i saw that thumbnail i'm like yo that's sick i want to click on it and then like i also showed my partner because it's funny The regional white people aesthetic. I don't know what that means. Kaya, how's it going? It's okay. We copy deck lists from people all the time. Thumbnails are just the next step. Then it'll be ideas. Um, yeah, cool. So what we're going to do on the stream is we're going to play Seb and try to make Seb faster. I know I've said this before. I've been bringing Seb's to events exclusively for the last like four weeks. How long have Seb's been out? And I find Seb's ability to be pretty slow. Uh, overall, pretty, pretty slow. And I've been getting lucky that I'm not playing against fast matchups. So just so we're on the same page. This is one of the first sub decks we built on, on stream. We built it on like day two or the first day the set was out. Uh, I think we built this after we saw, um, I think, Nichan's girl playing a version like this that was like doing Aqua Ceres crew spam. Aqua Ceres crew is almost definitely the strongest connection in the set. And it's very, very good. And so the idea is that we're playing all the good tag based stuff. So like rogue trading is in theory good. So you spend two clicks to gain six credits and install a, a, a connection. And then you have to clear the tag. And so basically you got the connection for free because you cleared the tag. The problem is you can't spend three clicks on your turn doing that. You just can't. And never, you can't spend three clicks on your turn. It's not that good. Uh, so you have to make this faster. Now, in the criminal card pool, there's definitely a bunch of ways to do that. However, they're all install heavy. So uh, I just want to shout out that Seb, uh, Sebastian K, not Seb Seb, Netrunner DB, I don't know what the deck is called, but brought this to like the first AMT, I think, after the set came out. And it was the sort of idea, like meeting of the minds for um, for seven as, and you get it with four one nine. Oh wow, wow, wow! Uh, with DJ Fenris, right? And I played the deck once or twice off stream, and I think it's also a bit slow and a bit fragile. It has a lot of like power pieces that are one ofs inherently. Like the deck kind of does ascend a bit once you use Thunder Art Gallery to clear tags during runs, and then you can use Chesva cards and stall cards. Like that's a really cool interaction. Um, however, it's hard to do that because there's only so many ways that you can remove tags during runs. But that being said, you get to play this like cool pool of cards that you know are influenced. Like Julie is turns out it's pretty good criminal. Having three copies of No Free Lunch and you know. Flip switch means you can flow tags, not that you're playing the console. In fact, uh, we're playing Hermes in this one, which is pretty interesting. We're not playing that many hardware in ads. And this list seems okay, but it also seems kind of slow. And it also has no win condition. I think this is the problem I had with ads or with, with Seb is like you have no win condition. This is your win condition. And I don't think compared to any other card in standard, this is a good enough win condition, let alone this criminal one doesn't have ice destruction. So you just got nothing like I was surprised to see this deck is only on one hot pursuit, which I think is like one of the best tag me cards in the entire format right now. But you just don't have a win condition in this deck. And I'd argue this one probably also doesn't have a win condition. It's win condition is like eventually get down to Iru and get down to Manuel Laches Jumura and hope it's good enough. And it honestly isn't. I don't think it is. I mean, consider playing 3x rogue trading 3x Julie just to save a click on road. Um, I think rogue trading is a bit better than I sorry. Julie's a bit better than I think it is. I think installing Julie to make your rogue trading better is like. You're slowing yourself down to make your slow card slightly faster. 
Obviously, it's flexible, but the idea is that you can make road trading a single click is probably fine, but I'm not sure that's the fastest thing you can do, right? Like, I just think road trading is a bit too slow for the meta. Like, if, you know, heaven forbid, the game sped up a fair bit, it seems like, on the corp side. Like, Holloman is speeding the game up. Like, I do not think you can spend, you know, rogue trading, installing the Julie, then clearing the tag, so next turn you can rogue trading for one click to clear the tag. Like, it still just seems very, very clumsy. And ideally, Julie's being installed by the ID. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You're installing Julie for free with the ID, and then it helps on the next turn. Because mind you, a weird thing with Julie, too, is that it's one of these first time per turn triggers, not whenever or when. So if you've already used the rogue trading, you can't use Julie to get value from, like, Hannah. That being said, Hannah is actually one of the best cards in the deck, and this deck is not on any Hannah. I think Hannah is one of the fastest ways to make Seb better, because you can just use Hannah almost however you want. This is my first version of the list. I was on two Hannah. You should definitely be on three Hannah. I don't think you should be on three Valentine. I think you should be on two, probably, maybe even one. Depends how other many other ways you have to clear tags. I think also like buy a bands is another way to make Seb a bit faster because you do clear that tag pretty consistently. But yeah, this card's just good because you want to just run, get a click. Like this is what I want. When I play Seb, I want ways to get tags that make sense on tempo. I don't want to spend two clicks to gain six credits. I want to run the remote server for free. And if the run's unsuccessful, let alone you can just jack out, you can get a tag. So that means like that's a clickless tag as opposed to like spending three clicks to get your first six credits. Like that feels kind of rough. Hannah and Julie so many clicks. Yeah, when Hannah and Julie fire in the same turn, it is disgusting. They easily have like a seven click turn. It's kind of wild. Hey, Cinderin, by the way, how's it going? I'm cooking a Julie Telework Tau, Court of CTT is honestly not awful. Yeah, it's really hard to evaluate, right? Like how good Julie is outside of, um, you know, the sort of tag package, right? Like, is she good enough with Telework? Are you just making your Telework into a daily cast? Yeah, maybe. Do you have enough resources that you can click in that deck? Honestly, maybe. You have Nuka, you have Julie, like it's fine. But it feels like, I don't know, it feels kind of honest. It feels maybe too honest. I'm surprised sub decks aren't doing the Mamaku package. Yeah, Game of Droids, how's it going? That's our next step. So this is where we ended up doing. We made the deck a bit faster, a bit slower. We realized that we really liked Amakua and Leech because firstly, we're going to trash some amount of ice. And then on top of that, we have Aqua Serus crew, which not only is pro ice destruction, it also just gives you minus two strength, which means that it's very easy for an Amakua to get through multiple pieces of ice. I like that a lot. Now, as we went, we were trying some other archetypes. We ended up trying to build these sort of like Patrick Hoshiko decks, which we saw in the last meta do well, and people are still playing them really well. Shout out to Off 1515. And the idea is that you play like all the ice destruction, you play Aeneas Informant, technically a connection, and then you play Amakua and you just rip through all the ice, right? Like this deck now has Hippo, Devil Chairman, Aeneas, as much, you know, destruction as you want. And so I thought like, why don't we play that package? Like, why don't we play that idea in Seb? And this is one of the last Seb decks I put together, and I don't think I've played it, which is... Oh, no, I brought this to an event, I think. Yeah, I did. So the idea is that you're on one Hippo, which you could play more, Devil Charm, Aqua Serus Crew, Amakua. And you're basically, now we're on Lago. We should be on three Lago, mind you. And we're also just doing the same sort of engine. Now, if you ask me, this is just a worse version of the Hoshiko deck. Because the Hoshiko deck is just faster. Patchwork is good. You could play Patchwork and Seb. I think you could. I think it's hard because I think Seb is a bit dependent on having a lot of stuff in hand because you need a way to get a tag. You need a connection. You need a way to remove the tag that makes sense. So getting rid of cards from your hand with Patchwork is a bit difficult as opposed to Hoshiko that just gets free cards every turn. Like Seb doesn't get free cards every turn, which is why I think we definitely should be on all three copies of Lago and probably only two Earth Rides because they're a bit expensive. Um, but this version just seems worse. Now, what seems good is this version of the deck is not on Aeneas Informant. Uh, it just isn't. It's on, like, having uh, Manuel be good enough. I also caught Iru. I feel like Iru is a bit slow, but she seems good. She's, like, the only win condition the deck really has. And then I started playing Stargate. And this seemed good. Like, actually, Stargate was really great because that was my problem with the other decks is once you got your rig up and you were pressuring stuff and destroying ice, you still could not control how long the game was going to be. And I think once you're in a position where you can like remove the ice from the scoring remote server or R&D, Stargate allows you to control the game. You can trash upcoming ice. Obviously, you can trash win conditions. You can trash agendas. And I do think Stargate actually made a lot more sense because we have pressure. So the idea is we can sit back and like brood a bit as much as we don't want to do that and then like transition to pressure. So I think in my very limited testing, I like Ma. Yeah, Ma is another one that we want to consider. Like we're not playing any console. I think slotting a one of Ma doesn't make sense so much for the MU, but it gives you another win condition, right? Like it gives you this disruption as much as six credits on a slow card is pretty rough. And I'd argue that like I've seen people like install Ma's. I think we saw this last night on the stream, like playing Ma into uh, cohort guidance. Asa is like not a good thing you want to do, right? Like you're sometimes making them more powerful. Like I feel like a lot of the corp decks that this is going to struggle against are already fast enough that Ma is too slow. 
but against decks and like mall makes sense right like we have amakua we want to bounce the uh, the assets with hana like that's kind of nice i'm playing a singleton scrubber which i think is good for the meta um there's some good reasons to do it but it also does seem a bit too slow i went stargate solidarity badge may actually be a consideration safer how's it going so i don't like solidarity badge at all and that's because it just doesn't consistently do anything so we're saying that this card is only good in our deck when we install it when we put it on something on the table that trashes ice, so either Aqua Sarah's crew, my duo works, or, or Stargate, and then we have to fire one of those. The problem is you're more often or not in board states where you can't do those things. And I know personally as a player, I like to have my cards to be more versatile on more board states. I don't like a card that's going to draw us like maybe two to three cards in a game of Netrunner sometimes when we're set up. Obviously, you can float a tag. We're, we're trying not to float tags. I think if you're depending on Aqua Sarah's crew, like you just don't want to float tags period um because they shed they should trash this they definitely should trash this losing a card from hand is not as bad as losing an ice on the table during a run uh so yeah it just it i don't know it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me do you know what julian liberty counts as four credits for free yeah well two credits for free you pay julie but yeah things like that make sense these only draws maybe two three cards per game yes but immediately right now on turn one on turn two when you need it like, there's a difference between spending a click on a card that's going to draw a card maybe in a couple turns versus Diesel's playable right now. I don't know if you're joking or not, Shu. Diesel's great. <laughs> I like Diesel. If you're playing Stargate, you have to play Solidarity Badge as a big part of set plan. Yeah, sorry. I just I responded to Safer's comment above. I don't think so. I just don't think it fires enough. I don't think it consistently fires enough. We also only have 1x Stargate, so, like, good luck. Maybe we should play 2x Stargates, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Stargate's great with crew. Yeah, it is. I think 1x Eero is very strong in a lot of decks. I think 1x Eero is probably right. I think when we rebuild this deck, we'll probably consider 1x Eero because it is just good. It is just a nice way to see R and D see multiple cards. I guess Seb's fundamental issue is the fact that there are only six tempo positive tag removal cards in the whole deck, Frendo and Wheels. Yep. I really like, uh, so this came up in the tier list and Jeff was saying this. It's like, why Jeff doesn't think Seb's going to be good is that Seb consistently has the same cost he has to deal with turn over, turn over, turn over, turn. And it's hard to build a deck where like you have a downside built into your, your card pool, right? Like getting over a single downside easy, getting over constant downsides, pretty difficult. And so right now clearing tags is annoying. It's slow. It's tedious. It's cumbersome. There's ways to make it better, I think, obviously. The thing is like playing no free lunch and playing, um, you know, like flip switch. To me, that's not great. Like if I'm spending a credit and an install and an influence just to clear a tag clicklessly and saving two credits, like this is not a great card. Uh, same with no free lunch. And the problem is like if Seb had a lot of card draw, maybe you could afford getting these down, but Seb just doesn't have enough card draw. So that's also kind of tricky. Imagine with Citadel, yeah, with Citadel Sanctuary, this would be absurd. You don't have a link, but like this is the thing. It's like back in the day, you could get away with playing rogue trading. Not only was the game slightly slower, is that this card cleared tags clicklessly and creditlessly, right? Like the idea that rogue trading was two clicks for six credits was fine because it was fundamentally two clicks for six credits. This is two clicks for six credits, and then you still have to clear the tag, and you're hoping subs tech makes it an upside, which means you're committing to three clicks on a turn to do a thing, which you can't really do. You can't really spend three clicks on a thing. Hey Gwen, bought binders for my new Netrunner cards today. Very excited to get back into offline play. Yo, what kind of binders do you get? Seb feels like doing backflips to gain an extra click so you can spend it to clear the tag. Yes, yeah. Seb feels good. Like when Seb does something, it feels better than it is. I think that's my understanding too. It's like it feels good, but it's not. Card draws amanuensis. Yeah, I know, but then you have to play amanuensis. How about two networking and two Valentina? Galhar, how's it going? So I think Valentina is just better than networking. That being said, networking plus Valentina is good. But at the end of the day, it's not even so much that spending two credits to remove the tag is annoying. It's like having to remove the tag is annoying. I think we can try networking. I think we could. It might be fine. I don't think I've actually seen a Seb play networking. And then networking on top of Valentina means it's actually free. But I think reducing the cost of the tag is not the biggest issue. It's not that it's expensive. It's that it's slow. And against like an Asa group deck, what are you doing? And then like against an Asa group deck, like if you want to tech your Banhar deck or sorry, your uh, Seb deck to be a bit faster, you have to play Banhar. Then as soon as you're playing Banhar, it challenges the fact that Seb needs a sculpted hand and then like you just lose networking to random nonsense. Also, why doesn't Seb have Link? I feel like thematically he should. Uh, I think it's because he's a public figure. So people know who he is. Chenchling. I think that's my two cents is that Link is generally meant to be some sort of like layer of obfuscation. And I think he's like up front and center that corporations know who he is. So he's not linked up. That'd be my guess. Just got some big blue ones from WH Smith. Functional. Eh, yeah, functional is great. Yeah, speed's the issue, not the cost. It's the speed. It's really difficult. 
I'd rather remove tags with wheels, second ability, and 3x wheels before playing some numbers and networking. Exactly, yeah. And, like, I honestly think privilege access to get wheels back is a good tempo turn. Like, it's weird. It's weird. But, like, wheels is just the most powerful way to interact with tags in a tempo positive way. That, like, risk-curring wheels, as much as I don't think privilege access is that slow, um, is feels like one of the best things a deck can do. I figure it was more that NSG's phasing out Trace. I think NSG's going to phase out Trace, but I think NSG's going to find out different ways to make Link interesting. Yeah. I do wonder if floating tag set with his console and dummy box might be a deck. I think Jeff tried it. Um, it's worth looking into. I think we can try it. As soon as you play dummy box, though, right? Like you have to build a strange deck and it costs influence. But you can't go full tag me. Like that's, you know, intentionally the design of Sebastian, is Sebastian, excuse me, is that you cannot go full tag me because your cards don't do anything. But that's like the unfortunate thing about dummy box is like dummy box is really good as like this pressure valve where you well not pressure valve it's like uh, it's a line of defense so you say like i'm going to go tag me but you cannot trash my resources the problem is like in seb you just functionally can't go tag me uh because it's really really bad for you self growth program wrecks you not only self growth program like um greasing the palm isn't as popular as it was not a lot of hb decks are playing it right now but yeah self growth program like a lot of the nbn decks as much as that matchup is a bit interesting because like their ice isn't that bad for you but then on the other side uh yeah if they hard hitting news you or oppo research you excuse me your id blocks is blank and then your best cards in the deck are blank like that's really unfun right like it's a really weird matchup where you feel like you can be a bit more aggressive because when they face check and res the pink you get install a connection like that feels nice but then the oppo research you and then you realize oh i don't have that much money i have to clear the tags and if i don't clear the tags i have a blank text box like that and my cards are unplayable like that's really really unfortunate i'm so surprised that we see a runner that says if you're tags you're unplayable uh because i, I don't know and for what it's worth i've been playing online and like r plus is the deck i run to the most out of everything it's awkward that dummy box isn't a connection. Yeah, that one doesn't matter too much. Uh, it protects itself with its own ability. It'd be cool if it was. That's true. Hey, Beagle, there's so many cards I've never seen. With Seb in general or other stuff? Welcome to the stream. Just install Thunder at Galleries for moving tag is less of a tempo hit. Yeah, that one's hard too. Yeah. It's tricky, but let's try and like keep that in mind and build a sub deck that we think is just as aggressive as possible and as fast as possible. So any card that says like, oh, this will pay off in like six clicks, we we ignore those and we just see what we can do on tempo with Seb. And my guess is like, just play Hoshiko uh, because like the best Seb card is Aqua Seris Crew. And I don't think you need Aqu Seb to play Aqua Seris Crew. I do think we're noticing that some runners are actually struggling to play Aha Stars crew intelligently. I think we saw like the, what is it? The vampire deck posted right now. Shout outs to uh, Koga. Yeah. Right. Like this deck, I think the only time I saw a play was against Tuno on Fight Club. And unfortunately it got bodied. Uh, but well, this deck got bodied, I mean, specifically, but uh, it seems interesting, but like paying four cuts for Aha Stars crew. And then, like, spending influence on Devil Charm, like, it actually genuinely is a bit slow and difficult. Penguin Stream, this means simulation reset? No, it just means the uh, the motorcycles. It's easy to theorize a finished rig with Seb is good, but getting there without Ace of Group scoring on seven turns is harder. Yes. And for what it's worth, I do think Seb has tools against that. I think Aqua Terrace Crew, for what it's worth, Banhar, maybe. But I think Aqua Terrace Crew and the fact that, like, you can on tempo smash into anything with Hannah is kind of cool. Like, that's been my favorite thing against, like, HB matchups. It's just, like, Hannah into the remote server. You do not care what happens. Worst case is an MIC, and a lot of the decks are running three MIC because people are realizing MIC is really good. Um, but, yeah, you just tempo into the remote server, and you don't give a shit. This deck looks like an Az that just Steve stole. It honestly does. It's really funny. It's on Masterwork and Steve. I think this deck, like, I'm convinced that this deck might be actually better in Az because the whole idea of getting Steve recursion, right? Like, the good corporations will stop you from doing that. So I wonder if just smoothing out the inside curve is a bit better because it has like a lot of hardware, a lot of jobs and connections. Like everything here is a connection besides daily cast. Like there's a big chance that this is just a better uh, uh, as deck. It's just like in theory, the idea of like recurring Aqua Seris Cruise seems really good. I just don't know how often it happens. Leaning into Julie and like the artist, that's a really slow card when it gone. How's it going, by the way? I, I don't know. We can try Julie. I'm not convinced Julie's good, but I think we have to try her a bit more. I also like when I built my first sub decks, I was like spending my first 14 influence on something on like Nuka's and rogue trading. That was 12 influence. And then I was like, wow, we're so influence restricted in Seb. And I genuinely think we don't play Nuka and I genuinely think we don't play rogue trading because they're both too slow. I think Nuka is better as a lagu. I think maybe you could play Nuka if you're leaning into um, Julie, but I think it's just a bit convoluted. Brennick, how's it going? How you doing? Good to see your arts on the run together stuff. That's really exciting. 
We're just getting to the Borealis stuff. Oh, yo, Borealis is a sick cycle. I think you're going to have fun. 3X Classic and stuff. I know it was like Jai's. Was it Jai's? Like two games in or whatever posted sub deck. It was like, Class X sick. You got to play it. And like, it is good. I just don't want to spend five influence on a one of. I'm not going to do it. It feels so weird to me. Like, I, I honestly feel some pressure where like we are now playing corp decks, like some of the best corp decks in the format that are playing one ofs. I don't know if this one's going to do it. This one's definitely going to do it. That are playing one ofs. If this deck draws the tributary versus doesn't draw the tributary, the game is actually fundamentally very different. And it's not a limit one per deck card. But functionally, a lot of people who are playing this are playing limit one per deck. And I know that's like something like it's not clear with the design of this card. Obviously, it is unique, but a lot of people have strong opinions on limit one per card designs. It was like the idea back in the day when you had um, what was it called? Rebirth. The idea of like Valencia rebirthed on turn one into Omar versus didn't draw the rebirth at all is two entirely different games two entirely different games right like do you want to play against somebody with two ids from turn one that they paid one influence and no cost to get on turn one and like i don't think tributary is as strong as obviously becoming omar but we're getting to that point where like do they draw their one of tributary has a huge impact on the games where like i think you can look at the data of like these are the games that asa group got the tributary down this is the win rate in that situation and these are the games where tributary didn't come down early this is what the win rates on that and i think it has an impact on it Tucana helps Tutor. Yeah, this deck is running Tucana specifically to get the Tributary out, which is like sick. And it kind of shows you how strong this thing is that you do want to kind of get it out in more board states. Like a lot of times your first score with Tucana will get you the Tributary, which is pretty buck wild. Uh, so I don't know how to feel about that because like Tributary is very good. I think in HB and PD, it's probably the deck that you can let it fire the most often. Like it's not backbreaking the way it can be in like Ag Infusion or in Asa or in Atea, I think might be the worst. The Jinteki ones just feel worse. But like this deck uses it well. It is just genuinely pretty annoying to deal with. And then there's other like ice strengthening stuff. As much as you want to complain about unique cards, I don't want to consider the rules confusion that would be arise from two, three tributaries active on the table. Oh, no, no, I'm glad. I'm glad it's not. But like the fact, it's not so much that like this card shouldn't be unique, but it's like the fact that this card has so much presence on the damn table and whether you get it and res it is like, I, I wouldn't say a crapshoot because I do. I know when I play tributary, I go out of my way to make sure the runner's going to try and run into it. Like I'll put my Rashid in from a tributary. I don't care. I just want the tributary. Uh, I, I don't even res the Rashida. Like who cares? Like you got to run this. Uh, but yeah, that's it's it's weird. It's very very strange. It feels very very volatile. Do you see tributary being banned in the future? How's it going? I don't know how to say your name at all. Sorry, I don't know if you can help me with that in the future. Do I think see it being banned? I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance that like. I think one of the cool parts about Netrunner for the last little while in the last competitive circuit is that we could do a lot of run-based stuff. Like, I've heard a lot of competitive players saying that you just cannot pay, like, run-based criminal because you just cannot let Tributary fire that often. And because the stats on this are, like, already over-costed and, or under-costed for what you get, uh, it's hard to just play, like, run-based stuff. Like, Sable is kind of in shambles. And so now we're seeing criminal decks playing, like, Los and, and Steve and stuff like that. And... I don't know. I've played more on the tributary side than the running into tributary side. I think it's also a card where like how people are going to think about what it is is going to change over time because currently people are misplaying into it. People are misplaying into it pretty commonly where they make a run, they inside job their moats over and then tributary moves over and they're like, ah, fuck. like that's a, that costs you the game. And I think that's something over time people are going to get better at playing around tributary. I think even as corporations understanding like sometimes they'll run archives. Do you move the tributary? No, you'd rather have it on HQ because that makes the math on running HQ a bit more difficult. That's more important than getting an incidental tributary fire. And I think also runners are going to learn how to like interact into this. Like sometimes when this is on R&D, run it. If they draw a card, obviously like you can see deeper in R&D just as a corporation. Don't let it end up on R&D. You have a lot of control over where it is. So I think it's going to be interesting. I think as a whole, Tributary has the chance to squeeze out a lot of the design space, right? <laughs> it's like if you're on the team that wants more people to play red team, like, good luck. So if Tributary's existence causes a lot of this sort of stuff to be hard to use or and like just, you know, invalidates large parts of the card pool, especially the parts of the card pool that are inherently the most interesting in Netrunner running. Uh, yeah, I could see it getting targeted by the ban list. Unique is probably considered a downside in designer devs, so they probably upped the overall power to make it worthwhile to play, at least for Unique Ice. Yeah, Unique Ice are meant to be that, right? Like, oh, the one of showed up, it's now, you know, the narrative has changed. You've hit a fork in the road. But it's like, it's a different thing. It's like, also for what it's worth, like, I've been hitting Cloud Eater a lot. And like, it's hard to me to play around Cloud Eater uh, because it's a one of. 
right? So you make more risky runs. Maybe that's good. It's six strength. So sometimes to break math, you can break a non but not this. I'd rather hit a non than this like 10 times out of 10. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how to feel about it. unique ice because I feel like unique ice, you you make less good decisions into it because inherently it's just not very common, right? Like drafter is really, really good. Imagine drafter was unique. You would start face checking more wantonly. And if a drafter fired at a bad spot, like it can cost you the game. Not always, but it can. And so having the most powerful abilities attached to unique things that are like their existence exists so unprevalently or inconsistently that it's not worth playing around. And then when you don't play around it, it messes you up. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, that's a really hard design thing to nail. Because like, should you play around the one of, you know, Cloud Eater? Probably not. But admittedly, if it face checks, it does like destroy your criminal board and the game's over. I don't know. Hey, just tuning in. I feel like Tributary Fears is similar to Boris Formicary and they got banned. Yeah, Boris, I think Formicary it was only banned because it has interactions with other stuff in the game. Like, Formicary would not be banned if the text on it was different. Well, that's obviously a silly sentence. But the only reason Formicary was banned is because it uh, it interacts with these cards that happen during bre approach as opposed to on successful run. If these all said when the runner makes a successful run, then they pay the cost. Formicary is totally fine. The problem with Formicary is not what it does to the game, it's how it interacts with other stuff. Uh, it's just unfortunate. Hippo's the natural enemy of Tributary. It's just that Hippo's not commonly played currently. Only Hippo comes back, Tributary stocks will go down. Not really, because Tributary is actually pretty good into Hippo. It protects your other stuff. Um, I don't know about that. There's like things you can do to make the Tributary more meaningful, or less meaningful, right? There's a lot of things you can do. You can hush it. Cool, that works. Notice that most of the things I'm going to say here are entirely anarch cards. Yeah, you can hush it. Good. It doesn't move around. That's totally fine. You can put a botulus on it. Yeah, that's cool. You can break the subroutines that matter. That that works. Obviously, they can purge you up, but that's something. Like, there's ways to deal with it. Uh, as a criminal, I think the best thing you have is you can put a Fizerum on it. Now, you have to pay two every time to bypass it because you can't choose to only bypass one subroutine. You pay all or nothing. Uh, that's okay, but, like, that seems still pretty good for the corporation and still in all of these circumstances where you have ways to deal with it the card still naturally plays around inside job it naturally just dunks on banhar it naturally just dunks on um alarm clock as much as i've seen people like click one alarm run alarm clock just so that they pin down the uh the, the what's it called on on whatever central it is right like it just works against parts of the card pool that are some of the strongest parts in the card pool like yeah does it eat kit yeah it's annoying it to kit but like, that's a weird thing, too, is like what it does on top of all of that is still pretty heavy handed for a three cost dice. Is it not Hush? Hey, Ned, Dad. Yeah, I think Hush is a better option than Hippo. I don't understand the effect and the high strength. Like Naked Buzzsaw breaks us for four credits, which is reserved to hoard him, which is only good because of shitty breakpoints. Lol. Turdock. Yeah, that's the one thing that like really gets me with this ice is like even if this wasn't an ice that can move around, we probably wouldn't play it. But the numbers are just so good. The numbers on this are really good. Especially a four cost code gate. Like, that's very, very good. And I've seen multiple. I know the last time I played this, I had a player in my meta who broke it multiple times for four cards with Buzzsaw because you have to kind of do it. And that sucks. Maybe that's going to make people rely less on Buzzsaw. Probably not. Sun high pitch, ye. Soon ye. Thank you, Beagle. All this question about RWR makes me appreciate just how hard it is to design good cards. Oh, yeah, card design is really, really hard. It's really, really hard. Like, Tributary is cool. I think Tributary is a really cool card. I just think people are not going to like it. I think it also did, like, adds a lot to the mental load. Uh, I was playing against Rahit at an event, and Rahit said this this idea that comes from, um I think, from Magic, that, like, blocking is for defenders, or math is for defenders, or blockers. I don't know what it is. Magic something. And that's the idea. It's like, this card, you res it. I think as a corporation, it actually does force you to decide when to move it, and if at all. And there are some interesting decisions. I think some people are going to move it inappropriately, right? They're going to move it and it's going to cost them the game. Like, that can happen. But the amount of mental load this adds to your opponent when you res a three-cost dice, like, it fundamentally changes the game. That now every single turn has to be much more heavily considered. And it, the difference between this being res and this not being res, playing the matchup, is night and day. Like, that is my biggest thing, is that this being res entirely adds another layer of complication to the whole game, uh, which is wild. Rover, Algo, and Tributary? Yeah, or Eavesdrop, right? I played against somebody, and I, <laughs> I played against somebody. This is on film. It probably makes it onto the channel. But, like, click one in, like, Reality Plus. Oh, I forget who he's playing against. It's somebody, um, was it Jester, maybe? They did Secure and Protect to get a Tributary onto R&D. So now two things. I know the Tributary is on R&D. 
and this is in reality plus so i'm like what the heck is going on and then i can piece it together i do find one later that if you eavesdrop on the tributary every time that you encounter it you have to do trace three to take a tag and that's really annoying if i'm not mistaken this text is not on the card so you can't even hush it like this text is unhushable i'm pretty sure because the condition gets the card to text not the card correct me if i'm wrong about that and so i just played the whole game not running r d ever now is that a good thing probably not like they still iced up r d on turn one for one secure and protect but it's uh yeah like that's just going to be annoying it's just gonna be annoying so i was just like i'm not running r d anymore i just don't want to have to deal like imagine every single first run for that last rest of the game i have to deal with this text on top of tributaries text like that's just way too much mental load for me i'm out for is reasonable yeah for is one of the best ones you can do putting a tranquilizer on it seems good too i you would just res it like that's the thing it's like flip i think you're right you can de-res it I've actually emergency shut down. We emergency shut down a tributary in one of our last games. But when that happened is like, you still just cannot run the tributary anymore. Like it just ices a server. So maybe you need to like coax it to archives and then shut it down uh, and just never run archives again. So it's hard, it's hard. Tranquilize is kind of good on trip. Lakura, it's hard. It's really, really difficult. I was enjoying playing Inversivator and Kit and turning into a benefit for me, moving all the other ice around them, putting the trip where I wanted. That's pretty fun. I don't think Tranquilizer works well. I think Tranquilizer is way too slow. My trip solution is cube on buzzsaw turbine, which is extremely unreasonable response. <laughs> I know the responses to it are nuclear. It's buzz and turbine. The response is play the part of Netrunner that a lot of people don't like. It's like get down your buzzsaw, get down your turbine, and it's just a one credit tax. And yeah, am I playing World Tree Ari that has two turbines in it? Yes. And it's okay because I have two turbines in the deck, right? Like that's my answer. My answer is don't play run based criminal, play turbine. I think also like Tacobi is more playable now in criminal, but then you still have to break the thing. These numbers are really good. See someone who's gotten over the drop of anger and slot machine. Matt is for blockers. Tributary Lies is for rest and whoredom. Yeah, it does. Jason, how's it going? It's absurd. We have this card. Okay, so what do you think about this card? This card existed back in the day and it didn't see a lot of play. Mind you, back then we did have something like Buzzsaw called Yogg. And mind you, four cost code gates are technically unyoggable because imagine Yogg is like Buzzsaw plus plus it breaks all code gates for free but it can't boost its own strength so you're relying on other things like leech and ice carver but these stats are really good now you might be like this subroutine's nonsense and it is but this makes it a positional ice yeah it protects us it's assets it protects upgrades it protects agendas that require credits but if you just put this in front of another like thing that they have to break with credits this becomes an end the run subroutine now this card didn't pop off but these are very good stats there's only like five or six cards right now in the format that their strength is higher than their cost. Mind you, this is the same like Texas Eli 1.0 and Eli 1.0 used to be one of the most busted cards in the game. This used to be a restricted card. Like there was like balancing around Eli because Eli was too prominent because you broke this for four credits with the common fractor in the game. It was called Crowder. It was 2012 to 20. Well, this came out in 2013, maybe. Um, yeah, we're streaming again. Yeah, Veronica doesn't stop. How's it going? I think RSVP would be evaluated better. We weren't really ETR pilled back in the day. Yeah, nobody liked RSVP, but like RSVP has, like if I see this in draft, I'm taking it. It just has good numbers on it. Almost every breaker breaks this for more than you res it, which is unfortunately true about tributary. Every runner breaks it for more than you res it. That's hard. Hush says cannot gain abilities. I don't think so. I think Hush just blanks the non subroutine text. Oh, what the heck? You're right. Does it work? Cannot gain abilities? What does eavesdrop say? What does cannot gain abilities even mean? How's it, but it, 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 nowhere does it say the word gain. I don't know what this means. That's actually a really good point, Ned Dad. I did not know it said that. Yeah, the token has the ability, though. The condition has the ability, not the ice. So I'm pretty sure you can't hush it. I don't know why this matters, but future proofing and nuclear future proofing. Tributary is the most important as a meaningful non AP Jinteki ice. Uh, Tashi Bull is really good, but yeah, Matthew, we asked for better Jinteki eyes, and then the paw curled real hard, huh? Thanks for showing how to pronounce the name. The pitch part is perfect. Oh, sick. Okay, I need to get that good. Ah, where is it? I'm going to do it. Soon high pitch? Yi short from high. Yi. Soon yi. That's the best I got. Soon yi. I'll try and remember that. Thank you. Hush doesn't stop Eve Drop. There we go. There's the wizard. Thank you. You're correct. Abilities on the condition counter, not the ice, so ice doesn't stop it. Buzzsaw Ice Carver also does it. Yeah, it does it. But like, okay, this is the thing. It's like everyone's going to say, yeah, Buzzsaw Ice Carver does it. 
everything buzzsaw plus like it, it takes seven credits worth of installables to like deal with this ice right because in theory almost every ice in the game loses to buzzsaw ice carver the code gate ones obviously two turbines yeah i'm playing world tree you can play two turbines the noble carver plus one sucker the thing about Tacobi is it quickly gets out of control it can yeah if it spirals it spirals and yet you have Authenticator. Yeah, yeah, we do. We should try Authenticator a bit more. It's weird. Positional ice is the usual weakness, but Trip fixes his own weakness. Yeah, Trip is just gas. The positionality on Trip is like straight fire. It's We also saw this card before, which is like, this card moves, but you have to move it yourself. And like, this is one of those sort of like tributary, proto tributaries where it's like, it does something for, you know, the world behind it, doesn't end the run, but its numbers are ridiculous. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, Zato Grid, uh, but Zato Grid is not so much that the card gains. The card actually gets the text. Because, yeah, this does say the word gains, but the ice has the text, so I'm assuming Hush doesn't say printed text. Oh, it says loses all... Like, technically, I think this fire... It's clear. It makes it more clear, but I'm pretty sure this clause deals with Zato. Because Zato gives the text to the ice. It doesn't... It's not like a condition text. Right, like if I'm not mistaken, um, Brasilia doesn't actually impact the ice. Well, it does, but not in a way that anything's gained. So like Brasilia does not get hushed. Does it work against like Warren and Fatuma? Uh, maybe? The runner loses available the... Okay, the Byroid ice gains. You don't really want to hush Byroids, but... Abilities. Is it ability? I guess so. I think you can hush a Fatuma. Fatima, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Also, for what it's worth, I tried a 3x tributary eavesdrop R plus asset spam deck. The combos are relevant to the game planned because R plus and have an Aries scored. Yeah, it's a nuclear option. Does tributary belong in a tail? Like, do you need more ice install in that? Uh, yes. But being being not so much because tributary like gives you ice install. Tributary can install agendas. So um, I've been playing a bunch of different Asa decks. This is the one I brought to an event, and I actually want to try playing three tributary in a tail because it's the same thing. The games where you get and the games that you don't get it are messed up. In Atea specifically, you want to get your second server, but I generally don't ice up my second server really well. So Tributary inherently just ices up your second server, right? Like it just gives you this aura of defense, which is good because you can't afford everything. But the problem is if they run through Tributary, uh, you can install ice on server one or server two and then install an agenda or asset from hand and then score it out next turn. So you literally cannot let Tributary fire in Atea. It's the only, I think, ID that can install an agenda with Tributary. Uh, Asa Group can't. Uh, and then Agonfusion obviously can't, but it's still good. Looks like it's a spam bot. Yeah, it is a spam bot. Let me destroy it. How do I destroy? Ooh, Whisper. Report. Thank you. Uh, it's spam. Can you give us more information? Spam. It was spam. Tell us more. When you, I said spam twice. Okay, thank you. I was very happy to put a cube on on Tributary. Maybe the best Atea card they printed. Yeah, it's really, really good for Atea. Tributary causing as much slow play as a scored falsely. Yeah, it really is. It does just put like a, a fog across the whole table. It's It really slows the game down. Sometimes I just don't install Hush so I don't have to look up rules. <laughs> Sometimes I just run into Tributary because I'm tired of doing the math. It would work because Airblades also works on Zato Grid. Oh, I didn't know Airblades did. It's an on encounter? Hush beats Fatuma. Hush should beat Fatuma, okay. Zato doesn't ask if you want to trash the ice. It gives the ability to ask for trashing. It's formulated exactly such that Hush kills Zato. Yeah, I was aware of that. Are separate teams abilities? I think so. I still want more Jinteki that is not hinged on net damage. Atea slaps importing ETR ice doesn't. I hear you. Um, for what it's worth, Boto is actually really good. This is kind of what we wanted from the faction. I think you can make a good ice rig, right? Like, I think the Codegate slot is a bit, you know, weird. Thimble rig is really good. Tributary is really good. I would argue that my problems, like, okay, I know I said this on stream last time. The barriers are now in Jinteki are good. You have Boto, you have Tattoo Bola, you're, you're golden. My wish list to play, like, functional, non-net damage Jinteki is the agenda suite doesn't make sense. There's no agenda that you're excited to score out, right? Like, this is exactly the sort of deck where half your agendas probably are neutral. If you want to play, like, three timely public release, three off-world office, one Nisei, like, that's an agenda suite. Okay, great. Um, the code gates are a bit more, like, they do feel like code gates. They're not, like, 
they're the sort of things that let you through, but then they do weird things to you. And I'm okay with that as much as this card is just a good tempo card if it fires. Um, I think my biggest problem is like sentries. Because as long as cards like Sizenton exist, you cannot really afford to safely face check. And as soon as you can safely face check, you cannot get cool sentries. I think for what it's worth, Wayland also has this issue right now because of, you know, Stavka and stuff like that. But like Drafter is one of the most busted cards in the game right now for so many reasons the math is good its ability as the subroutines are really really good the math on it is just fundamentally very good but like drafters playable in hb because people will face check without a killer the faction that is like designed especially for like old heads to be like don't face check into Nuteki without a killer you'll die means that you just cannot functionally print like non-important sentries i'd argue you could play pup again like you could play tithe like this could exist again and it'd be a thing that like oh you choose to break it or not and it's just a financial equation but i just want cards like this that like the face checking into the sentries right now feels so bad that you will just never the subroutines will almost never fire and the sentries can be cool when the subroutines fire and it doesn't cost you the game like you will fire drafters sometimes you have to fire a drafter and it makes an interesting game i think it's really hard it's really hard when um you just can't like the the sentries are so toxic that you just never interact with them without full safety. Karuna over Vampy? No, uh, exact opposite for me. So Karuna over Sisenton, yes, but paying Karuna, paying four credits to do two net damage and end the run, that's like I sleep. But paying five credits to draw two cards and take two cards out of the runner's hand, I don't sleep, and like that's really really good. Like, that's why I like fundamentally Vampiranasa. How did we go too far? Is Vampiranasa, I'll just open Vampiranasa. Is Vampiranasa is Vamp, I'm not sure it's Vampire or Vampire is Vampire. Um, there's just good tempo swing. Nobody breaks this well. Like, the Buzzsaw decks don't break this well. The Unity decks don't break this well. The Lobby Soman decks don't break this well. All of these subroutines are very, very good for you. Uh, almost none of the subroutines are good for you and Karuna, they're just not good for the runner. Right? I do think Karuna over Sisenton makes some sense, and that's only if people are playing more Carmen than they are anything else, because Carmen has to boost for Karuna, but not for Sisenton. I don't think I'm seeing enough Carmen that I'd actually rather play Sisenton, and then I'll play Vampy. Vampy is just such a good card, especially in a deck that wants to go faster. Like, draw two cards on the nice is really good. I think Kanagi gain abilities might be for ordering resolution. Weird. You can't refuse stuff. <laughs> Offer you can't refuse. Hey, Barty, how's it going? I better try to finish my video before you do. I don't think I'm going to get a video out on this one. I'll be honest. Um, I don't think the deck is that good. Right? Like, I, I think it's worth noting that some decks are interesting. I think this deck is interesting and you should play it. But I think this deck gets, just gets bodied by a lot of the good stuff in the meta right now. And I try not to put out decks that are like, oh, this is cool and it kind of works. But like, if you play against a tier one deck, you'll get bodied. I think this deck gets bodied. Right? Like, it doesn't have a strong economy. It just doesn't. And then in the late game, it's like Adrian Sice is the only way you can win the game. So I, I I played against I played more of this online and like my results were kind of like get to five points and lose. So I also tried the like more flick fact version that was going three timely public release. And I do think my versions could have more money. Like I probably should be playing a bit more operation economy. Uh, the seamless launches were really good. But then to me, it just felt like, did you get your ice on the table quickly? See, or your agendas and seamless them. And if you did not seamless your agendas in the first couple turns, you lost the game. So that felt more like Casino than I'd ha be happy with. Seamless makes the deck better. I agree, Daijin, but Seamless made the deck feel like Slot Machine. And it's not my favorite kind of Netrunner. To be like, if did you draw hot? If you draw hot, you win. If you don't draw hot, you don't win. Because I think this deck functionally is tricky to win um, with this Agenda Suite. Because like doing a timely public release into a timely public release is good. But you also need to like, you need to do something. Your agendas have to do more for you. I do think uh, the TPR combo is really, really hot, though. Hello, police. I just witnessed the Byroad getting murdered. That Taya deck looks awesome. Yo, Bane, try it out. It's really fun. Um, I brought this to an event, had a great time with it. It's on 14 influence. I do think Seamless Launch has a huge home into this sort of deck. I play this slightly more Glacier than Rush, like a mid-range between Glacier and Push. Uh, Taya fires a fair bit. Um, you have good combos. Uh, it's actually really cool. I like it a lot. I've enjoyed my stream. Fishal, thank you. Can you post a link to that Taya deck? Yeah, let me post it in chat. It's really fun. It's really quite fun. If you want to see another one, Steven posted one. Uh, well, Geist, I think, is his handle online. I'm behind on chat, though. Hey, Fix me. Uh, yeah, this deck is generally pretty cool. I just don't think it's, like, good enough. It's fun, though. 
If you're seamless thing and drawing hot, try Iswak. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think Iswak might be better. This is a nightmare for Labisomim. We need a 14 to Deki agenda. I don't know. Gives you about four credits when you <laughs> purge fire scanners. This deck, um, I played against Labisomim, and it's actually okay. You have enough barriers that, like, especially with Thimble Rig and moving around ice with Thimble Rig is quite valuable. Uh, that you have some good, like, I you can make a three barrier subroutine uh, remote, and that's actually kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Gonna do hot girl shit for my birthday. Ciao, yo, enjoy it. Happy birthday. I've been having more success on Jinteki Glacier and restoring humanity rather than Atea. I like to add an econ. Yeah, this is my my issue with like getting really excited about this deck too. Is like this deck fundamentally is some midpoint between Jinteki Tempo and Jinteki Glacier. And right now the Jinteki Glacier decks are just really, really good. So if you want to build like, you know, the Lacosta Glacier deck, there's almost no reason not to be playing Ag Infusion. And like, yeah, Sokka won an event with this thing and it, it's just good. It's just very, very good right now. Like Jinteki Glacier is in a really good spot for many reasons. And so like having an Atea deck that just doesn't, like this is the thing that I was struggling with. The narrative with this Atea deck is like, if you want to play Jinteki Glacier, play this. And then the Atea deck just like does slightly different in Jinteki Glacier. But because I'm not like swinging into the sort of like timely public release combo decks, uh, I, it didn't feel that interesting. And so, like, if you want to do something that's more results oriented, I'd go for this. This also probably teaches you better Netrunner fundamentals. But maybe there's something worth being like, oh, this deck is kind of fun, though. But I just don't think it's, like, the best at anything it does. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's some pessimism there. But, like, I've been bodied by playing this Chinteki deck, and it just feels like you got nothing. My game with Rush Atea finished often by turn 10, face checking size, tons of win condition, wink, wink. You're debating me into, into a conversation I don't want to have, Tarjan. Oh, man. This is a third place deck not winning one in NPC. Oh, excuse me. Yes, it has been winning other events, though. It won an AMT. I think that's more accurate. I think Jai just brought it to an event. You get him, Jason. Get him, man in the moon. All right. Let's try and build a sub deck. We're a bit off track there, but I do love talking about Netrunner, so any excuse. All right. Let's make sub as fast as possible in a way that makes sense. So we're going to do two things. Firstly, we're going to look at every single card in the format that says the word tag. We're going to get false positives because we're going to see the word sabotage. That's a hard thing. We're trying Seb again. Tron, yeah, and don't even. Where's it going? So things that say tag, eye for an eye. Is this card good? I'd argue probably not. I'd probably just play an imp. I think it's really hard in Seb to play this. I think you could play this outside of Seb, maybe, if you really needed a disruption in the format. My guess is this is just way too expensive. Uh, Startup Seb is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I believe it. Manuensis is good because seven needs draw. Yeah, but they have the flow tags, and that's really, really difficult. Uh, I like Praxis. I honestly think Praxis as a three of is correct, as long as you have enough tempo things to get from your deck, uh, from your heap, that makes sense. So cards like this, playing two or three of, means that you can like just peel out with uh, your friend Hannah as many times as possible without like recourse. And I like that a fair bit. This threat three text is interesting. I don't think you have to build around it, but you definitely can. But I'm like a big privileged access gamer for now, and it's always felt like the best card in my hand, and it's almost always felt playable. Uh, I think that's the thing is like it's easy to see this card and be like I don't know if it's playable in every board state and the way that Seb uses his connections I think it almost always is I for I equals bad okay so that's all those cards other tag stuff criminal we have some good stuff here so things worth looking at networking arguably I'd say that the problem is the click compression removing the tag not the economy associated to the tag because most of the tag gaining stuff are economically viable um, so I don't know we can consider it now, these two are really cool. Hot Pursuit. This is the penguin on the motorcycle. This, mind you, this guy here you see in really low resolution is an FFG employee or was an FFG employee. Every once in a while, your card shows up, your face shows up on a likeness for being an FFG for a while. I don't know who this guy is, we were told. But anytime you see a person that looks clearly like a portrait, that is an FFG person. Uh, so, yeah, we want to play these. The big reason why I didn't run to Hot Pursuit immediately is I don't know how to get it off. Because I don't know what Seb's breaker suite is. And I don't know how soon people Ice HQ and or... I thought people would Ice HQ because they'd be scared of Eye for an Eye. I don't think that's the case. But uh, this is like one of the most best on-tempo HQ like tag cards. It just is. This one's interesting too. Play only if you made a successful run on the central server this turn. Install a card reducing its cost by 8 and take a tag. This used to be a pretty key card in Tag Me Archetypes because you used to play some very expensive cards. Uh, in the format, we don't have the console that cares about tags. But we still have Amina. Has Amina fallen off a bit? Yeah, people stopped playing about Amina. I honestly wonder if you can consider playing Amina. Remember Amina? I never forget Amina. Amina is one of my favorite cards. I think a three cost. Like the problem is you break you break tributary for four. <laughs> you break tributary for four. Oh, that's terrible. You break magnet for two. That's okay. 
the math on Amina is bad. Uh, <laughs> the math on Amina didn't used to be bad. The math on Amina actually used to be kind of good. Because, like, back in the day when Amina was considered, you had Fairchild 3.0 everywhere. And you broke Fairchild 3.0 for four credits in the Corp last one. Like, that was sick. Amina was killer. She was the sort of thing like, oh, if they could afford that and the game is continuing, like, I lost the game. Because credit denial is a really hard thing to deal with. And you lose a credit every turn. What else do you break? You break Gatekeeper for four. Max Gatekeeper. That's kind of cool. Uh, you break MIC, unfortunately, for four. That's not too bad. It's honestly not too bad. If this thing was four strength, though, it would be totally cracked. Uh, because you could break MIC, you could break Tributary for two. All that would be really good. Uh, I don't think we're going to play this in the sub deck because, like, we're never going to draw it, let alone get it down for free. But, like, just keep this in mind. It's cool. Lobi and Anarch. I think Lobi, you need to build your whole deck around. Shout out to Ba, who's playing, like, Lobi Anarch on stream yesterday. I don't think you really want to do this. Uh, it's not bad. But, like, the pro the thing is, like, with Lobi Somum in Shaper, let alone in Kit... You can rely on this subroutine or this like this ability. You can't rely on this ability. So you still need to pull in a barrier breaker. And then at the end of the day, it's like, okay, it's whatever. I mean, in KTCP means you break most code gates for two and makes the corp lose one. Tributary means 10 credits over the game for the corp. The thing is like with turbine and everything, you break most ice for one credit. But like if the answer is to pay 12 credits worth of installables before you can break a code gate for a functional price, uh, I probably don't like it. Breaks per honest. Yeah, that's true. You can use X space tag. Oh, that's actually a really good idea. Because then it, yeah, it doesn't do sabotage. Yeah, nice. That's a smart idea. Thank you. This is a cool card. Why don't people play it? Oh, wait, that's awful. That's why it used to be a lot better than it was. I don't think about how much it breaks Vampy for. Yeah, it breaks Vampy for uh, four and you don't break all of it. It's really, really funny. I mean, a turbine though. Yeah, okay. There aren't a ton of real options for click compression and tag removal outside of Baya and Valentina and Manuensis. Amanuensis gives you click compression, sort of. I think we're going to have to play Amanuensis, like, just to give it a shot. Like, this will probably be the dummy box Amanuensis deck. Uh, what else do we got? Tag, Shaper, nothing. In neutral, yeah, Baya Bands. Baya Bands is pretty good, as long as we can run. And I generally don't know how we run. Like, 3x Baya sounds okay, but then, like, how are you running? I don't know. F we'll find out together, I guess. What else do we got on hardware? Uh, we have to do all the factions. There's like only flip switch and amanuensis. And solidarity badge. Again, we're not trashing stuff consistently. If we ever build a deck and we realize, sorry, I punched the microphone, that we're trashing stuff considerably, uh, consistently, we can go back to this. Uh, flip switch is just too slow. This card has meta. Hey, for those who are an NPC Vancouver, what was what sort of op was Eric uh, Keelback playing? Was he playing Rococo op? Because that deck didn't get published. And like people just didn't bring Rococo op to to tournaments everyone asks how are you running no one asks why are you running <laughs> words are they've been running amanuenses and it felt good not punished too often and the draw is very good i believe it but it does change what your resource package is right like if your resource package is like relying on aqua serious crew the corp should just trash it and i don't think allowing the corp to trash our best winning card is worth two card draw hey dusty how's it going first time catching the stream welcome no Rococo rush. So why did people stop, like, not just, why did people not bring Rococo up to events? It just doesn't do anything. Solidarity badge plus imp is clickless tag removal and good pressure. I would just play Lou, though. Right, like, you're right, that's good, but then that's just a Lou deck. It's wild. It's like, it's even on Solidarity badge, what's the better clause? Draw a card or remove a tag? Technically, remove a tag is because you save two credits. But drawing a card is generally what you want to make Solidarity Badge work for you. It needs to push you forward. Maybe, obviously, if you remove a tag with Amanuensis, then this makes more sense. Coco Ab is so weird. It is weird. Seb brought new Venti to something? No? Pink Punk, what does that mean? God of War could be great. God of War is too expensive. I played God of War in my first version of the deck. It's way too expensive. F it. Let's try it. Let's try Amanuensis. We'll float some tags. Solidarity Badge, I don't think we're going to be trashing enough stuff. Uh, if we play, like, that's the problem. It's like, Playing Imp to make Solidarity Badge good is so sloth intensive because you have to play Imp. You probably have to play Simul Chip. Maybe we can just like practice Imps back. Yeah, let's just do things that I don't think make sense just to see how they go. I don't have to believe in it. Uh, so let's play two Solidarity Badges, say whatever. Think you want to hold the crew until the moment you want to use it? I think you want to put the crew down on the table when you take a tag. Right? I think Seb's really hard at holding cards. Like if you ever take a tag and don't install a connection, like then why are you playing Seb, you know? Man, you just draw two, remove the tag, make one credit with Valentina, repeat with Seb. Yeah, yeah, but like a lot of setup later. Like that's the sort of engine that like Hoshiko gets on turn one. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 
Like that's exactly the sort of engine that Lou gets on turn one, right? Without installing anything or installing a, sorry, a single solidarity badge. Like that's a problem. It's like we're trying to make Sebastian functional by functional, make him into another anarch that already does it well. Oh, I've got tech by for flip switch and they realize it loses to Lou, just destroy centrals even without tech. Okay, cool. That's good to hear. All right, now we have a lot of resources to look at. Bachlin, not bad. Three influence, but actually pretty good text, but three influence. I would play Bachlin when we play it in, in criminal if we're playing as uh, into uh into Seb. Hey Patrick, how you doing, man? Aqua Saris crew, it's pretty good. I think we'll play three of and then we'll see whether we'll cut it or not. Uh this is a card that only makes sense if you take a lot of tags, which we're not really going to do. Iru is probably a one of. I don't know. She's slow, but she's okay. We need a win condition. Uh I was thinking about Sebastian Case Mad Ob, not Rococo Holo Combo. Oh. This God of War trigger before Solidarity Badge? Uh, if your choice of options. So you can take the God of War tag and remove it. But ideally, if we're playing Amanuensis, we're already floating a tag anyway, so we don't have to do it. Uh, Hannah, really good. Friend of a friend. I think still really good. I've not been, like, super impressed by this card. It's been a bit, like, just more boring than I thought it'd be. Uh, you generally remove the tag with this because this is one of the only ways, in fact, to remove the tag in a way that makes sense. Uh, as much as there's obviously more money in this banana stand. Uh, Valentina. Can't tell how many we were on. Trickster Taka. Cool. We can take a tag from this. Infinite value. Infinite tags. Uh, then we're not going to play Rogue Trading because it's too slow. Manual is very, very good. I don't think you can play the deck without Manual. Okay. So, so far, we have no way to make runs. We have no multi axis besides the Manuel Achish Chimura. And that's it. So, we have to figure that out everywhere else. Am I the only one see, feeling so far with the new set that's mostly either smashed or I easily win depending on the matchup? I so far I managed way less close games than before. Maybe just me. Uh, Fix B, I have felt that. And this is why I've been struggling to put together like deck dives or stuff. I just feel like right now there's a bigger disparity between the good stuff and the non-good stuff. And it's like, it, like, it's hard to not be that way when there's like Haldeman and the remote server closing the game off like three turns sooner than normally it could happen without like showing the game is going to be closed. Like the amount of times people are scoring Bologna's with Haldeman's, it's messed up. Uh, so I agree. I have not been finding that many close games. My closest games the last couple of weeks have been just like we're on the last, which I don't know if it's like a tier one thing, but we're on the last knife. We're waiting for the last JChinu to go in. 26 cards in deck somehow. No money, no draw, no breaker, no win con. Yeah, hey, it's seven, 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 seven. <laughs> uh, we'll get the draw in. Is Mary good to shout with Manuel? No. So I don't like Mary. The reason why I don't like Mary is that she doesn't do anything. She's slow and clumsy. She's everything we want the deck not to be. As much as possible, because inherently Seb is really convoluted, you need cards that do something immediately and push you forward. So installing pretty for admittedly free, maybe, when we get a tag, just so that later on when we're in threat, we can get Eero down and then do something on top of that. Like, that seems really, really slow for us. I don't think Mary is beyond help, but I think for Mary to see play, it needs to be played in a deck that can consistently fire this ability as fast as possible. And so as fast as possible means things like Jailbreak, uh, things like uh, Trick Shot, stuff like that. But those decks have like six or to nine cards that can fire pretty, so she's probably worth it, or as opposed to like one in that requires setup. So not Paula's Cafe. Pretty's only playable in Zaya. I think she's playable in Shaper, the sort of like just hammer R&D Shapers. In Zaya, she's not bad. She's definitely not bad in Zaya. She plays in the Asha decks. Yeah, those sort of like shaper focused decks. You need just like your deck needs multiple ways for this to be worth anything, for this to be worth anything. My roommate is obsessed with Mary Manuel. I cannot sway him from his folly. I played into a lot of people that are playing this sort of like connection tribal decks out of shaper. And they're like in shaper, they're playing like Hermes and Pretty. And those decks to me, I don't love the matchup because it does feel a bit slot machine. Like you cannot stop them from running R&D throughout the entire game. So there's just turns where like, oh, I hope the three on R&D whiffs because Hermes is going to take the game apart. Don't love it. Don't love it. But I think a lot of people need that sort of design in the game to be like, oh, it's very easy. This is your goal. Just like slap shots. It's like just, you know, you're on your cul-de-sac. It's a Saturday morning. You're like 12 years old. The sun's out and you're just practicing your slap shots. Like it feels good. I don't know. This deck maybe wants Hermes if we're slow. Yeah, but we have to play on Menuenses. I do think Hermes, like you do have... You can do whatever you want with the console slot because the console slot makes no sense. Just play Contaminate? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. I think, I don't know. There's a little, enough of a virus in the meta that like doubling down on, on the conduit doesn't seem great. But those decks are playing like Iru in Shaper. And like, good luck icing archives against Shaper. Like you're not doing it. Or they're also playing like you are Tron. They're playing uh, Beatrice. 
So like none of those decks really want conduit. They're basically saying no matter what I'm getting to R&D because you cannot functionally ice both R&D and HQ and archives. Marion Mercury is great. Yeah, yeah, Mercury is one of the ones too because Mercury has, you know, that text on turn one. <laughs> saying shape error is bad. Okay. Now we have to build the rest of the deck so it does anything. So what's our, our breaker suite? Like, we could run functional breakers. In theory, Aqua Ceres crew works with functional breakers, right? Like, you can take a tag to get minus two strength. It's okay. That means that you can get away with, like, playing two Buzzsaw and two uh, Cleaver and then import, <laughs> import a killer. So, like, this is where we're getting to the point. Is like, to build a functional deck, can we even legally play Dummy Box? And I honestly don't know. Uh, we probably play three Sure Gamble. We probably play three Steel Skin. It's just kind of a really good Anor card. And we're going to be playing Lagu Piranha. Lagu sort of forces our hand to consider playing either Labor Rights or saying YOLO and or playing... Um, we don't really need Program Recursion because we have Praxis, but like, maybe? I think Boitata is not good enough. Like, Boitata is just probably not as good as playing Echelon. I don't know about Boitata. Like, we have some control over this because we do trash some of our cards. Not all of them, some of them. But, like, the even if you could get Boitata always with the this text active, I don't know if I would, like, write home about it. Like, it's good. But is it amazing? We, let's try it. We haven't played it. This is the sort of idea. We're just going to try stuff that I don't know about. Crew's doing nothing but giving us tags right now. It's trashing ice. Uh, we should play Devil Charm. You're right. Right now is the key, key uh, clause in that sentence. We don't need three of those. Uh, then we need a win condition. So I don't think it's going to be manual. I like, like we can't, we can't play twinning. <laughs> like that's a problem. You can't play twinning because you're going to be playing with the tag economy and you just can't play twinning. And twinning is the best anarch multi-axis. So like that stinks. I honestly think some designers at NSG were like so happy for Sebastian because it's like the only uh, anarch ever printed that doesn't want to play Paladin Puemo. And that's like a win, right? Stargate 2024. Stargate's actually underplayed. I think Stargate's pretty good. Not a fan of Boitata, but Leech works with it in Crew. Uh, Crew doesn't really work with it. Because it's your installed cards, right? Like, remember, we're building a Solidarity Badge deck. Like, we need to play three imps in here. Like, this is the problem. It's like, there's so much asked out of you when you want to play a Seb deck. It's like, okay, you need some amount of Ice Destruction. Or, sorry, Destruction in general. Okay, then you need to flow tags. But then your connections can't be, like, trash worthy loses you the game. So then you have to play Dummy Box. And then you realize, wait, the deck has no economy. Like, this is the biggest issue. You don't play three Dummy Box. But, like, it's very, very hard to do everything in 45 cards. So generally, people don't play Solidarity Badge, don't play Imp, right? Like, they just cut it down and do very, very little else. I tried Boitata having to boost for almost every ice really offsets the potential savings. Yeah, Boitata doesn't feel good. I'd rather just spend influence on Echelon and just say whatever. Not sure why you'd play Paladin. It gives you the way to make all your connections cheaper. Would not? Uh, no, no, Paladin is not connections. Flip. That's the point. Non-connection cards. Balance. <laughs> Seb is also the only NSG Anarch that doesn't say draw card on it. Yes, very importantly, every Anarch ever printed from NSG says draw card. All of their designs. This one doesn't. They forget the text was on there. Yeah, a lot of people forget that one. And they like they try and, and like in criminal to install their class act to be like, oh, my paladin's gonna get destroyed. And be like, no, 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 no. Bones is better than imp. Yes. But I think we're not playing imp to save credits. We're playing imp to be able to trash things from centrals to get solidarity badge. Like I generally don't play imp, especially without any sort of imp support, to do um like value crimes by trashing like you know pad campaigns bad example but i play imp to like threaten centrals bones is pretty good though bones is actually like a very good way to make seb uh make more sense right that's a good inclusion for the sort of deck that's meant to be like on tempo uh tags all right so let's talk about this deck this deck has no money it has only six card draw cards uh some of them being unique <laughs> <laughs> This deck is so bad. It's so bad. It's functionally so bad that I feel like we have to just focus on one part of the, the deck and go into that. Like, Solidarity Badge probably doesn't make it. Honestly, Amanuensis probably doesn't make the cut. But we just have no economy. Like, this is why Rogue Trading is good. It has 18 credits on a card. Three extra. We're, we're, we're playing extra gambles. It's sad that we don't have off-campus apartment to shove all our contacts into. It makes it easier for the corp to trash them all at once. Yeah. Yeah, they save time. They just throw out one card. Destroy everything. But, like, this is the fundamental struggle. It, like, this does not look like a functional deck. 
It's just like, we don't have economy. We don't have daily cats. We don't have library accounts. We don't have fermenter. We don't have all this sort of stuff. Like you just cannot make a functional economy with only connections currently. And we're at 48 curves. No, we have a gamble. We have a gamble. It's right there. We have it. Drop crew, drop charm, add fermenter. This is like, I think we could test without it, but this seems like the best Seb card. I think Fermenter does make some sense with, with Privilege Axis. We're not on Amaku anymore, so we can we probably should play three Fermenter. Uh, so this is not very good. So let's talk about what we can cut. Biobands is a 3x. Probably we don't want it. I don't think we can afford it. Yeah, Fermenter is a really good Praxis install. Okay, so now we have to float tags. Let's talk about how hard floating tags is. First, let's talk about Solidarity Badge. How many times are we going to charge Solidarity Badge? Sometimes. So minimum is a 1-of per deck, or I'd say maximum a 1-of per deck. Maximum. Uh, let's talk about everything else. We have 47 cards. We have 3 influence. Like, Aqua Saris Crew is okay. Iru, I don't think is that good. She's not a card we want in our opening hand. Obviously, we can throw her out and bring her back with Praxis. That's whatever. Friend of a friend is fine. Hannah is fine. Lagu is important. Manuel is actually pretty good. Uh, Valentina is maybe a bit too slow. We still have financial issues with the deck. Scrubber to help charge solidarity. Uh, we have Miss Bones for that. I think you could play Scrubber over Miss Bones and save for influence if you really wanted to. But Miss Bones is such a better card than Scrubber. With Stargate, you probably don't need Euro. Yeah, I don't think we do. And honestly, we probably still want Manuel because he's cheap and he works on central runs. We got down to 45 cards. Like, let's see how bad this draws. So is this hand good? <laughs> Maybe, but I'll show you what this hand makes us do. So click one, we install the Hannah. Should we get 3x daily casts? We can't really because we're floating tags. We're not really able to because we float a tag with, with, they just trash it. And like, that's pretty bad for us. Um, Like you 100% uh, you trash a loaded daily cast, right? So you install Hannah. You use Hannah to run the remote server. If they res ice, fantastic. We install Lagu. Then we have to clear the tag. So we're already down four credits on turn one. We draw, we install Fermenter. Ugh. Next turn, we probably Hannah again. Install Manuel. Notice that we're not going to draw cards for a while. Okay, we drew two card draw cards. We'll float that tag, I think. Install Amanuensis, draw maybe. Next turn, we have to clear the tag. What does the menu answers even say? When you remove one of our tags, you may remove a host packet. So we remove a tag, draw two. Definitely no isolation. No, we like your connections. I go for dinner. You're talking about how bad badge and So it's our back of dinner. You've built a menu as a badge deck. I get convinced, right? Like, I want to try these cards because I actually have never played a menu answers because the way I see them, they seem bad. But that means we should try to do it. Could moshing help? I think moshing could. But moshing is also really difficult because of Seb. Right, like Seb just needs stuff in hand. Like we're not even playing uh, Strike Fund. If we played Strike Fund, I think we would definitely play Moshing. What happened to using Dummy Box, Dan? We just can't fit it. Right, like we're just gonna float tags and just only play connections and just say like if you want to trash, it's a card from your hand, which is still pretty bad for us. But we'll see how it feels at least. Like this is like the peak play bravado. Like you have three influence, your deck is not very good. Play bravado. I reckon you can play Wildcat Strike. Uh, yeah, we could. I think I'd play Moshing sooner than Wildcat Strike. But you could play Wildcat Strike. It's kind of thematic with Seb as like an organizer. Maybe one of Tag. Uh, it's very hard to play. Firstly, it's not a connection, so they could trash it. It's expensive and it's slow. And then having a... Like, this is the problem with Seb. Maybe Amanuensis will fix it. But the idea that when we remove... So we took a Tag, right? When we took a Tag, we installed a connection. And then once we clear the Tag, we have to install another card. Most of our cards are connections. This can install everything. But you know, like, it's really, really tricky. Cutting Baya goes against my every instinct. Yeah, but then we're on, like, 48 cards. Baya is, like, okay. It's the cheapest way for us to clear a tag. Like, that's maybe worth something. Like, maybe we play Simul Chips for the Fermenter. Because, like, oh, no, that's what our Praxis is doing. Like, how do we get this down to at least 46? It's probably cut the Solidarity Badge because we only have Stargate or Aqua Sarah Screw. Um, that's a nice use of 15 influence at a minimum. Do we just play 47? We're not that combo heavy where like 47 hits us. Drop one bones, add one class act. We would have to drop all the bio bands. I think Miss Bones is really good right now. Like Hannah Miss Bones just wins matchups. 
I'm not big on playing like a five influence card that we can't tutor for you. Uh, this is okay, right? That's actually pretty good. Draw once. Sure gamble. Lagu fermenter. We would trash this when they install. Draw this. Uh, wish it would be any other ways. I guess you have no DJ because you plan to flow tags. Oh, I forgot about DJ. DJ is actually a really good target. DJ is worth playing. If they trash DJ, so be it. But that's the thing is like, is DJ better than Emmanuel's card draw? Probably. But like the fact that you can get DJ down on turn one for one credit is actually really quite good. Yeah, it's still really, really good. I, I think you do play DJ. And if that's the case, we can cut a Miss Bones. Um, nah, cut a Baya Bands. Eh, 47, that's good enough. Uh, faster? Let's give it a shot. This looks okay. Has there been a runner equivalent to Hostile Architecture? I'm trying to think of something that would make sub viable. Oh, like when they trash your stuff? Yeah, Coke. It's not so much it does damage, but firstly, the other stuff that protects your things. So this was a busted card. It was Wireless Net Pavilion. Uh, the worlds that this won, this wasn't unique. Notice how the card art doesn't have the unique diamond. This was the closest we had to like making it very hard. So you could float tags and then keep your resources because you could play three of these. We also back then had Fall Guy and Fall Guy said when a resource is going to trash, trash this instead. So that means that they had to already trash something. And then when they trashed something, they spent like six to eight credits to do it. And then you just trash this guy instead, the Fall Guy. And then currently we have Dummy Box. There's nothing that hurts the corporation, I don't believe. Um, Dummy Box prevents a destruction by destroying something in your own hand. And then I guess because it's a similar theme, we used to have Paparazzi, which was just like, you can't get hurt, which is important for the Tag Me archetype, not so much in, in the format right now. I know Scrubber ain't Bones, but it might be able to take the slots up free influence. I, I think it could. We'll see how it plays out. Like, we'll see whenever we draw Miss Bones, we'd rather have it to be a Scrubber. But I do think there's an argument that we could save for influence. Scrubber is definitely not Miss Bones, but it is like a facsimile to Miss Bones for sure. What about running Atman as the icebreaker? You can get it ice to zero strength and Atman can interact with everything. Dumpling, how's it going? I think if we're going to do that, we just play Amakua, right? Because Amakua is cheaper on influence, on install costs. And if we can get the ice to zero, we might as well just get through with Amakua. You know what I mean? Like this, if, if you're using Amman for its zero ability, you might as well just play this thing. It's way better. Cut Manuel? I don't think so. I think Manuel is like HQ pressure. Manuel is really good. No merit in having a big ass deck, but with cheap resources? No. The bigger your deck, the less consistent you are. And so we don't have good card draw. You can maybe get around having a big deck by having like Hoshiko values of card draw. We don't have that. Uh, faster said. <laughs> More cards, thicker deck though. Actually, what do you do at NSG? I didn't know you're part of the NSG team. I realized you wrote that article by AMTs. I think that's sick, man. Uh, runner. Seb seems like a fun fit for the bug out bag trick. You mean the one that doesn't work? You mean the one that Wenigon lied to us all about? Yeah, that one? Seems like a great home. OP play. Cool. If Wayland didn't have all their advanceable ice, Atman would be in such a good place, I feel. I don't know about it, because I actually don't think there's that many decks that have the same strength problem. Like against HB, six hits like gatekeepers for a minute and brawn. That's pretty good. Four is okay, because it hits um. MIC and then on cell, but then like you have to hit three, you have to hit one uh, for both drafter and ablative magnets on three. I honestly don't know if it's that good. Like, I think one of the best use cases for, for admin is like against, oh, it's CTZ is against um outfit. This is going to be a spicy PD. Hey, hey, thanks CT man. Okay, PD can be pretty fast. This hand stinks. Uh, CDZ kept. Here's this kicker on a subsequent very careful reading of the rules. I am now in the camp that 1.1.62D does not explicitly prevent it, and 1.165C actually indicates it might work, but still no one should be playing it. But what has the rules team said, Why God? Okay, this is a bit better? That's a fair bit better. It's not a great hand. I can see Admin being good. Seb is a great deck to play 3x Leech. Yes, I do like Amakua Leech as Seb. It's just like with Seb, we don't have that many reasons to run Centrals. Like Seb has a problem that like where Hoshiko can get good value from Leech running. Oh, Greasing the Palm. So we already floating tags is messed up on click one. On click one, floating tags is bad. I don't know what the upgrade on HQ is. 
So we don't have a connection in hand. So this is where I'd love to hand out server one and just go. Did you see the description we amended to clarify that no one's actually sure if it works at this point? No, I didn't. That's sick. They will reinforce that ruling to change the complicated rules. Okay, cool. It says it did not work. I personally do think it works because ignoring all costs by discounting X by X, so X is not changed. Uh, so we can just smash it. CTZ loves MICs. So this could be an MIC. We go down to one credit. Um, I just wish we had a connection in hand. Otherwise, that's actually really hard to afford to do. That ain't it. I don't know what this is. This might be a Mavirus. I'm not sure what would end up on HQ here. So this is the sort of thing where like Seb is hard because certain Seb decks does not promote Seb's ability, but just about every hand promotes Hoshiko's ability and Imp uh, Lu ability. But here, like if we do hand a charge or most forget a tag, we just have a tag and that's not good. Uh, I think we probably should have ran server one first click. I was hoping to draw a connection. I think we're unlikely to not. I'm going to run HQ. I don't know what the heck this is. We could have buy it it. There's the MIC. It's a Chrysium. Okay, we don't actually care about Chrysium on HQ. So this seems like a metacognizant deck. We don't really want to buy a band's R&D. It drops us to three credits, draws us two cards. We'll be on seven. We install one, install one. The axe is not bad. We definitely want the fermenters down. I think we do Hannah from, but then our money is really bad. Like I want to buy a band's the Hannah tag away, but I think we need whatever. We'll just do the econ play. I thought we was lost in Dark Souls too. Floating is fine. We played the greasing. It's gone. Carpet hospitality. No, it's back. It's literally back, Jason. What the heck? It does not work because we can't allow it to work, which I agree with. All right, advance in server one. Okay. So let's hope. Oh, no. We get the tag. Let's draw once. There's connections in here. We patched DS2 so you can access JNet at bonfires. The game is now infinitely better. I'm not a big Dark Shells tool fan. So this is not an MIC. This is better than MIC. What could be better than MIC? Where are the connections? What? This is awful. <laughs> it's so bad. You know, like Hoshiko, you'd get a big card draw here. Where are the connections? Trank. Okay. Just grids for days. I'll install Hannah. You have Hannah? Yeah, I know, but we want the Hannah tags install a second connection. Just the slowest off world. We definitely should have contested that. Corporate hospitality is back in hand. Okay, recursion for days. Okay, there they are. Whoa, hot pursuit. Oh, we do care about Chrysium. Mother. <laughs> drawing like grid uh so what can we do we can buy a band's hq to trash the chrysium installing nothing we just got a tempo good good has a greasing palm in the hand we don't care Chrism beats bands? Yeah, you're right. Oh my god, it did, but he didn't res. Oh man, imagine he rezzed. Oh, I didn't realize that. Uh, no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. So I think we want the Lagu down. Valentina will come later. There's the MIC we saw. Hey, Betty. Uh, we can throw out a buzzsaw. Okay, we're back into it. You can't buy bands of Chrism? Watch me. I, I shouldn't have done that. You're right. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Chrism beats bands? Yeah, but we also got four credits to trash it, so who beats what? There's the greasing. We lost the tag. Oh, no. Optional. Not even using it. Flex. 18 credits. That's an MIC. Okay. Ice on everything. So what does Praxis do? Praxis means we can get back 18 credits. How bad's an MIC here? We have good enough money with Fermenter. Let's try and draw for a buy advance for Archives. Oops, all breakers. Um, draw. So this thing, we want to use the tag. The problem is like Seb doesn't work when you have a tag. Another downside with Seb is like once you're tagged, you have to clear the tag. So here we probably just want to remove the tag. Sure gamble, I think. 
if we install the friend of friend, use the friend of friend, like we basically click for two credits and removing a tag, which ideally you install this by like handing the remotes over next turn. So we're just going to, um, what's the worst card in hand here? We don't really need to play the sure gamble. Pop wheels process value. Yeah, we could, we could pop wheels here. Then privileged. Uh, with the privilege, we install the friend of a friend. It's probably the best tempo play, but I want the Hannah because the remote server is going to matter next turn. F it. F it. Just cycling value for no reason. Uh, Seb to get down the friend. Hannah from the bin. Friend of a friend. Was that good? Was that good? It was okay. Playing greasing for two credits in a matchup where you could fast advance with it seems clearly wrong. Yeah, maybe. He's PD though. The thing is like the advancement is not that good if he's on this breaker sweep because besides luminal, he can't fast advance with it. Also, we had to clear the tag, right? Like clearing the tag is a, an upside to Sev because we don't have to clear it and our cards are blank with, with the tag. Could he use hand to gain more clicks while removing the tag? Yes, but I want Hannah. But I hear you. You're not wrong. Oh, we lost a hard pursuit. That's a Chrisium. You can do that? Wild. Thought that was remotes only. Cool. Uh, <laughs> why is it there? Wait, what? Oh, wait. I thought the trank. I thought the trank was installed. It's the Chrysium. Got it. Okay, so this is not the archives. This is the top of archives. This is a face down Chrysium. The fact that we have to spend five credits to turn on our ability, it's like feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that got me. Uh, we probably can't afford to do that. Uh, so now what do we do? If we do steel skin, we're up on eight cards. Yeah, we can probably work with that. Uh, do we need to do anything cool with Hannah? We probably just need a transition to breakers. So this could be an MIC. We're going to have to discard a card here. It's probably Valentina. We might need a Hannah here for Tempo, let's be honest. Tempo Hannah. Uh, purging next turn would be pretty bad for us. Okay. We just want to land another Hot Pursuit. Hospitality. Uh oh. Chrisms for days. 24 credits. What's CTC doing? Chrisium Grid? <laughs> we lost the Stargate. That's okay. Uh, that's totally fine. We have Devil Chairman to Hot Pursuit uh, and to install Valentina. It's an MIC. So we're going to... Oh my god, we need two credits. Oh no, you absolute fool. We need two credits for this. That's fine. My bad. Oops. Uh, so we're going to still Aqua Serious crew it. Install. We can't afford to install that. Uh, we but gunk that up real bad. Going too fast. Yeah, motorcycle too fast. Is that a problem for us? Like, that actually did fundamentally kind of suck a bit. Because now we took two tags. Oh, we botched that up really bad. Could he use Hannah to gain a tag clicklessly install a card for zero clicks? Not clicklessly, because we have to run the remote server. And running the remote server is going to have a face check. Pop the fermenter? I don't care. If he purges, like, we have a uh, sure gamble in hand. Because we're going to break HQ open. Quote of the yeah, wait, what? What got what? So now we probably want to. Well, we the thing is like Seb is turned off when you have tags. That actually fundamentally did kind of suck of it. Yeah, yeah, that is the quote, huh? So now we have to take a whole turn off. Remove tag, remove tag, gamble. Fine. So now we probably need to keep our devil charm for the remote server. CTZ has another ice. Quote of the year. 
fundamentally did kind of suck a bit. Oh, we have amanuensis. Okay, let's float a tag, I guess. There's the next. So how do we get a tag running HQ? We can just give ourselves a tag by Aqua Terra screwing into the MIC. I think we probably need to pivot for Stargate here. So I think if we do Stargate, rip Stargate, we're going to get a Stargate off, and then we'll have Stargate. And that's good because we put pressure on. This is where like I feel like when you play Seb, if you don't have cards like this, like how do you win the game? You need pressure. Oh, this could be eight strength, actually. I was just gonna say it's an eight strength brawn, maybe, and we can devil charm it. Well, we could, and we will. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. So now we're gonna take a tag to lower its strength, install Valentina, no big deal. And then we're going to uh pay two. That was maybe not the turn to do it. Valentina removing tags would have been half the gamble. Uh yeah, but we'd rather install her clicklessly. Tributary? Get out. There's another Chrism coming up. That's going to be a problem for Stargate. At least we have the Luminal. That's a good thing we got going. And when some menu ends to say, whenever you remove one of our tags, when your turn ends, okay, let's see what this thing does. This has felt like good, aggressive. Okay, there's a Chrism geared. Whoop. So we just have to trash the Chrism grid somehow. Now we also have to remove a tag. The thing about Valentina is you have to afford to be able to remove the tag. Like, you can't just remove the tag, for one. You have to afford to be able to do it. It does draw us two cards, though. That feels good. Where's the Miss Bones? Yeah, honestly, I don't know. Uh, somewhere, that's for sure. So now we need to figure out a way to get a tag. We don't know the top of the deck, so we can't just, like, make a normal run. Can we just run R&D? I can just target, right? And it won't, like, make it... If I just start... It's just like a normal axis, right? The fermenters are doing a lot of work. Okay. Let's force a res here. We could consider running server one. I think all the ice here is pretty big. There's a Chrysium card from deck. Seamless launch. Okay, that's probably pretty good for CTZ. Uh, Chrysium is now res, so we can't buy a Banzin. Not that we should be doing that. I learned my lesson. Don't worry. Uh... Manuel could have worked there, but we don't have a way of getting a tag. So now clicking for credits, we should have fermented, but I think we're going to fermenter next turn. Uh, we really want to miss bones. Honestly, any way to get a tag here would be acceptable. Any way of getting a tag. I'll just install that. Whatever. Why no Valentina? We have a Valentina. Sorry? If we draw a privilege axis and like fork the chrism grids, like that's kind of cool for us. Let's see if CTZ scores out and does nothing. Because, like, we're one echo away from winning. This has felt okay. This has felt honestly kind of okay. FOF can get tag. Yes. Seamless. Seamless. Score uh, architect. Okay. Might be correct to purge here for corp. Yes. Oh, Chrism's not unique. Oh, I thought it was. Yeah, nice. So looking at the top five, that means that there's an agenda there. He can rescue it. We can always charge our remote server to force him to res. He doesn't have a lot of options in hand. Trank, okay. Wait, did ADT get nothing? What? Ah, oh, we lost an Achlosaris crew. ADT whiffed? That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, apparently ADT didn't do anything. I'm going to ask for action unless there's a virus. Okay, so how do we deal with this? Could be a spin doctor. Um, that obviously is not great for Stargate. So we need to figure out how to put pressure on here. Uh, we could buy a band something that would get a Chrysium rezzed. DJ Fenris gets us only uh, a Shaper ID that doesn't make sense. It gets us Los. And it gets us Steve. Um, Los is not terrible if we want to charge a remote server. The problem is we don't want to take a tag with this. Like, I think we would do friend of a friend Los. 
Manual works through Chrisium? Yeah, it does, but we have no way of getting a tag during the run. And I'd much rather Stargate than C2. So I think we install Friend of a Friend. We know there's probably no agendas, I suppose. Yes, we probably know there's no agendas. I do think, if anything, we might do Friend of a Friend, take DJ, run the remote server, see what happens. Uh, we can break MIC. We can't break Drafter. Drafter actually would be kind of important to deal with because the tributary could come back. So I don't think we have to like go hyper wild this turn. Uh, we have no way of breaking MIC for better than three credits. Like that's oh no, we do with Aquaceris crew. It's just it's unfortunate. There's no good server here to buy events because of the double Chrisium issue that we're running into. Let's draw once. <laughs> hey, hey, there it is. Okay, so now we do Aquaceris crew. We take a tag on the counter with MIC, install DJ Fenners for Steve. We bring back two copies of Aqua Saris crew or like Hopper Suit or something. Yeah, probably Hopper Suit. And we just like go to town. Wait, is this is this deck sick? Is this deck sick? I think this might be oh, we have click issues. Wait, we'd have to float a tag here. I think we can afford to float a tag, unless that's a Rashida. So we don't have to take a tag here, but if we want to take a tag, we can get DJ Fenners. I think it's worth the trade because we have amanuensis, so we're going to try and do that as much as we can. So do we need to double charm this or should we just take a tag and break it for two? He could crack the MIC, but if he does, we win. So I think we just take the tag. I don't think we destroy it. We install DJ Steve. And then we break this for one. And so if he trashes the MIC, like that's fine. We keep our, our tech piece. Two cards on the heap. Again, I don't think this is an agenda. I think this is just a valuable run. So we can go Hopper Suit, Hopper Suit to get that good fork. We can do Aqua Ceres, Aqua Ceres. How's Seb going? It's our first game, Augustus. We're like obviously a bit slow on Seb, but like we made a faster Seb deck. It feels kind of cool. Like it, it reminds me of old Max like tag decks as much as it's like hella clumsy. I think we do Hopper Suit, Hopper Suit. Let's see what he's holding. Seamless launch, no surprise. I think we knew that, right? Discard down to five. Uh, I wonder if we're starting if we don't need Manuel. I think buy is the hardest to play on this board state because of the... There's Chrisium's on everything. That's the hard part. So we are tagged. We're at threat. Uh, that only matters for Manuel. So Wishes fan was Max. Yeah, this is the most Max fan we have. Max brings me back to Faust. What was that? What the fuck? What the heck? We just got planogrammed and now the wind's in the remote server. We just played into HB planogram, floating a tag. Emanuensis, you're the worst card. Oh, you're so bad. How can you be like this? Okay, that being said, we can still win. The problem is we need every single breaker. So we know there's a seamless and <laughs> planogrammed. Cruising the pump planogram. Okay, yeah, flow tags is cool. It's cool. It's cool. So we can draw cards by clearing the tag. Plano is worse than opponent trashing a crew. I know. It was actually much worse. So we can run HQ. We are tagged now. So our ability is just turned off unless we want to take a turn to pay a credit to draw two cards. Build your own Hoshiko. We can hop pursuit HQ. It'll cost us a tag and a credit. And then we get into HQ. We fire DJ Fenris. From there, we can go for Aqua Seras, Aqua Seras. We have to install the Aqua Saris crew. Then we probably have to install a breaker and then we can challenge server one. Now, if we do that, how many clicks do we have? Probably not enough. So <laughs> we have to figure out how to get out of this because this is looking like the Ikoa and he has a seamless in hand. Uh, that was an agenda he had in hand, so it's likely to be the Aqua. That's the last one he'd push here. So we either have to make him spend uh, 10 credits on this run. I think it just starts with this. I don't think we need to break him. We have minus 4 strength, 1 ice, and minus 6 strength, the other, destroying both. Um, Maybe? That might be enough. No matter what, I do think the narrative starts like this. Oh, this is only once per turn. Shit. It's only once per turn. Does Hannah help? Yeah, but we have no way of getting Hannah down consistently because we only have one Hannah. If we had a Hannah in hand, we would consider it. So this is the problem is like Aqua Saris's take one tag is only once per turn. Uh, so we cannot actually do the get through two ice. 
So if we double charm this, otherwise we can't break it. We can take a tag. I think we take a tag with this and then we double charm the next time we use it. Yeah, that's fine. We're not going to be short on credits because we have hot pursuit. So I think we just take a tag and then break it for two. Spend a click. Okay, important turn. We're obviously going to get the hot pursuit off. It draws us a card at a minimum. So now we have to decide what to get down. So here, if we install Aqua Sarah's crew, Aqua Sarah crew, then run server one, like we don't have enough clicks. If we do Hannah, Aqua Sarah's crew, that's hard. Short on credits, avoid taking the tag on HQ run. Yes, but the tag doesn't matter. Like we're floating a tag anyway, so our cards don't do anything. Um, It's weird to find a double charm in the bin, but that can't happen. So now we have to force two reses. So we can just hope that one of them is a MIC or a, a 10 cost <laughs> gatekeeper or a magnet. And then we can Aqua Saris Chisel Charm the other one. So there's a chance. We just have to make a run on this run. So if we install HANA, run the remote server, we just cannot consistently get HANA. It doesn't matter that you use the crew ability. What I'm saying is since you can't use it for remote. Yes, but we can't use... Like, I think the plan was to use... Oh, yeah, one two-on-one -on -one Chisel Charm on the other one. I think we'll be okay, but I, I hear you. I definitely hear you. I think it's tricky. Uh, so I think we just go for double gamble here and we can't play it. Double Aqua Sarah's crew is obviously pretty good too. Mm. And I think we just run the remote server and hope that it's like a code gate that we can break into something. Drafter. Uh, server one. We just need to have a click for Ikawa and then just hope this is not a border control. <laughs> uh, okay. There's no way to get a Hannah down. We have one click left. We do just lose to like ice. <laughs> this felt okay. So we need to steal the Ikoa to win. So I'm going to run server one and then just hope it's not the Ikoa. It's probably the Ikoa. This isn't, can't be the run. Uh, we need to make CDZ send six credits. Yeah, it might not be an Ikoa. That's the best. The laugh of a man broken by Manuens. This is a Manuens has cost us the game. Yeah, it's an Ikoa. Respect. Uh, no action. Hey, good game. Drawing a Miss Bones would have been pretty big. We had two in 14. We didn't draw. All I say is that ABT did not miss. I made a choice. Nice. Super cool. Ace. Thanks, you too. What was the other ice on their mother? I think the other ice is probably an MIC or a Brown we saw. Cost us the game for no value too. Very tragic. It drew us four, uh, two cards. I think it drew us two cards. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's like, we played against double Chrysium, greasing the palm, predictive. Like, that's not good for us. I don't expect to run into that, but like, the downside to floating tags is kind of bad. It also like fundamentally makes your, it makes your turns clumsy. Like, to make our ability have text, click one has to be remove a tag. Right? It's it's kind of like wild. It's It's weird. It's like build your own wild side. I can't believe I've never considered this. Wild side used to be when your turn begins, draw two cards and lose a click. It's literally the same text of this, except it also costs you the credits to remove the tag. Also, are we start getting a no leech. How do we manage MU? Um, I haven't considered it, but we haven't had a problem yet. We're not on any leech yet. Solidarity badge works with yeah, but like how often are we getting Stargate down and firing it? Or like I, I, we have solidarity badge in the deck and do we cut it? Because we're just, we how many cards have we trashed this game? Like two. That's what Solidarity Badge is for. Yeah, but it's a card that doesn't do anything. I don't get why Manjimus doesn't have a tag removal ability versus the ability it has. It would probably help smoothen that Seb. I think if Seb has like... Like, I think if if we don't think Seb is good right now, which I'm on the fence that I don't think Seb is good, it, one or two cards can fix Seb. Next set can fix Seb. No problem. You just need a way to clear tags that makes sense. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure Manuance is not the console for us. <laughs> I can fix him. <laughs> Wildside was already reprinted and not playable. Verbal? I think Verbal's playable. I actually kind of like Verbal. Oh, this hand's good. Uh, Agonfusion Glacier is an interesting matchup. Hey! Uh, Agonfusion Glacier is beatable. It all relies on a Manuensis, uh Sorry, Aqua Ceres and Chisel Charm. Uh, so we generally don't run a lot. And but when we do run, we punch one server down. I think it's not even new cards charm. Ban probably makes Seb pretty attractive. 
You think, wait, Devil Charm ban makes Seb attractive? What do you mean? Oh, cheers. That's very kind. Thanks, you too. Good luck, everyone, as well. Not advocating for Charm ban, it just happens. If it happens, Seb is good. Wait, I don't understand, though. Uh, this hand is fine. We're going to struggle. Like, that's the one upside of rogue trading is there's a way to get tags without interacting. The tips and timing window. Oh, cheers. Hey. <laughs> it's all good. Glad you liked it. He's much better using the more granular strength reduction. Like, you think banning it will just force people to play better sub decks? Which charm you have no reason to do tags alongside Zaru? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Like, the tag text on uh, on that card is really cool. The idea that you can l lower strength, like, it's like Null's ability, and but makes sense. Like, in theory, it's on tempo as much as, like, air quotes, air quotes, air quotes. So we want to get Lago down. We want to get Sure Gamble down. I generally want to keep Steel Skin for face checks, but I'm pretty sure every face check, the ice is just not going to fire. Uh, so I think we can open with Sure Gamble into Steel Skin. Okay. We have the Aqua Seras crew. We don't have a Chisel Charm. We want to just get Lago down here. The game could go long enough that Lago is a problem for us. Uh, we don't really want to tempo by advanced archives. I'm not a big believer in that play. I don't think it's actually that good. Uh, the first things we need to knock out in the remote server are like Lacosta Charlotte combos. So like Miss Bones face check usually gets you there. I hope the labbing of new deck and runs have been going well today. Oh, and how's it going? It's only a couple games in. This is a game two. It's been fun so far though. Thanks for dropping in, eh? Hope for some great games again. Hey, thank you. Sadiesh, how's it going? Mindscaping, double mindscaping. So... Not the biggest value card, but we are controlling the top of R&D. I just don't think we're going to run. Hits Cloud Eater, installs a connection, dies to three net damage. <laughs> I think they have been in. I'm not sure what order. Like, do we buy a band's archives? I'm not sure it's fantastic. Like, paying three credits to install a card, draw two. It's okay. I think it's hard to play in this matchup. We can do it. I don't love tempo buy a band's archives. I don't know. That's good. Now the question is we need Stargate. Because as soon as possible, we need to punch into one server and make that server really bad for our opponent. It might be the scoring server. I don't want to show Miss Bones or Aqua Seras crew for as long as we can get away with not showing it. That's really good that we drew that. We The few of these we mill, the better, because we can't recur this card. Uh, because that is the only way that we can on site destroy every single Jinteki Ice. There's no Jinteki Ice that, that survives this Wrath. Just having a bunch of situational cards in your hand. It feels like playing, it feels like playing Lois again. I'll show the Miss Bones at a minimum. Don't you ultimately want to buy a bands once you have those tags you desire to clear? Yes. But by the time we have tags that we desire to clear, is archives going to be uniced? I don't know. And if that's the case, can we run? I don't know. Cloud Eater dies immediately. And then doesn't even do anything. Because it doesn't have on encounter text. Third mindscaping. Okay. Uh, they're drawing a lot. It's like weird filter draw, but if they have agendas, they're still going to redraw them. Sorry, it. Excuse me. It's going to draw them. So, like, the question is how to use your limited tools. Here we could Aqua Seras crew punch HQ. Do we die to, like, punitive into mindscaping combo? Yeah, maybe. Hansei? Okay. Now checking archives is even scary. Oh, shit. Do we check archives? I'm scared. Fermenter's really good. I don't think we need to. I think we can just install Fermenter Click for credit. And then just by the time we interact, we have to consider checking archives if something goes in the remote server because it could be playing Regenesis. And then four points this soon is a problem. Uh, yeah, let's lag you. Nice. Okay. None of the winning counter text fires on any ice with Aqua Seras and Devil Charm. When you encounter a piece of ice, uh, it does. Yes, it does. Because Aqua Seras means you have to be encountering the card, right? If I'm not mistaken. I check HQ. Yeah, I think we want to check HQ. The order happens when the runner triggers first. So Aqua Seras is not on encounter. It's when encountering. So if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't. The on encounter fires first, and then you're considered to be encountering the ice. If Aqua Seras says two credits trash the ice, when you encounter an ice trash it, then you would beat it. But because it says you are encountering, you actually fire the on encounter abilities. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the terms you are encountering and something when you encounter are technically two different things. A nice you first when you encounter it and then you are encountering it. They're two separate things. It's it's kind of like an Arkham where evading and evading are two different things, unfortunately. 
When you're encountering, it's considered an encounter, I think, by Jinteki. It shouldn't. I definitely should not. I don't think it has from my experience. Devil Charm, though, is when you encounter, whenever you encounter. This is a when encounter. This is when you're encountering. So Devil Charm does beat it, but Aqua Ceres, you have to encounter the ice. Cruise of paid ability, you can't even use paid abilities when you encounter an ice until the same window. Yeah, it's the exact same text as like on, on Leech, that it just doesn't functionally work. Whenever you meet an ice and when you're interacting with the ice for different use of words, yeah, I think that that is one of the spots I could use a different use of words. Okay, I think we can maybe punch HQ here. It was super confusing when I was figuring out if I need to take attack from logic bombing just through Funhouse versus Inside Job. I'm not sure how, how the text and logic bomb works. We also probably should check archives. I think we can do nothing and assume it's a Charlotte. If it's a Nisei Mark II, it's a problem. So the question is like, how much punching do we do? I think we privilege access for the Aqua Ceres. So we'll punch HQ. Show me something big and nasty. Res your giant snake. Or like when an encounter begins. Yeah, Rohit, how's it going? Text like that would help a lot. There's no ambiguity because it's in cost, effect form, and thus paid ability speed, not triggered effect. I agree with you, but I think a lot of people don't find it to be as an intuitive. Clearly, it's not. We're having this conversation. But I agree with you. Like, you can't use paid abilities when encounter, only while you're encountering. But that's a lot of people don't. Like, that nuance is lost on a lot of people. Like, even I was wrong in the last video. Like, you can use Ice Carver with Melange Gem. Or Leech. You can use... Can you use Leech? One of those. I've learned nothing. No further actions. Good. Anoetic. Okay. It's only zero ambiguity if you're very familiar with the rules nuances. Yeah. So we can run archives here. I think we probably should. If we can test server one, if one ice is res, the second ice is res. Can Nage, can it res two ice that are relevant for us? I think we probably just pressure centrals. When my parents enter my room, show me something big and nasty. What are you watching? Nothing? <laughs> uh, I want to run archives. Actually, no, no, no. We're going to run R&D first, and then we're going to Praxis archives. Oh, no, but Praxis doesn't flip. If it was Ice Carver that you were saying didn't work, but it does. Yeah, I think so. I, we were wrong about that. I was wrong. Jeff was right, and I convinced him he was wrong, which is like powerful speaking ability on this guy. Okay. It's a good steal. I don't think the Nisei decks are impunitive. I think also if you're on Nisi, you're not on Regenesis, so I don't care about running archives anymore. Uh, so running last click means we float a tag. We want to kind of avoid that. Uh, I just click for credit. Sick rip? Yeah, we'll take it. It's Ice Carver plus on counter. So La Costa into maybe Charlotte? If it's a Nisei, it's like, okay. Ice Carver plus on encounter effects, Melange Gem, since Ice Carver's timing starts at the same time as on encounter effects. The ruling is certainly a lot less intuitive. Yes. And the thing is, like, Ice Carver is not a paid ability, where, like, Leech is a paid ability, and you can only use paid abilities while you are encountering. I've seen a bunch of people run into this thing. Jeff talked about it yesterday that you have to remember there's a paid ability while runners break subroutines before they pass the ice. And the more you play Arasana, the more you realize that that's something you should mess with runners. Y'all ready for the 3x self adapting code wall meta? No? Why, Eric? Oh, because we can't trash it? Yeah, that's why we play Cleaver and Amakua. But yeah, it's one of the untrashable ice, at least by like strength standards. All right, let's run server one. I don't think they it can res two ice. I don't think it can res two ice. Lotus Field? Yes, Lotus Field is annoying. Ice on HQ, okay. So we know nothing about the hand. We should run this. It looks like a slow roll of an agenda. So we're just going to run it. After we trash one ice, we're going to just Devil Charm, Aqua Ceres crew, run it again. We probably should have got a Hannah down by now. Oh, I do not like you. We can keep a Devil Charm, though. Uh, No action, cool. Take a tag. So now it's our priority, so we can take a tag, install Hannah, uh, trash. And now we can jack out. Okay, so now we can use Hannah to remove the tag, just so Praxis does something. Well, actually, Praxis doesn't... No, only if you're not tagged. Damn it. Sep cards. So now we're Praxis Archives. So we're bring back the Aqua Ceres crew. We can install Valentina from our hand. Why not? Uh, Praxis for Aqua Ceres crew. Uh, install Valentina for one. So now we can run this. We have two credits. Yeah, this seems good. Oops. 
remotes ever gone. Lotus Field and the Fizerum and Tangler come along. Fizerum is really good. Lotus Field is in system update for a reason, even though it's literally zero decks. Yes, it used to be a meta card. It's not a meta card. It is just, you can't pay five credits for it and end around with no face check. Unless really the meta is messed up fundamentally. I'd argue if it's a good card, things are problematic with Netrunner. Oh, a Magnet. That's like a really good ice into us. <laughs> Sick. That's exactly what it wants here. So do, <laughs> do we share <laughs> Aqua Zero Screw this Magnet? We cannot have, we could do Fermenter run back. Yeah, I think we just do, uh, sorry. Oh no, Fermenter Buzzsaw run back we can't afford. I'm going to double charm a Magnet. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah, I think this is really important that we get in here. You have bus on hand, yeah, but we don't have enough clicks. And if it's a 5 3, it scores it out next turn. It like feels rough, but we're one click click shy here. This is a turning point in the game. Don't at me. It's not a Charlotte. It, there, that was important. All right, it has no board state. Do we? No. Shut up. And we're just going to float tags now. At least for one turn. Oh, that's what we needed. Nice. If it scores anything besides off-off, you win? Uh, no. I don't think so. Because we can't really capitalize on no ice being rezzed on this board state. I'm not sure. Look at the overwhelming pressure. No, we're doing good. We're doing good. Oh, we drew the Aquasaris crew. Sick. It's really hard to play Hopper suit in this matchup. It can just boop us somewhere else. So, like, that's the best top deck. Like, anytime we trash a Praxis or a Devil Charm, we cry. I don't think there's any card here besides Rashida that we have to run. So, we're just going to continue to siege up. We're going to try and crack the... Oh, it's a Charlotte. It's a Charlotte. Okay, so Fermenter. Remove Tag. We can do Hannah, run the remote server. On five, in theory, with a Charlotte, it could be up on eight credits. I think if it spends all its money resing this, we're totally fine. So if we do Hannah, use Hannah. We're probably going to get a tag here. Could be Sisenton, it's not real. We have a good, you don't call program. No further action, so it is a Charlotte. That's great. So we didn't get a click, so we'll just put down the Fermenter and just chill. We did everything we wanted on that turn. Now running HQ seems kind of reasonable. Lost to Praxis, sad. So I sent it because 50% with program. Yeah, but who calls program? Like you call connection, right? Because it's Sev. You definitely call research, I mean. Just call it connection, even. That's flashier. Uh, so we definitely want to Hannah this. Well, not definitely, actually. We should consider that. Do we want to Hannah this? Yeah, we want to Hannah this. Because sometimes you want Hannah just to clicklessly get a tag. Like, we could run server three. Technically, we can jack out. No. Well, okay. There is a window you can jack out on a nice spin doctor before it can pop it. I'm pretty sure this came up uh, the other day on a Jeff stream. I'm pretty sure there's a window to do that. So we have a Fermenter cooking. Oh, we have a Stargate. So I think the next thing is we do Devil Charm Stargate combo. Do we want to install a friend of a friend? No. Friend of a friend is what we install with Hannah. Uh, Aqua Serious, though, we do have to pre-install that. Because we just want to be ready. Do we need to install Buzzsaw? Yeah. So we'll draw once. Oh, that was a great top deck. Plan your turn. I will just install the Aqua Serious crew. Can we actually jack out after it's popped? I don't think so, because jack out's not a paid ability. But you can jack out on a nice server before you breach. Because when they say, do you want access? And you say no, you can jack out. Archives are very smart. All right. Siege engine. We can win in a single Stargate. Admittedly, once the ice gets destroyed, like it's a fork. If we Stargate, it can always just like move us somewhere else and the Stargate doesn't fire. And then we can't Stargate again. That turn. Okay, well, we could Stargate twice, I guess. Draw. Is it going to purge at some point? All right, we're threatening one ice. 
We're playing chess. I actually do think this matchup is kind of fun. It's like playing chess. The question is how soon do we like tilt and go HQ? I set it for two turns. You're in no rush. Yeah, I'm in no rush to, 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 to go off. I basically want, once it pushes into a remote server and dedicates to a remote server, that's when we go for the Stargate. This is such an important thing. Like if we just pressure Stargate, right? Like it can respond to it. But if it has something in the remote server that's valuable, then it can't respond to it that easily. Because then it has to decide like, are we defending this? Or are we defending the agenda? Now, Lacosta makes it easier because you can kind of like do both slightly at the same time. But yeah, we don't want to just send Stargate. We want to wait till it's awkward. There's a paid ability window before the runner can jack out when running a naked server, but not a res window. So you cannot jack out if the spin doctor is already rezzed. Oh, yeah, you're right, right, right. That does make sense. That's all good. Okay, so now Lacosta. The rules are really fun. If the spin is res, they can pop before you jack out if it's unrezzed. I don't think I fully understand that one. I need to look into it a bit more. I'm going to ask for action in case some virus goes off here. You always want to kind of ask. Don't get bad blood. No, actually, thank you. Uh, okay, so Lacosta into Nisei is a possibility. The agenda suite is like Nisei, send a message, offworld maybe? I haven't internalized these sort of lists. Probably not a spin doctor. Which means this might be a candidate for Stargate. Like, we could just win this turn. We also have DJ Fenris, which, like, you probably DJ Fenris for a Los, as long as you can install him for one credit. Do we need a Fermenter prop? No, we don't. And this is what I mean. It's like, I don't think Manuel puts up enough pressure. You need a card like this. Yeah, Slime Stargate, I like it. Because now it's forked between if it reses this ice, can it protect server two? Probably not. If it reses this ice, do we immediately destroy it? Yes. No further action. Okay. That might be game. So I'd rather run R&D again. Well, actually, this is a bit messed up. If you trash the bacteria, then it's about running archives. Because now if there's a spin on a table, it draws the 5-3. Would we rather have that? Like, you're positioning for agendas. It's a size and ton. Okay, so game over. Uh, So we probably don't double charm that. Good game. Nice. We got there. Two strength versus Karuna. Uh, we'll install a friend. Hey, good game. We got some lucky early rips. But we'll take that. Yeah. Devil Charm. Pretty good into the matchup. Only nine turns. That's uh we'll get take it. Thanks for the game. I think it's early game is a bit slow with like the triple mindscaping. Um, so it might not have it what it want. But yeah, it's a really hard when you're relying on one ice to be good. Devil Charm Aqua Sarah's crew, like it's very, very good. So your credits calculated? Yeah, we had friend of a friend to gain six. Leech is also a lot of pressure, but it's pretty sweet. I'll admit. Yeah, yeah, I, I do like leech. I do like leech, but like we're not installing breakers. Uh, let's give it another shot. And again, we did a lot of turns that weren't a lot in a single turn, right? Like, I think that's fundamentally, there's some turns that are set up, some turns you do nothing. And that's a bit tricky. That is a bit tricky. Like, that's not one of the fastest decks in the meta we're worried about. We're still worried about it. It's a good deck. But um, the difference between playing against PD or Asa, that's like every turn putting stuff on the table. It is night or day when you're playing a slower runner. Earth Station, cool. I reckon Earth Station's a bit weak to ice destruction. Uh, it can be hard to get a hot pursuit off. This deck is also probably on multiple Chrysiums. Hey, hey. Best of luck. Have fun. So best part about this hand, hot pursuit for Mentor. We don't have a connection, so we don't really want to play hot pursuit with this hand. We'll probably draw one. But with Earth Station, a lot of times you ice up HQ heavily and you get Chrysiums on HQ. How hot has hot pursuit been? Not sure we can get it to HQ easily. Uh, and that matchup is really bad. In the PD matchup, it's pretty good. In this matchup, it's not going to be good. So, mixed. Is there a chance Hot Pursuit is worse than just two Bravados? Yes. There's a big chance two Bravados is a better card. I think Ice Destruction and Bravado doesn't work well together because then you didn't pass the ice because it's not there, I don't think. I think it counts ice on the table after the run. I don't think it remembers what ice you got past. We're not on Banhar, uh, Augie. I think it was way too hard to play. I think Banhar, obviously, is huge for the Ace of matchups. Uh, hand got worse. Hand did get worse. But I, there's no way uh, uh, Hoon's going to let us into HQ that easily. All right, we want to run. Ice Destruction is really powerful because they're probably on like dirtily.
Oh, fuck. I've never played against this guy. I think I'm going to hate it. I think I'm genuinely going to hate it. This is exactly like Hyper Dirtle. Uh, place an ice protecting that server has no advanced encounters. It can be any ice. How do you think a sub with charm crew practice compares to freedom with leech crew practice? I haven't played freedom in such a long time. I think freedom's also a bit clumsy. Freedom is better into horizontal matchups than tall matchups. I'm imagining sub is better into tall matchups, but I just haven't played freedom in such a long time. Uh, this hand stinks. We don't want to do Stargate. Stargate. Let's draw into like, eh, oof. Ugh. This is awful. This is a really bad hand. So what do we do here? Like R&D for your single seems good enough. It costs a credit to run HQ, which like, I don't want to do that. Let's learn if something about the deck. Sir Station doesn't always play Spin Doctor. This is a really good card for them to draw because their hand is empty. But we need the money more than that. I don't know. Trashing Spin Doctor is pretty reasonable. Not always great, though. So practice into Hannah is something. Uh, we don't need two Hannahs. This actually might be a hand where practice is not good. But like, I'd rather throw out a breaker. I'll just throw out the Echelon. Like, we're not breaking Winchester anytime soon. Could have slammed the gate and rushed, but it's probably bad. No, it's definitely very bad. With two cards in hand, maybe it's not that bad. But like, if we had hedge fund, yeah. If we did like sure gamble, sorry, into Stargate, yeah, I'm fine. Or Fermenter. Like, we just need some economy that's not gonna put us out of the game. Cause like, just draw, draw, put a nice on R and D games over. If we install Stargate turn one, we're hoping they're gonna be slow though. So maybe we can get away with it. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well. Now Isaac's gonna advance that. Uh, this is really bad. Boy, howdy, is this terrible. So let's Praxis Archives. And this is what I mean. We're like playing, you know, Lou or, or Hoshiko. You don't draw like this because you play much more cards that are playable on more board states. So for every good sub game, there's definitely a bunch of sub games that looks like this. I found the career fair really helps smooth out some of the rough sub turns. Does it? Because it doesn't work with ability. It's not so much I want career fair here. I just want like bravado. Like I just want playable economy cards. Like I'd play a, not a price, but I play a strike fund here. So if we practice our guys, we float a tag. We install Hannah Valentina. Whatever, it does something. Sometimes you need to get the foe off. Yeah, the foe off would be good. The friend would be good. Like remove a tag for one. Like that felt like we did something. It didn't really, but it felt okay. Could we be on one X breakers and reduce the situation? I think we can. I think we're finding in may, way more matchups where we're not actually installing our breakers. I think playing fewer breakers would be good. I also think playing one less breaker and one more botulist. Like maybe we each can play botulist, but now like how do we put our breakers down and use them? This is a Chrysium. So Hot Pursuit's cooked. This is the sort of matchup that's going to take 40 minutes that I'm not sure I'm excited about. Uh, Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I do think we should cut breakers. What a boring corp. Well, it's methodical. It's Glacier. It's like Builder Nation's one world. Like there's a lot of support for this play style. I guess I can turn one. Seems good. True content creation angle is just to concede. Honestly, yeah. But like we can break through this by getting like a chisel Aquasarius. Like we can open up one server and have a game. It's just like we're dependent on a card draw because our hand doesn't do anything. But yeah, this is going to be a yawn for me. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sick. Oh, not Builder Nation One World. Sorry, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, the the other one. Oh, yeah, the other one is. I'm assuming also they're on five threes. Oh, building blocks. Sick. Big ice. Big pharaohs. Okay. Only on six credits now. We actually could punch through something. They didn't flip. Oh, so seven strength. Oh, that's what Isaac does. Holy shit! We can't double charm this. Andrea, how's it going? Now rip apart centrals. Uh, we can't. This is probably like a whoredom. We can't deal with it. We can charm crew is eight. Oh yeah, if we use all parts of it. Yeah, you're right. 
Built to last, yeah. But remind me that you haven't felt the Builder Nation deck building trap in a while. It's because it rotated the Thanos. We're safe. We're free. It rotated. The best thing that could have happened. So if we hand into this, we take two tags, install like seven cards. I'm kidding. It doesn't work like that. But like, how sick would that be? Uh, this seems like an important card for the matchup. So our next turn is to say, like, once they score out an agenda, commit to something. This looks like a Rashida, maybe a wall to wall. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a wall to wall. Uh, we can go from there. So I don't think we need every single hand in the deck. We probably don't need two cleaver, but they might be playing SDS or something like that. Yeah, there you go, wall to wall. Uh, oh boy, building blocks. Yeah, okay. Here we should be running HQ. Like if you make HQ soft, the remote server gets softer. Obviously, like the Pharaohs is our prime target, but like every HQ run costs a credit. Oh, never mind. So now we'll move Isaac over. Now we'll advance the ice. Cause like even with Stargate, I guess maybe we can put enough pressure with Stargate. I just want to uh, fermenter. Yeah, this card's useless. Uh, that's obviously good. But like we're not doing anything. Three cards, and I think it only costs showing the ice. It installs a two. So for one click, you install then save two credits. So it's yeah, it's it is what it is. It used to be better, mind you. We had like 12 cost barriers. And you could also interact with res cards. Yeah, so it's like not the worst, but it's also not great. Yeah, Chiashi was in the game. We had Curtain Wall at some points. Um, Hadrian's Wall for 10. Same as Pharaoh's, right? Or was Hadrian's 10? Yeah, not 7. So like, it, obviously the barriers have been becoming smaller. Building blocks Chiashi was a fun meme. No, people played on ironic building blocks Chiashi. Lagu, yeah, whatever. Okay. So I didn't pay attention what they they spin doctored back. But we have no economy here. So we're just going to go R and D and destroy stuff. They trash wall to wall. They didn't return it back to hand. That's worth keeping in mind. F it. This gets closer to the end of the game. Blue Sun, I miss you. I don't. I don't think it's. I love Blue Sun. I play a lot of Blue Sun, but there's no way it's healthy for the game. Okay, that's cool. It's one strength. So we just take a tag. Okay, uh, let's die to punitive, I guess. Or say AA Janus type beat. Okay. Clear the tag for one. Let's see what they bring back. This card's messed up. Why is there so much recursion? We haven't seen their impunitive, so we know what they're going to bring back. They bring back a hedge fund. Whoa, now I was expecting. Uh, we have to remove a tag. Because <laughs> It's on ice decks counter, Andre. Like advancement counter. All right. Can we afford to destroy this ice? No. Because <laughs> it costs two credits. Uh, we can't. Oh, it costs more than two credits. What is this? Oh, it plus two strength. Okay, we don't care. We'll just click for credits. Oh, did you see that in the remote server? That's how we're going to lose. So this deck even doesn't care to score out. The worst kind of netrunner. So like the legitimate play here is... You know, do we go Kitsal mode? Yeah, I don't know. For as excited people get about Super D Borehole, like, isn't it kind of boring? Are you calling Knife Dex the worst kind of Netrunner? Yes. Oh, they flipped. Okay. So the question is who can win sooner? We lose in four turns unless we get impatient. Like the impatient part of us should probably just like deal with this. Uh, we probably should just deal with that. Let's be honest. But I think we win on Stargate. We can win on a single Stargate. Super Deep is fun because it's really bad. I don't like winning when it's like, hey, I won because I played a bad card. Like you just feel like a, like I feel, I don't feel good doing it. Like you just feel like you're stunting on someone. You can't catch all. Oh, yeah, because we're anarchy. Never mind. Yeah, huge, 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 huge. 
and worlds to try to DJ Quetzal at Essa. Yeah, I think we've all been there. We do pay two cards for this Pharos with Charm and five BP for the exchange. Yes. No further action. Oh, I think we like that. <gasps> Drone deployment. Our counter. So we can afford to do this because we have bad publicity. HQ should be flooding. Uh, yeah, yes. They spin doctored back, I think, one face down card. But they might not have ice here. <laughs> Everyone's playing it. Uh, we can't let this draw, so we're going to have to get rid of that, unfortunately. Six strength tributary. What a time to be alive. So the next card's a wall to wall. Isaac, you can live. Uh, unfortunately, here we don't have money. So just hoping there's no ice here for some reason. That'd be sick. We can't really practice. Uh, we can maybe consider running HQ draw. Okay. Subliminal? Oh, they just had a subliminal. Draw, draw. <gasps> Stargate closes the game? Is it that easy? Bully? Hey, Junkie. How's it going? Where's the mad dash? Yeah, I don't know. There could be agendas in archives. Oh, good. Game's over. All right. You leave with just footprints and a bunch of connections. I'll leave only connections. Hey, good game. Thanks for the game. I better not draw. Hey, sorry? All right, it's only 10 turns. The borehole bad pub didn't matter. How many axes? Uh, three stargates. Literally three stargates. <laughs> it's way over curve. Not what we should have expected. Yeah, we just did three stargates. That's it. Yeah, we got super, super lucky there. I don't honestly think they could res most of their ice. Earth Station loses on R&D very on brand. Uh, yeah, they have a centrals issue. They usually do. For three-point centric deck, three targets hitting three agendas is good odds. No, because a lot of the three-point decks, it's like one agenda in every seven, six to seven cards. So I don't think it's good odds. Yeah. If you don't draw, I see one less, one fewer. I have less cards. I have fewer cards. One fewer. So it's, it's hard to say. If you got a nice... Ice down there, though. I was cooked. I got, I got no way to break ice. So I do think you draw there and you just like look for a descent or something. I think they may have shouldn't have drawn. I think they should have drawn. Like just getting an ice on the table. Maybe they had a better idea of how much ice they had access to, right? Like we stargated ice, but there's a lot of ice in the bin. So maybe, yeah, needs one more team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but if they got an ice on R and D, the game is definitely different. Thanks for the game. You see lesser cards. <laughs> this Seb deck has lesser cards, but it also has more cards, if you know what I mean. Hey, get your end. Yeah. I don't know. I want to be very clear here. Sometimes I get negative about the, these sort of play styles and strategies, and it's not like an attack at a player. I hope that's very clear. If the game supports it and you want to play it, so be it. If I'm going to be negative about Vanceable Ice, it's not an attack at the person. I promise you that. And if it comes off of anything different, please warn me. Uh, because I think that's a really important thing to to get across. Uh, if a deck is in the game and you're playing it, it's up to the game to make that not viable. Okay, let's just take out one of each breakers. We don't play breakers. Breakers are for chumps. 44 cards. Do we put botulus in there? It lets us tunnel a bit more. What has worked? What hasn't worked? We've played into some weird decks. I think out of the four games, like Hoppercy was playable in one and a half of them. Uh, so that's cool. Emanuensis does seem not good, uh, but we're going to stick on that train for a bit. Emanuel Lachis Jamura does seem kind of underwhelming. It honestly doesn't seem that good. Uh, so that's a problem. What do you think we can do with this? Miss Bones has seemed great when we draw her. Manual hasn't seemed great. Biobands also hasn't seemed great, but that's because we just can't run that much. But that means we actually have like three more influence to work with potentially. That could be exciting. Does anyone have any good ideas? Does anybody have any ideas? <laughs> I think we need more money. Like, like clear career fair liberated counts money, but that means like with lib counts, you can't play emanuensis that easily. 
Manuel is good as a single card option for multi X's, but if you have Stargate, I don't think you need him. I agree. I, th I think he's very extra. I honestly don't think career fair is that great. Unless we're career fairing down like friend. I think it's the only target. Manuel is a package with Eero. No sense of Stargate. Yeah. There's consoles and dirty laundry. I like dirty laundry. The problem is if we can't run a lot, how good is dirty laundry? Because we don't run that often. Um, like this is why I end up playing diesel in the deck. Pantograph to get more click-free installs. How much influence is even Pantograph? I have no idea. Probably three. Oh god, three. Yeah, that's not good. Cut the console. I want to stick with the console to see what happens. We've been punished by it heavily. We can't really add daily if we're playing the console. That's the problem. It's like as soon as you add, you know, non-connection resources, it's very, very hard to play Manuensis. But like I kind of just like diesel. Like I would actually cut by a bands and play two diesel. Like this is what I'm coming down to. Not blueberry. I just like original. Um, I did it again. Like, just having more cards in heart is good. We can also do minus Ash plus Mimic. Oh, that means we can play all the Diesels. Uh, never mind. Math is hard. Oh, we were over. Yeah, I guess we can play Mimic. Whatever. I thought it got us another Diesel, but did I do the math wrong? Yeah, we're at 15 now. So we have 46 cards, two diesel, three hot pursuit practice. Like we're trying to make this as fast as possible. I think Emanuensis is the dodgy card. <laughs> Universe wants you to play blueberry diesel. Filtering is okay, but hey, play class act. Cut pursuit to at least two influence, if not at all. Mm. What's the flavor of the original diesel? Gasoline. It's gasoline flavored. Uh, or, or petrol, depending on where you are. Uh, I think it's just like a localization thing uh, that they do. If you're playing Emanuensis, is playing 3x no free lunch better than diesel? No. I think it's the opposite. It's like instead of card draw, we have a slow card that's anti card draw. Cut a bones for the third diesel. Bones has been really good, but I could see a world where we cut bones for diesel and then like put us maybe a scrubber is good enough. Let's start here. Let's start here. 46 cards. We're getting better. Just we want to be as fast and as clean as possible. Hey, Joe. I feel like it's been a while since we played. Isn't that stone ship with less hoops? Uh, yeah, but cleaning the tag is saves you credits as well. So it's not just a card that draws you two. It's a card that clears a tag and draws two cards functionally, right? Thunderbolt. Oh, okay. Well, we're not going to face check a lot. This hand is good. This is a good hand. Hey, man. Feels like it's been a minute since we played. Hope to break the losing streak for this deck. Unlikely. <laughs> Thunderbolt. <laughs> uh, best of luck. Have fun. Stone ship with fewer hoops. It's two credits and two cards. Seems okay. Yeah, because it is two credits. Like, that's a big thing. It's two credits and two cards, but it's also situational based on board state. Right? Like, is moshing better in that slot? Probably. Uh, this hand is good. Uh, face checking is going to be a bit difficult until we get our Devil Charm Amanuensis. Mind you, the plus one strength of Thunderbolts probably matters a bit if we're relying on just like the half of the Huaceris crew. Nice ice HQ support. This is why Miss Bones should be in every opening hand. I'll go back to my corner. Oh, I see with fewer hoops. Okay, very good, very good. Question, AP All-Stars destroy all monsters or go with harmonic value? It sounded like you're doing a real Space Jam thing there. I don't know if you were intentionally. Uh, hard to say. Really, I honestly don't know what Thunderbolt is doing. I think if you're playing Thunderbolt, you're probably not playing Harmonics. I feel like it's better somewhere else. So probably let's just like value tithes and like a bit of a rush deck. Maybe Brasilia. So what is this? Can we face check into Thunderbolt? I genuinely don't know. Luckily with this hand, we don't have to. Who the heck put Daily Cast in this deck? Oh my god, did I put Daily Cast in this deck? I put 3x daily cast and forgot to cut it. We're at 46 cards with three daily casts. That's incredible. What a good card draw. Oh my god. <laughs> I know it is in there. <laughs> Genuine jump scare. I have a cord edge Thunderbolt that's been doing all right. Oh, super cool. These are the three deck styles I've built for them. And harmonics is just all about bloops. Yeah, it's all about bloop. Which like, does making bloop six strength actually matter that much? Oh no, greasing the palm again. Lost a friend, got a steel skin, totally fine. I feel so validated. It's so good. Now we can not install the console and play a better. Doesn't say connection. All right, we're playing prison. 
The install cost of each program. This will play for like a very, very, very small center. Mind you, Diesel's on the banner at the back, which is sick. Same with Yuka Bean, which never really got a card associated to it. Wayland, and then that, what is the MB box? We've seen that before. You see the box behind like that light with the duct on it? MB, that like sort of cube. I think we've seen it on something before. I don't know what the product is, uh, but somebody should know. Install cost of each program, piece of hardware, and virtual. It's increased by one. Whenever the run installs, those get money. Okay, so Miss Bones seems good. So this is probably like tithe and like annoying stuff. How bad is Soraka been? I don't think it's MB, it's but HB. No, uh, I don't know because HB is on the left, right? Like HB is here and this is an actual product. I don't know what it is though. Soraka Ben eats our daily cast is pretty bad. Isn't it Megabyte? Oh, you're right. I think it is Megabyte. Yeah, that makes sense. So hold on. This will confuse Joe. Day job. Uh, you don't see it. Oh, yeah, you see it here. It's on the monitor. That's this logo here. Very good shout out. That's Megabyte. That's this logo here on, on Karen's monitor. Um, or Carol, excuse me. I think she does do Karen at some point. So do we just miss Bones run it? I actually don't think we care about this. We are going to install like one hardware, maybe one program. It'll be a Stargate. It'll be sick. We don't know what server one is. We're just going to continue to do our thing. We can use Steel Skin to draw cards. That's fine. Oh, well, there it is. Uh, we have DJ. Wait, this is hardware. <laughs> All right, we're just Aqua Sierra's waiting room. Uh, we can draw. Double install, I think is fine. Good thing we have a five credit econ card. Their Walmart thingy? I don't know. It's somewhere between Walmart and Best Buy, I think. I think it was a tech company. I read one of the fictions where, uh, where uh, Max was working. I think it was closer to a Best Buy. I think it was a tech store. I'm not sure if it was just like generalist. Nice, HQ Ice, okay. So I feel like these hot receipts are not doing enough for us. Fries? I don't think we have fries here. What's good? Yeah, dude, I think up server one, I take it. Okay, good. Also think about having a daily cast is when it's on two credits, uh, we can like run HQ and trash it to whatever mean subroutine this is. We just want to face check sooner in the turn. So now we want an Aqua Saris crew. We have a friend of a friend. We can probably draw once more. If we take a tag with this, we can float. Uh, we don't have fries anymore. It was the electronics warehouse. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've never had those here. Funny enough, in Quebec, Best Buy is Le Best Buy. They actually had to add the Le to the name uh, just because of like French uh, language law. I think we want to draw the Aqua Saris crew. Okay, we already have one of those. That's okay. So we got to Le Best Buy. It's just a Best Buy. It's functionally the same. I don't know if they have Lug Geek Squad or not. All right. Definitely want to run HQ as soon as we can. How did the Earth Station match go? Well, we did three Stargates and one. It was actually a, it was a Borehole deck. Borehole got down to four. We got two bad publicity. And we just did Stargate, Stargate, Stargate. Uh, we trashed a lot of ice, though, on R&D from the Stargate. And the Aqua Saris crew. So maybe playing 45 is important because Aqua Saris. Is, this is Joe's pet card, Technico. Uh, we can face check HQ, I think. Let's just see what it is. If we want to trash the daily cast to get an access, we can do it. I don't want to commit to Hot Pursuit or, or DJ Fenders until we see what this card is. It's just a tie. That's fine. Uh, No. That's not good. So is it access worth two credits here? I think it is. Hmm. I could see us not wanting to deal with that. We can't use Miss Bones, though. Okay, we're back in it. Oh, fuck. Shit. Good to this damn thing again. <laughs> It costs two credits and it gives Joe one credit. We can't install it. One cool thing about Fry's Electronics was each store had a theme that they leaned into, like space or ink and temple. What the heck? That's wild. Okay, Harper Seed's pretty good here. You take the tag when the run is successful. So you get DJ Fenris down, right? Oh, lost a Stargate bummer. We can practice it when we're on threat. I don't think we're going to be on threat. 
I remember the Aztec fries. That's such a goofy sentence. Okay. So we can just hot pursuit HQ here. We probably should. It says if successful, gain nine credits and take a tag. So that means DJ Fenris will see the Steve install. DJ Fenris will cost us one credit though, which we do not af currently afford. So as long as we click for a credit here, then we'll be on a one credit. We can do DJ Fenris for Steve. What will we get for, for DJ Fenris Steve? Probably sure gamble daily casts. It might be fully off Thunderbolt. I could see it. So I'm just going to go HQ here and hope for the best. If it trashes the menu ends us, that's called catharsis or something. Uh, okay. Technico, we didn't want to play that. Uh, Steve? Jaguar? Okay. It did work. We love a hand on this board state. I'm not sure where this stuff is. It's really hard to tell. Running this last click might be a mistake. At least we want to get rid of that. Because if Solomir is scoring out, uh, that's bad for us. And now we understand the face check into a Jaguar is going to be a problem. So core damage probably matters. We have to be worried about core damage traps. Like, uh, there could be... Oh, Quad Advance. Nice. Ontos or something. Of all the wisest Thunderbolt decks, it might be the worst wisest Thunderbolt. It's because we're not raising ice. This could have been really funny. Lamar... <laughs> Oh, imagine we can install a connection. I want a connection so bad right now. I have no connections in hand. That's a bummer. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, we could have just died if we floated a tag there. Man, we're finding a lot of weird angles where this is uh, not going well for us. Draw Aquaceris. Value score. Let's not play the Fermenter. Just trucking along. Just installing daily casts. Having our ability be relevant sometimes. So Privilege Axis is actually okay here. We can go for... We kind of want to wait for Threat 3 so we can get a Stargate down. Uh, it will fire Technico. I don't think this is worth running. Nine credits. Credit Hedge Fund. You could have done Credit 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 Hedge Fund with the Wage Workers. So let's see if Soulmere is going to install here. I think that's what it means. Yeah, we, once we have a cruise, this game like gets blown open. Okay, now we blow open R&D, I hope. So, draw... That's good. We can force some reses, but we definitely need a crew here. Okay. There are no barrier. Well, actually, Hagen is an AP barrier or a destroyer barrier, more accurately. So I'm going to keep the Hannah in hand. If this was just a better card in our hand, we'd be okay. I don't think we're going to do anything with this Hannah. Not running with the corpse on four credits? No. Uh, Solar Mirror can res. Uh, not Hogan we care about, but like we saw Jaguar Rundy. I don't think we want to take the core damage for fun. Mind you, Jaguar Rundy, another tag card, technically. Corporate Hospitality? Oh, sick. Let's see who comes back. Bladderwort. Okay, that's fine. He has no way to duck, so it's just a pad campaign you paid influence for. That being said, here he can install an agenda and it looks like Bladderword. Like, we should probably charge the Wage Workers. I'm just, like, waiting that he installs and we draw an Aquas Harris crew. Even if we mill it, we, like, praxis it. Yeah, let's get one. Okay, that'll get one. So, we need to deal with the Wage Workers sooner than anything. So, we'll Steel Skin. We got the crew. Okay, that's sick. So, now we can just do uh, Hannah. I think we're going to do Server 1. Hannah's, like, front-loading our remove a tag click. Yes. No, not like that. Well, Hannah, we want to do server three and server one. I'm actually more interested in taking down the wage workers. This is likely to be uh, the bladder weight. And now once this gets trashed, we'll just like practice it back immediately. So now if Solomir reses, things are going to be bad. This also just like turns off fully op if he's on fully op. He's playing like he's on fully op. So far, this looks like a an, an Asa deck that would, you know, do Asa stuff. But the ability means that we've not been running. It's a gatekeeper. Cool. Do we want to take a tag here? We could take a tag. I don't think I have a big reason to take a tag. Miss Bones doing much more work than Scrubbery. So far, Miss Bones has given us seven credits. Scrubber would have given us four. Uh, that's a huge difference. You'll get a tag with Praxis? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we just want to practice that back before Archives gets iced. I think we're assuming this is a bladder word. He's still in seven credits. So Sebastio, Valentina, and then we'll go for Aquaceris crew, which is the most important. We'll just remove a tag for a credit. We could have handed off that turn, but I think we want to just keep handing around. Yeah, it's a bladder word. That's totally fine. We have to just watch out. If he reses something big, then the damage from this might matter, but don't flow tags into this deck, that's for sure. Uh, running HQ is also kind of okay. But I think our best draw here is like Stargate. And we have two more practices to bring back one of our Stargates. Have you got a current list in Keyhole? No, Keyhole hasn't worked for a while. Uh, Keyhole has been down for a bit. I'm pretty sure last I talked to Wasa, he was talking to the the team at Twitch who have to approve the Keyhole. Oh, there's that. That's good. So I think we can ignore that. Fully op. Nice. Uh, hopefully he'll be back up soon, but Wasa has been pretty busy. He graduated from school and then he went to another project. Sports date's cursed? For who? I was building horizontal, then <laughs> building horizontal. I think we just do Stargate Sund it. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, we have no double charm. Uh, this is... This might not be it. I forgot we have no Devil Charm. We have one in the bin. That's not coming back. Fully up with Ladder Word seems weird. Yeah, kind of. I'm imagining this is going to be like a tier or something, though, and then like suddenly the Ladder Word will be relevant. Uh, How scared are we face checking R&D? It'll be plus one strength, so there's no way Aquasteris beats it. The problem is like we have one in 18 to get our next like Devil Charm. I'm just going to say YOLO. Whatever. Dice this Ice and Taunt or something. Yeah, whatever. Let's see what we got. Uh, Hagen's also really bad because he eats the Stargate. That's actually probably worth respecting. This is a bit too uh, brazen. Best case, Tithe. Worst case, 8 strength Stavka. Uh, 3 strength Stavka is acceptable too. Uh, we still get the Stargate for what it's worth. As long as we trash our daily cast again. Now it'll be two strength though, so it does go down. Oh. Oh. Thinking. <laughs> so we probably trash the ablative, run back, uh, pop Hannah, run back. Because now the stuff could doesn't. Oh, is this for the run? So the it's for the run. It's not even for the turn. It's for the run. Oh no! It's a blank Stavka. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Hopefully no spin doctor. It doesn't even have that subroutine for the whole turn. Oh no. Sick. What an ID. It's definitely an ID you can play. It so far has cost us two daily casts. All right. Cool. Play on. That Stargate did give Solomir one credit. That was kind of cool. Funny. <laughs> Imagine there's a board state where you install virtuals and programs on purpose just to play around Bladderwort. Thunder, give Thunderbolt plus one hand size. Should Valentina have fired there with no tags? Uh, no, because you actually have to remove a tag. Because when you fire Hannah, you're not actually removing the tag. Oh, okay. Aquaceris, that's good. Uh, we don't have a Hannah to check this. We want a Praxis. I think we milled a Praxis. Yeah, maybe we should play it when Labor Aids. I don't know. Uh, the deck is a bit of a mess. So now this ice does nothing. You could probably install on top of it, but it stops us from getting breakers. So we're going to check server six, probably take a core damage. Praxis is doing so much work here. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Praxis is just kind of messed up. We don't have one, though. I think we can install the Fermenter. Uh, let's start here. We don't know what five is. It might be an agenda. Yeah, we're down to one of each breaker. Okay, Spin Doctor. Just a bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah. I really wish the sub add was at least actual end the run sub. At least you might be able to do something playable with it. Yeah, but then like Tithe gets good and then you become a rush deck. I don't know. I have no idea what this idea is meant to do. Uh, So how do we get a tag here? We can't draw. <gasps> Value Diesel. I think we're going to install the Fermenter. Solomir going to 10 credits really doesn't matter. We just need money. Like... Whatever, and we'll just click for credit. Next turn, we can diesel. Uh, actually, the fermenter turned on Stavka. Maybe that's wrong. One of each breaker and trigger Lago, like we've got simul chips. Oh, Praxis? Yeah, Praxis is wild. It's super, super wild. It means we can just like Lago. 
Uh, but like at the end of the game, like ideally we want to bring three Praxis back uh, with labor rates and then just eat munch the ice on archives. We should go HQ sooner than later. I just don't want to die. Got a Hannah, lost a Mimic. Okay, uh, Mimic is something we probably want to consider coming back. MC, okay, so now we have a win condition. We do have a functional win condition. Diesel. Ugly. We should throw this out a while. I could see it being a rush ID with cheap APIs, except it's a faction with amazing rush IDs. Yes. So we only have two more clicks. Get out of my game. Uh, we'll face check the austerity, I think. Um, we can still lose from here, right? Like, we actually don't have a lot of pressure. It's just like, this deck is not doing much. I think server five is probably a wage workers. Uh, the question is like, how bad can AP ice be? Like, a Stavka eats two fermenters. That's obviously not great. So we probably don't greet it out. We pop a fermenter for six. We pay two for it. Oh, over install. Okay. Get us a Praxis. <gasps> we got officers, but we lost our last devil charm. That's actually kind of bad. I wonder if we want to tempo out like labor rights. So something's an archive. I do think that's a poison trap. The deck might be on ontological. Okay, upgrade. Could be mana garm. Next turn, he can score out a 4-2. Oh, we can install Osiris crew for free if it's an orbital. What are we dieseling into? I think a Praxis. Definitely not that. There's no way it's that. So how do we come back from this? Our hand is garbage. We could Hannah for clicks. We could Hannah to run server five. We definitely want to pop one of these so we have some working money. So we can Hannah, we probably want to click for Hannah and then check server five and see what happens. Like there's no way we died to size and ton. We have one click to interact with uh, if, if Solomir spends half his money resing an ice. This is probably ice into server into a mana garm. Does he just purge next turn? Not anymore, but yeah, he might have. But he probably wants austerity onto three. So maybe not. I think we just got to do something. We just got to like zig when he thinks we're going to not zig. Seems weird. There's no console. Correct. For Seb. Yeah. Tithe. Fantastic. We do not care. Hit the steel skin. Be kind. We lost the Hannah. Bummer. That's what we wanted. So we will trash and install the card. Which one? Not Hannah. Probably DJ Steve. ID has fired three times. Going to find a wage workers in here. So, uh-oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what's happening. Oh, wow. What was the upgrade on? What was the upgrade on uh, the upgrade on server seven? Yeah, it didn't seem like we were going to run because we're scared of the ice. And the longer that you like, you know, play that we're not going to run, then you just start running. And then you realize the ice is just like tithe and Tistavka. Good. Yeah. Okay. That tracks. We do that in Asa sometimes. Yep. Yeah. In Asa, you do that. But Asa presents more problems more quickly where that play seems a bit more reasonable. Uh, when it's a tithe ice, like, it doesn't even end the run. Thanks for the game. How's this deck been? Are you scoring out? Bad face checks? So far, Seb, great. No need for breakers. Just go, go, go. I agree. No need for breakers might be okay. We could probably cut all breakers, play botulus. Um, we also probably, like, it's funny that the daily cast is one of our best cards. And I think we should just cut amanuensis and give it up. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Gotta deal with the technocos. Yeah. You did, yeah, we did indefinitely zig when he thought we would zig. Find a score. Oh, super cool. Thanks for game, eh? Okay, so Seb is definitely playing a bit smoother. I would still say there's turns that it's just fundamentally ugly. We're, we're holding hands where it's like, what do we do with this? Um, Lagu is giving us some friction because Devil Charm is the best card in the deck, sort of. Does Anagar have a two-cost console? I missed turntable. No. The cheapest is... Well, technically they do. Like, uh, Keiko technically does. Yeah, Keiko technically is a two-cost console, I think. Because I think you get the credit redux. I was going to joke about Emanuensis when I scored the orbital. I know, I know, Joe. We didn't install it. We had it in hand since, like, opening hand. And we're like, there's no way we're installing this. Uh, it's, yeah, it would have it lost us the game if we installed it. Okay, console bad. 
D uh, daily cast three X we added accidentally. Turns out it's pretty good. Do we cut all our breakers? There's no way we can afford cutting all our breakers. Like I feel like if we cut all our breakers, we cut the hot pursuits and play simul chip. Keiko's two MU for two credits. Yeah, but we have nothing to do it. Keiko Seb is definitely not it. Like there's a chance patchwork is it, but the problem is like Seb doesn't have enough card draw to sustain patchwork. Ma, uh, we don't run enough for Ma to matter. Like I could see Ma mattering, but we can barely afford it, let alone we don't run enough. Just run Mayfly. Uh, that's not a bad option. Ma with Acid Spam Hannah. I think we're like good enough with like Miss Bones and Lagu that we don't need Ma into that. But I hear you, yeah, Ma with with Hosh is or sorry, with um with with Hannah 3x is really, really good. Definitely get Banhar in there, just so we aren't losing it to the console. Yeah, yeah, Banhar can do it. Let's do two Banhar just to put fear in our opponent. That's 43. We'll put one Laborites. Don't worry about it. Doesn't make a lot. No, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I thought about it. Uh, we have... Oh, we didn't have Echelon. We had Mimic. Um, so Banhar seems good. The Stargate was so sad I held back the spin dock. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, that was a wild Stargate. Five points. Raindrops. I like Raindrops, Cronus. We played Raindrops and Seb before, and I felt like it was pretty good. The way that it works with Devil Charm, though, I'm serious, is like people just don't res into it, which like sometimes that's good for you. But I actually kind of like Raindrops. It speeds us up. I'm pretty sure we can cut Hot Pursuit. Like maybe we cut these for clone chips, but then you realize the more that we do this, we're just playing like a worse version of like Mamakua, right? It's not exciting, but a Telework could help smooth things out. I feel like I'd rather play Lib Accounts sooner than Telework. In like, no, I wouldn't spend influence on it. I think Liberate Accounts is a very similar feeling card. Katurga can be Praxis or Lost Charms. Oh yeah, Katurga's better, actually. You're right. Katurga's okay. It's expensive, but it's okay. What do we do with six influence? Like, say we cut the Hot Pursuits, which have been kind of underperforming. What can we do with six influence? Is it just like Diesel and then like... <laughs> Bravado? Like, what are we doing with the slot? I feel like having some way to cheat around ice would be good. Forge, Forge doesn't do enough for a slot. Creative, I don't know if we need the burst to come. We need more ways to interact meaningfully. I don't want to play Class Act. It's a one of, I don't know. Well, I can pick it up from the bottom watchable. How did you feel about the technical pressure? Uh, I forgot about it, Joe. There was one turn where it made me not want to install a Fermenter, which was probably wrong. You having another credit didn't matter. It made the Stargate and Fermenter cost one more and that's it. I totally forgot about it. But inherently, like our deck is running no virtuals and like three hardware. So, and like very few programs, like we installed three programs that game. Have you considered Hermes? No, I think Hermes is the best option we've heard so far. Talk, it's a good shout out. Bakhlin, Ampassant. Those are, okay, so Bakhlin and Ampassant. Bakhlin I like. Ampassant, however. So Bakhlin's not very good if they don't res ice. That's the one downside for Bakhlin. It's like, we're not good at dealing with res dice and Bakhlin only works well on res dice because otherwise you don't get an encounter. So we have to keep that in mind. Hermes though generally a bit more flexible going to put on some pressure can be like it, it's just a card that gets down for two credits and is annoying like this actually might be okay wow we have three card slots left i think we just do three botulus or at least two botulus because it comes back with um praxis i did call it technico as your pet card joe yeah yeah um do we play one of labor rates Maybe here now we can consider playing um, Strike Fund a bit more because we have uh, at least two copies of Banhar. Like maybe we can get away with playing Strike Fund. We want to play 45 though because clearly like our best card is uh, Ahasuerus. We want to draw into Ahasuerus as, as, as much as possible. Two Moshing and Labor Rights. I think we can't play Moshing unless we play Strike Fund. But Moshing might be okay. Question, why is the case that DJ Fenris is almost always used to get Steve on the board, but nobody actually plays Steve as their ID? Um, some people are playing Steve as their ID. The reason is that Steve is like... So the idea is like, imagine Steve's text was on a one influence resource. That's good. Because mind you, Steve is not very good on turn one. And if they see you coming, they put their best dice on HQ and then Steve is a bit harder to fire. You most often see Steve in obviously... Anarch and Shaper, who can DJ for Steve, because those are decks where Icing HQ is not the priority. Like, DJ Fenders in a lot of Shaper decks is the only card that pays you off from running HQ, so generally one Ice on HQ is enough for most Shapers, and then that's why Steve becomes really good. So it's a mixture that your ID abilities on other criminal cards are much better than Steve. They don't see it coming. Icing up HQ with priority is already the thing you want to do against criminal, and for all those reasons, getting Steve in the mid to late game for one influence and three credits is much, much better. 
There's a whole bunch of IDs that are way more playable. If they were printed on connections, you could choose to install. Ampasan can stick some solid hits when you have Charm Crew down. To me, it feels like a card that's not good on more spore states. And the problem is our deck already... Like, this is the problem that I worried about with Ampasan. It's like, we're trying to build a deck that has as many cards that are as good on as many board states. Because inherently, Seb is clumsy. Uh, to me, this is a clumsy card. Where we're going to hold this in our hand. We're going to res. They're, they're, we're going to run. They're not going to res. We Ampasan. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to just as much as possible when we play Seb have cards that are just better on more board states. That makes sense? Yeah, of course. That's the question. Steve's ability also only does something after a few turns. Yeah, it's useless on turn one when you don't have cards in the bin. Very importantly, too, if you play a run event on HQ, that run event is not in the bin while you're making that run. It's still resolving on the table. Yeah. Strike fund? Raindrops? Can we get away with not playing Botulus? Botulus does seem good. Maybe we just play three Botulus and then like that's our remote pressure and then we have central ice destruction pressure. Yeah, this seems fine. We have fewer and fewer ways that interact with tags, which this we're straying further and further away from God. Uh, as in like, we should just play Hoshiko, I guess. That's why we play Banhar Steve. Banhar Steve is so damn fun. It's so damn fun, but that's actually a really big part is like Banhar just gets things into the bin. Ned jogging? Is that Ned jogging? It's been a while since we've seen Ned jogging. I haven't seen Ned jogging like that. I hope Ned jogging you're doing well. Julie could give you a little more tempo too with all the click resources. We actually have very few click resources. We only have uh, a Hannah, if I'm not mistaken. Bridgman did a banner, Steve. Yeah, it's sick. It's actually such a fun deck. Um, I think I shouted out on the stream the other day. Bridgman's banner, Steve deck is like one of my favorite decks I played in the new meta. Oh, and a friend of a friend. That's true. But like, it's another card that is a bit more situational. Yeah, I don't know. It's like the click impression you get from Julie. Is it better than Diesel? I'd argue it probably isn't because Diesel is playable on more board states. And just getting three cards for one click is kind of akin to like the click impression you get from Julie. Like that's what the hard thing that Julie's hard to evaluate. Because what do you do with the click you gain? And if it's just like draw a card, then, you know, does she say pay two to draw four cards over four turns? Maybe. Julie would be better if you had Nuka and Lib accounts. Yeah, you could build into it. But we cut Nuka for inherently being a bit slow, uh, which is what I found. Like today, all we want to do is try to make Seb as fast as possible. And a motorcycle seemed like a good start. It's not working out for us, though. But I don't think it's wrong. And Seb used the click to remove the tag. Wait, sorry. Don't say those are just by Hoshiko's the language of the... It's not that bad. Hoshiko's kind of fun. It's like we've had this issue before in Nemerner. It's like if there's a generalist ID and the generalist ID does your game plan better than the focused ID, is the problem that the focused ID is not good or the generalist ID is better? Like, too good. It's hard to tell with Hoshiko. I, I do think Hoshiko, though, like, a very big difference from a year ago. If you've kind of, like, sworn off Hoshiko because you think Hoshiko's not interesting, Hoshiko plays much more interesting right now where you actually choose to flip in and flip out somewhat consistently. I think Hoshiko's in an okay spot right now. How much draw does this deck have? I assume you need a lot with the ID. Yeah, exactly. Corn, how's it going? Uh, we don't have that much. We have Diesel. We have Strike Fund. We have Lagu, which is really good. I think that's all the inherent draw we have. We cut Amanuensis, but we weren't really playing it. We probably want as much draw as we can get. Doesn't Diesel only really get you one extra click versus just drawing? Uh, sort of. But the compression matters. Oh, Thunderbolt again. Okay. Uh, this hand's really good. Mind you, Banhar is not sick into Thunderbolt because an extra subroutine with Banhar, you can't choose to... It's it's a net damage subroutine. But this hand's really good. Now with Banhar 2, we're like, we'll probably keep the Steel Skins. The problem is like, we can't face check with this hand. Well, we can't face check this turn. But ideally, Banhar is just like something that slows the Corp down then we, we actually have to use it. Okay, so this turn, I do think we Steel Skin. Because we just can't not. So we do Sure Gamble to Steel Skin. We have no good way to get a tag down, but getting Fermenter down early and getting a Banhar, is it better to get a Banhar down sooner or a Lagu? The Lagu is more card draw, the Banhar is more pressure. I do not know if Sedata is going to push out on this next turn. If he does, I think we're happier with the Lagu. Plus one click for zero credits is pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's still good. I think as soon as you get to the like the sort of math where like, is Diesel good? Is Stone Ship good? Like it's the models everyone uses are very, very different. And sometimes you can convince yourself some very strange things. Uh, Diesel's not the best card in the game, but it's still pretty good. All right. This is our Hoshiko deck. 
the more we tune this deck, the more it just becomes generalist good stuff anarch, and the less we're firing our ability. It is so messed up. It's super unfortunate. Two cards in archives here. Like, if we were a bit more brave, we could Benhar check something. This turn, we have to get Benhar down to see what Fork does about it. No, dude, up. What? Not at all. Yeah, dude, up. Yeah, I don't know. If you haven't got any games today, you can always take it back. I'm glad you checked. Another Greasing the Palm? Okay. We found it in every matchup. You should really start playing Paladin? Yeah, right? We should start playing Paladin for these casts. Hey, have you uh, considered playing uh, Keiko? I haven't seen Keiko in a long time. I'm happy about that. You must do very well at tournament. You seem very well versed in everything about Netrunner. Um, I, I take the compliment. I don't compete that much. Uh, I should uh, compete a bit more. I think it's really fun. I only play like locals, which are kind of small events. Uh, but I should, I do more casting than anything else, which like, am I the best player in the game? Definitely not. I do, uh, express my thoughts though. That helps. There's a lot of good people that do that though. Draw. Okay. Bot shows remote server. I think we want to get Banhard down. We don't need to show the Hannah. The turn that Hannah comes down, she's good enough on her own. We have really good money. It's like, we don't want to lose the charm to damage that I think is worth installing. Is the carcinization of Anarch the slow creep towards being Rekosh? What does carcinization mean? Woo! That hasn't happened in a long time. I don't think we've seen that happen today. Hey, there's jogging. Advance. Love it. Okay. So, defensive upgrade. We have a Banhar there, and we have like 1,700 cards in hand. Can we get through it with just a botulist? Probably not. But the question is, what is this? Because they're confident about it being a single ice solution. So if we install the Botulus, it saves us a card in hand. Hermes seems really good. We could even like run HQ. So what's the upgrade? It is jogging sick. Um, what is the upgrade here? We drop Hermes, Hanna, run server one. We can open up two servers. Carcinization means that evolving into a crab type creature because it's really, oh, cool, because it's an effective model. Oh, very cool. The tendency for everything to end up as a crab. Yeah, I've heard of that before. This is so suspect, right? Like, clearly we can get into here. It's like, what can this upgrade be? How's your act recently? <laughs> what do you mean, jogging? Sorry? Oh, it's been fun. Oh, okay, good. It's sedated. Not been on stage for a while. Oh, cool. I didn't know today does some sort of performance. Oh, hell yeah. Whereabouts? Seattle. That was sick. Good scene. So how do we get into here? I think we can just send it. Uh, botch us against trades a card for a card. Uh, this is likely to have four subroutines on it. So like there's going to be a bunch of, you know, damage to this. Can it have more than that many subroutines? No. We have two clicks for Managarm. The Miss Bones here would actually be pretty good. Oh, now we can't beat Managarm. I think we've overextended. This might be wrong. Possibly Brasilia? Yeah, but if it's Brasilia, it doesn't do anything. Uh, so we die to, like, tier? I think we straight up die to tier here. I'm more of a hobby comic. Oh, super red. Vovo? Okay, that makes more sense. Jaguar. Sick. Okay, so Jaguar is just two net damage. I'm assuming this is an NGO front, so we won't Devil Charm that. So we're just going to take two damage. Uh, so fortunately, it's... Oh, three damage, excuse me. So we die to, like, damage trap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's three to the ID. So, Data, are you listening? Wait, how did you know? <laughs> it's an Ikua. Okay, we can take that. So we can Hermes bounce this. Uh, we'll trash Vova for Miss Bones. Do we die to like distributed tracing end the line? Maybe. Yeah, Overrider we could be more expected of, especially when we see the Jagarundi. Um, so that was not the safest run. But we did at least Ikawa is their first agenda. Like he must have a really ugly uh start. Lagu like, love to refill our hand when they push. Lost the DJ Fenners. We can practice that back eventually. So this is where we're running HQ is pretty good. Uh wow. Oof. So we fired Sebastio zero times so far. Pretty sick. Pretty cool. Genuinely pretty all right, though. Uh, draw. 
we probably can greed the fermenter here. There could be a virus around us draw. I think we're just going to run HQ for single. We might actually Hanna for like tempo. If we can get a bounce here with this, it's pretty good. It's been a couple like big draws. Like we're already, what is it? 14 cards in, we've seen one agenda. Brazilia, okay. Uh, we don't really care about that too much with Devil Charm. So the question is, do we have to do much else here? We can go back for another single. I think it's actually pretty reasonable. But like, if he had an agenda, why would he jam Iqua out? So if he had two agendas, this is probably the second one. So the Axis on HQ, we probably just want to find our Aqua Sarah Screws. There you go. Speak of it. Okay, there you go. Hannah for Temple can be correct. With practices, it's not that bad. Like, we've installed her, got a click back, like, and then got two more clicks from her. Or one more click for her. It's okay. It's honestly genuinely okay. Because I don't think we're going to use her on the remote server. There's a Seamless. Did we see a Seamless? Did we see a Seamless? We're assuming there's a Seamless, right? Because install advanced. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Does the deck run Praxis? The recursion in the new set seems to be really strong. Yes, we're on three. Yeah, I think Seamless was a good shout out. We should have seen that on Stall Advance. Uh, we're on three copies of Privilege Axis. Vitruvius, okay. Uh, I think we want to just make this ice install more expensive. I still make a mistake of trying to have too many credits. When I see you guys playing, you're always low on credits. <laughs> That's because they're playing Thunderbolt. <laughs> but yeah, you don't need to have too many credits, but a lot of people do put too much, too little money in their deck. I'd argue our money, our deck has too little money. Uh, so HQ pressure, we know there's a Brazilian there. We want to get a Stargate down sooner than later. What server do we want to blow open? It might be HQ. They iced up HQ, so we know Brazilian. I'm going to ask for action because we're definitely going to take Fermenter unless they resume a virus. Or he, excuse me. Yeah, Privilege Access is one of my favorite cards. Thank you. Take 12, 6. So that was 2 clicks for 11 credits. Feels okay. And then here we don't have much to do. Playing around low credits can take some getting used to, but it makes you a stronger player. If you end the game with extra resources, you wasted your time. But that being said, it is canonically correct sometimes to have extra resources. So we probably... What's our Praxis target here? DJ Fenris seems pretty solid. Uh, so we can do DJ Fenris. We can install a Fermenter or Botulus. Oh my god, Praxis. Not like this. This is disgusting. Sebastian Aqua Ceres crew privilege access will bring back I think a DJ Fenris I think we can clear the tag using our means we have enough we'll do Steve and then I think we'll do botulus like the question is do we botulus or fermenter I think our money is good I think we just botulus HQ we could also botulus R&D it might be better to botulus R&D because we're going to plan to uh cr a bot stargate through this and we'll just like Aqua Ceres whatever this is we don't have an answer for Jaguarundi. Maybe actually Botchels on Jaguarundi is good because we only have to break one subroutine. That actually probably is better. Sorry. Because Jaguarundi functionally only has one subroutine. Give the runner a tag. Which, if we let it fire, we can actually break the second one and use the tag for us. So there's some... Uh, I'm just going to fix this. So that's like a cool interaction we got going for us. Uh, and then unfortunately here we actually this is a good turn to Hannah I think because we're not firing DJ yeah I like being rich in a game there's decks where that's the right play uh, but certain decks you don't want to so just find a deck that that actually is the thing you want to do I think Nuvum and Startup is like a big one for that second ice okay so we're still threading that uh, Lagu let's go so far we fired our ability once we know don't know what this is we know there's a Brazilian hand so that could be Brazilian on top of not another grid botulus so we can ban her this server and i think we just run it i don't think this hand is that good i wonder at what point you just say tag me or these hp decks run tag punishment they run greasing the palm so they run soft tag punishment the problem is as soon as you go tag me sebastio's text box doesn't work and then your cards like privilege access don't work because both of those cards say only if you're not tagged so you functionally are not allowed to play tag me uh, which maybe that's good for the game, but it's like really unfortunate. Once you take two tags, like your ID box is turned off until you clear two tags, and that can be really difficult. Too many times I see players hedge fund to 15 credits, which isn't what they need. Yeah, it's comfort. Brasilia. It's a tithe. It's five strength. We will just take three net damage. Again, the Brasilia doesn't do anything. We lost some cards 
In the game with more than zero credits, is your deck being inefficient? I've heard I also like to make the money. It's not in inefficient. Like, there's some reasons where, like, having money means you're playing around oppo and stuff like that. So it's not exactly that. Uh, but do we want to take a tag here? We don't really need to. Oh, we got res this turn. Oh, that's sick. So we'll just break the tag in the under end. Only on three credits, too. We can pressure HQ this turn, probably. It's a Nico. Miss Bones. Better than scrubber so if we run hq snare can fire we can destroy any ice that's rezzed here uh we're gonna try and get a good steve here and then we'll try and get some good value there might be agendas in here two cards in grip okay so what do we want to add i think steel skin steel skin is probably the play i honestly don't think this card does anything but it's something that he can put in the remote server and i don't love that idea that's just not great for us this remote server cost us literally a card. Uh, with a daily cast, I think we can afford this. Let's run HQ to see the second card. And then we can just like install daily cast. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so now Jaguarundi has text. Choose an unrest card to go back. Uh, I think we want to just Stargate to close the game out. We'll install daily cast. I'm glad we went back there. I think the math suggested that. We've gone through 16 cards, no shuffling. Three agendas is what you expect. Sorry about that. Let's go. We lost the Aquasera crew. That's fine. Uh, it could be a spin doctor. They just have to jam in there, whatever they have. Now Jagorundi says when the runner encounters us, give them a tag. It actually is positive for us. That's kind of cool. Ideally cast botulus. So where do we want to put this target? Probably R&D, if anything. You're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, we're doing okay here. So now running HQ is okay. Uh, the only thing that this could be a problem is if it's a luminal. Otherwise, I don't think we care. Rashida, arguably. Uh, we can face check. We just want to get our Stargate. If we run HQ, what two cards are we getting back? Like, it honestly might be Gamble Gamble. Or Fermenter Fermenter is probably for the best. Not a good... This is just a click to draw Fermenter, which is arguable. But I don't think we have to do anything about this. Draw. Okay, Hannah. Oh, we could crack Hannah. Can I get... Yeah, totally. It, it'd be my pleasure. Um, We're just waiting for Stargate. We could go R&D for a single. Yeah, we'll just blow it up. We'll just go R&D for a single here. We're expecting Aqua not running last click. I think the HQ run there was suspect. We don't have to do that soon. Now, this is the Banhar server. That being said, it'll probably be Devil Charm. The only thing we can't Devil Charm here is a Stavka, which, like, you could res a Stavka here if you wanted to. We would just uh, take three in damage. Tithe on the top, good to know. Let's get that down. I think it's more of, is it plus X credits better than disrupting the corp? Yeah, forcing the corp to res, especially, like, a, a corp like this that probably doesn't have money. Just get a Vitruvius. That's totally fine. So now the decks are usually on two Ikawas. If the deck's on three Ikawas, it's playing 21 points unless it's playing one pointers. So this sort of board state is totally fine for us uh, because it's hard to score out here with the two Ikawas being stolen. So Fermenter, Daily Cast, Botulus, Banhar on HQ. So this is one uh, a Tithe and then an Ice. Let's just find a Stargate. Let's find a Stargate. Oh, that's a bummer. So no Stargates anywhere. We can run our D for a single. We probably Hannah for value this turn just to get a click because we have cards to install. If we practice, we can bring back no programs. Hmm. Two in the bottom 12. Could you get more clicks by practice than Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, it might be worth it. This is actually like a, an interesting one to see how we pull out from this. So we run HQ. He can't res. That can get us back like two gambles or two daily casts. That's like whatever. We can, like, crack Hannah for click, privilege access, bring back Hannah, install Valentina, which clears a tag. Like, that's pretty good on tempo, honestly. I think, actually, this is makes sense. Like, we're so far ahead, we can just keep pushing it. So, if we do privilege access, like, do we run HQ first for a hedge fund? It's, like, not a very good run. I would love to be able to discard the Fermenter. Like, I'd rather have it in the bin than anywhere else. So, we'll do Seb from hand first. For Valentina. When Valentina comes in, we can remove a tag, gaining credit, or gain two credits, remove the tag. Privilege access will get a resource in. It will probably be another Hannah. 
Uh, this is going to be a lot of choose program nothing. It's going to be a huge click turn. <laughs> need a single Audrey, it's all we need. So then we can hand again here. Feels like we're doing a lot to not do much, but now we have two practices in HQ, so we can just get a click. Uh, we could also run this to get a tag. No, it's not good. So now we're back to three clicks, right? Like it's it's bizarre. If we can clicklessly get a tag, we can win the game. So far in which way is Seth good? I don't die and not many, and not many. Uh, I, I, I don't have a, a comment. Um, so if we steal skin, we could do, no, we just run here. We've done enough weird tempo crimes. Now we'll know the whole hand. It's ice, ice, gatekeeper. So we're likely to draw into a Stargate in the near future. So I think we do run HQ. If we run HQ, we'll be up to seven cards. Ah, uh, we don't really need to do that. After sedated draws, 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 then we can run if he breaks lock. So I think we'll just do fermenter. Install friend of a friend is fine. I wonder if steel skin into Stargate was an angle here too. It would, but then we don't have enough clicks to like install the Stargate run, and then we just see the top three cards. So now there's two unknowns in HQ, so now we want to run HQ. So Fermenter, Fermenter, Daily Cast, Botulus, Banhar will put on HQ, whatever. On two credits, we want to run HQ. With HQ, we can go get two card draw cards, so probably Steel Skin Diesel, and we're just trying to close the game out. Uh, we want to get a tag somehow. We could always do with Friend of Friend install Hannah. We can even, if this ice is res, like just get a tag. Seb is in good intimidation factor? Yes. Seb isn't intimidating. So we know Gatekeeper, Unknown Ice, Tithe, two unknowns. Two cards. So we just want card draw here. So I'll do Diesel Steel Skin, I think. Praxis Praxis is also not bad. Seamless. Okay, that's an unknown. Good to know. We have the Diesel. So if we do Diesel... So we do friend of a friend to install Hannah, clear the tag. So do we actually gain a click? Because we spend one click, one click to gain. No, it's like neutral, isn't it? No Stargate yet. Okay. Just jumped and say hi. Hey, Ilya. So that I get jump scared tomorrow when I'm watching the VOD. How's it going? Hopefully your tomorrow is good. Thanks for dropping in. Okay. So we're not doing much. We'll just go R&D for single. We probably should go HQ again for a single. We don't need to install most of these cards. So it's like fine. Uh, we probably can just do friend of a friend into Hannah. We don't really need more money, so I think we're just spending clicks for the sake of it. Uh, so we'll take a tag to install Hannah. We'll use Hannah to clear the tag. Like, it, it doesn't do anything. It's money. It's money. R&D for a single. Nico, we can just trash that. It's not a great draw for them, but we'll just run back and see another. The problem is if he draws this, he puts something in the remote server. With Seamless, we actually are scared of it. We have more money than what to do with it. So now, like, Stargate probably comes up. If he installs Lago, we have a 2 and 9 chance of hitting Stargate. If we mill it, we can always, like, run HQ, get Praxis. So we don't know what this is. That was after a draw. We lost some misbones. Okay. Ice on R&D, probably the Tithe. Oh my god, started turn triggers, Hoshiko stuff. Uh, Bonhar. So we don't know what this is. We have a whole new army installed. We have a whole army. It's a whole all our friends. So this Jaguar gives us a tag. That seems acceptable because we can use it to install the friend of a friend. Uh, I think Stargate is very likely to win. I just don't want to lose in their mode server if it whiffs. So we're going to go for this. Uh, we've been holding on to this Arwaseris crew forever. Calling in favors, lost the botch is totally fine. So this Jaguar has text on it. Uh, we won't double charm it. We're just going to take a tag, which allows us to install a friend. Uh, then we'll break the two subroutines that matter. We could take a core damage. It's a Nico, fine. Okay, so we're tagged. So we should clear the tag, then run HQ, then run R&D. Uh, we know Seamless, this could be the tithe of the Gatekeeper. We'll run HQ here. We still have double charm. We have so much money because we're literally not spending money because we're not breaking ice. If Seb is more like a deck challenge, would you be willing to try the same with Nat? Jokes aside, it feels like Seb is really tailored to use new cards that include tags. Uh, no, I would not play Nat. 
And that's because Nat's payoff is so uninteresting. Like, fundamentally just uninteresting. Like, Seb is cool. Seb allows you to play with weird parts of the card pool. Uh, Nat is just a credit a turn. I think the payoff to getting a credit turn is just, like, fundamentally not the sort of Netrunner I want to pursue. If you're not using Breakers, what do you use credits for in this deck? Uh, trashing stuff? Looking frightening? I don't have a good answer. There are some cards that work with Nat, but at the end of the day, if my goal is just to get one credit a turn, right? Like, Hagen. That's good to know. I don't know. Seven cards left. If we Diesel, we'll probably get Stargate. Trashing stuff is handled by Bones? Yes. They just purged? We don't need that money, do we? Benhar, R&D. Uh, with Diesel for Stargate. I think the Lou with the 40 card option, Nat left my writer. Yeah, exactly. That was the cool thing about Nat. The thing is, like, when I want Neverner, I want something functional, but not only do I want functional, I want it to be interesting. And, like, Nat is just anti-interesting. Uh, so this, in theory, we can Devil Charm. We can also just take two damage. And then we, well, we don't have no breakers. I guess we do Devil Charm this. And that is the new shell I'm using for 1.16 to 2.2. Uh, Archer, Cloud Eater, Retribution. Yo. What? If we had to click here, we could... Oh, no. Okay, well, all of those are not very good. How many Devil Charms do we have left? One more and four cards. Well, we just run into here for a single. Yeah, that's some really big ice. Like, Thunderbolt Dream is alive and well somewhere. Two cards on the heap. Uh, I think we do Aqua Ceres, Aqua Ceres. We have one in hand. We don't actually need to do that. Uh, we don't need money. Hannah Hannah is probably the best. Can Devil Charm those versus Thunderbolt? Oh, that's true. We can't. We can't. Uh, we can. No, you can. You Devil Charm plus Aqua Ceres crew. You can. You can totally do it. Yeah, you take a tag, which like that's the idea, right? Why Charm just ban her this turn and crew it next turn? Uh, I just don't think there's much he can do on two credits, but you're not wrong. I just think the game's going to be over in two turns, so we don't have to be that precious. We also had a botch list. We just destroyed it. It's fine. R&D. Uh, just Stargate. Oh, wait. We should get a Aqua Ceres down because it's probably a tithe. Yeah, it's a tithe. It's an encounter. Choose a connection. Okay. Yo, when where where are the where there's so much ice. <laughs> there's so, so much tag hate in this deck. Oh man. Uh I think retribution's meaner. There's so much ice hate. Oh, we'll run HQ, just clear tag. Or tag hate, excuse me. We could run back for the win if we didn't destroy it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we couldn't run back for the win. That's true. Well, we just would have archived it, right? Uh, what do we want here? I just think friend, friend is fine. And just remove a tag for one. There's a cloud eater. So what's he drawing? Government. Top of the deck is self-growth. Credit, credit, ice on R&D. How much ice can we get? Oh, in the remote server. So that's probably the Brasilia. We kind of have to check that, though. I don't want to trash the top of the stack because we have our uh, devil charm in there. So, uh, Banhara will put nowhere. Probably should have put it on HQ. So I'm just going to start with a Stargate. Uh, we could lose to double Seamless into 5-3. If that's the case, we'll just check it later on the turn. Because I'd rather not have to. So this sees two new cards. Archer, Self-Growth, Tithe. Ugly. So now we have to check this. So this is just a card and a credit. This is, gives us a tag, which we can install the friend of a friend if we want to. Uh, this is probably the Brasilia, right? We could just destroy it if we would win, so it may have been correct to leave it. I don't feel too pressured. Do we play the Privilege Axis here? I think we do, because losing it to the Tithe damage is pretty bad. So if anything, we might want to like Privilege Axis Archives to just get a botchless on this. So Seb, friend of a friend. Maybe we would die to snare at some point. Install resource. I think an Aqua Ceres crew is actually better than the Botulus. And then we'll install the Botulus on 
No, we'll just botch this. This doesn't do anything. Insufficient MU? Yeah, you don't say. Oh, I should never do it like that. Whoops. I haven't learned. Fermenter first for MU. You're right, we should have, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, we definitely should have fermenter first. I didn't count MU. I forgot. We, we will technically have a console, uh, but I just don't think we're going to need to hit that button. Like, we're just not spending money. So I just need to do it in the right order. So friend of a friend, resource will go for Aquaceris, and then botchless on tithe. Then we click on the card. You don't drag it, and then you hit done. Okay. So now we can hand on the remote server. We'll actually take another tag here. That's annoying. Oh, we probably should clear the tag first, uh, genuinely, because it makes Jaguarundi have another subroutine. It's like minor. I think we're making small misplays here. So net damage we don't want. We died a snare in the remote server. That'd be kind of fun. Spending a click is cheaper than a tag. Uh, bump, bump. The botches have been good because we can't throw in all ice, so it's good that it like invalidates the server. This is going to be the Brazilia, right? We just have to respect that it's not. Oh, Marilyn, do we know that? So that doesn't shuffle the deck. We'll just remove a tag. Oh, actually, let's not do that. Let's hey, friend of a friend, I think. Yeah. I don't know if we needed the fermenter money there. So what did they just draw a self growth program? That's a Brasilia, right? Oh, I shouldn't trash there. Oh, that was no, oh, definitely didn't want to trash there. We got lucky to draw the devil charm. So this can actually be a massive archer. That's fine though. Botulus, botulus, fermenter. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't have lost the practice there. That's actually pretty bad. Uh, we'll put this on R and D. So the question is, how big can this be? Now, this is going to be four credits, so we can safely run HQ here, I'm pretty sure. And then we can bring back another Aqua Ceres crew. And then with Aqua Ceres crew, we don't need to Stargate this turn because it's only two new cards. So we just want to run HQ to hoard Aqua Ceres crews. And then we can run this. Brazilian Grid is good. We actually probably should have respected it. Because that means the Archer will come in at 7, 8, 9, 10 strength. Uh, we can currently only get to 8 strength without a second Aqua Ceres crew. We cannot ban her in R&D because Archer is a Brazilian Grid. Crits us. Yes, 100%. Yeah, we have to wait until we have double Aqua Ceres's. But we've been mismanaging this late game a wee bit. Jaguar, okay, that's new. So we should know that the hand is Seamless, Jaguar, Gatekeeper, Tithe, Archer, and Brasilia, we think, is here. Uh, okay. Let's just draw a bit. Hermes would be good. Obviously, it wins the game. Uh, I just think we installed the Aqua Ceres crew. So can Sedata get two ice on R&D? That's an issue for us, actually. Shit. This is the problem. Is like it's probably right not to interact. It's probably correct not to interact at all, and just to like draw a card and click for credits. We definitely messed up by throwing out the privilege access for no reason. This is a lot of value we threw out. Can they res both ice on R and D? They don't need to be able to res both. If it's tithe into Archer, yes. But the problem is like they'll derez this stuff because uh, Brazilia doesn't care what server the ice being derez is on. Yeah, we lost a Praxis. Oh, we removed a game from Praxis. This is the most Praxises we have. So here we just wait for him to flood. Like, we unfortunately don't have to do much. Uh, we don't have to hit for Mentor. We can. We're just going to keep our hit points. If he purges, it's fine. He's not doing anything, and we just run HQ every turn. We should be running HQ every turn. Yeah, why not? Oh, very cool. Okay. How many practices in the bin? All of them. We have all our cards. Oh, in the bin. Excuse me. We have double, maybe. Yeah, we have double. We can get those on HQ. That's a good point. So here, I think we returned the Brasilia to hand. And now we can run R&D for a single Stargate run HQ. Uh, Banhar will put on HQ, I think. So now we just Stargate. We probably should have pre-res the Brasilia there. If we pre-res the Brasilia, we bounce one of the ice. We probably bounce the innermost, which is Archer. I love the log says it is empty. Is that what it said here? Yeah, he probably should have pre-res the Brasilia. 
Uh, no, I don't think so. Elvigar is an interesting card in Thunderbolt. It is, it is. And that means that he might be actually on full copies of Ikwas. Because three Ikwas takes you to nine. Okay, yeah, appreciate it. So if you res an archer, that's fine. Oh, Hagen, sick. Hagen is annoying. So now he has no money. So it is reduce, take a tag. Thanks. Trash. So this is probably the archer. Please win? Ugly. Ugly. What is this game? We just can't deal with ice forever. We can solve another Stargate and go in theory. We'll wait till next turn. He can barely afford the mana arm, So we'll do Praxis Praxis, just like value down. We have to clear the tag, of course. Jaguar, okay. So he can't Archer next turn. We're going to remove the tag before we forget. And I think we just click for credit. We could practice here. We have no good reason to do it. Tithe got derezzed, mind you. Um, so now he has a mana arm in hand. We're just going to run, trash mana arm, then on three, what can he res? So now I think we have to put Benhar in R&D. This might be the Thunderbolt deck. I don't think it's doing anything. The problem is that we just don't have breakers. If we had breakers, this wouldn't be a problem. So now I'll put Benhar in R&D for safety. Maybe click the Fermenter so we have space for a Botulus. I don't think we need to. We're being very greedy on this Fermenter for a game where the money doesn't matter. The money doesn't matter. If he purges, it's fine. Like, we win. If he wastes the whole turn. So I think we run R&D for single. We want to get the mana arm down. And then we'll Stargate. So he has mana arm in hand. An archer somewhere. Oh, that's an agenda. Oh, that's an agenda. Oh, we need those. Oh, you know how many Stargates we fired? Nice. Cloud eating the bin. Ooh, GG. Well fought. Couldn't find... <laughs> couldn't find an agenda. Agenda for life of me. Yeah, yeah. Some cool lines you have. We click for credit just though we could have clicked for 12 instead. Oh, we click for credit instead of cracking this? I think it's fine. Maybe we should have just taken the fermenter, but I do think if sedated actually purges, like it's so good for us that we don't need to do this. Zephyr's so Thunderbolt actually quite a fun matchup, both balanced and they're low quality. Yeah, hey, thanks, you too. Yeah, Josh, you in? Weird. Definitely weird. Uh, it also still feels like this deck might be more playable in Hoshiko. At least when you're bottom out with Hoshiko, it doesn't, like, you do start losing credits. Woot, you want to host? Ned Jogging used to be in chat all the time. It's just, like, all in caps. Yeah, okay, cool. I met Jogging at Worlds a couple years ago at FFG Worlds. I think I signed his playmat. He made, like, top 36. It was sick. Let's do one more. How are we doing on time? It's like four o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Bet you all good live. Asa group. Okay, cool. So this is going to give us a run for our money. Um, there's a lot of good Asa decks out there. I've been enjoying Asa a fair bit. We open with the Miss Bones. That's nice. We don't have a Bonhar, which maybe we should be on three of. Best of luck, have fun. Uh, went for the mulligan there. Okay, so we have to figure out what kind of Asa group there is. There's the uh, Holloman ones, the Cohort ones. They all present a lot of problems for us. Uh, some of our best cards, Miss Bones, Bonhar, and then, of course, uh, Hana. We have no card draw on this hand. I'm looking at uh, Shurgamba Bones and being happy about it. That might be wrong. Do we have to mulligan into card draw? Like, the deck is really fast. So, like, what's our best line? It's like, sure gamble, miss bones, run the remote server, see how bad the punishment is, probably draw. I think miss bones is worth keeping. Bones is great. Yeah, bones is really good. Bones is arguably better than the sure gamble. Uh, unarguably, maybe. 
It's just like understanding that we actually have to get our click compression. Like Lagu is really, really good. Okay, this is a good mat, uh, set for bones. Spin Doctor, okay. We don't have to run that. Don't play a hedge fund. Ice HQ, nice. Okay. So let's see Nablative here. It's an MIC. Can't be rezzed. So Gatekeeper's fine, whatever. Ablative is okay. Lycian. Oh, sick. Okay, so this is probably Tuna's list? So we lose a credit. I feel like that's a very fair trade. We have to remember we want to face check this to run this last click. So it's going to fire. It's code gate and barrier. And why not sentry? Uh, harder to Banhar. So we lose a credit and a click and end the run, gain a credit. So it was res for two credits functionally. I think that's still a fair trade. Like forcing the corp to spend two credits to protect Rashida. Uh, maybe that's what you expect. But we just have to understand that every turn, if we run this last click, it's uh, it's fine for us. Problem is like we have no tempo here. Maybe we should have like mulligan for a uh, lagu. It's banhar damage. Yeah, with banhar you just do all three unless they can still break it. Then you have to make decisions. Like if we have a buzzsaw down, you probably don't do three. You do two. It says if Enigma would have been better. Yes, but losing a program to a face check can win you the game. But I agree. Ooh, that's a good start. We're very very far behind with this hand, and like this is the sort of matchup where you feel really bad playing Seb. Uh, let's draw. Okay, just run server three. But like, when are you meant to be able to do Seb stuff? With Bonhar, you can still take three regardless of type chosen. No, no, if you have a breaker. Oh, because they're the subroutines. You're right. You always take three. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it doesn't matter that the subroutines have, say not there, right? That's kind of sick. Uh, we have to steal skin here. We have Aqua Ceres. Devil Charm, that's the best we got going for us. So let's see how we can leverage that. Because the thing is, like, trashing one subroutine's ice is okay, but then, like, making that impactful in this matchup when we only have Stargate's hard. Oh, not into Luminal. Oh, sick. Fine. Okay, so we have a window. We have some breathing room here. Steel Skirn. Okay. Uh, generally don't want to click for credits to place your gamble. That would be bad. So the other option is install Friend of a Friend. Wait, what's the math on this? Like, how bad is this? Install friend of a friend for a click. We go down nine. Then click it. We go up. We go to, to nine. We install Valentina for free. Then we clear a tag. Uh, like, this is what this sort of stuff that Seb forces you to do. Now, if we had, like, Hannah, we could actually, like, make tempo. But we're unfortunately using Sebastian in a way that's really, really slow. I'd argue we probably shouldn't have taken a tag. Is Aqua Saris crew better than Valentina here? So that was what? Oh my god, that was terrible. That was three clicks for five credits. I wish I didn't do that. That's very, very bad. <laughs> spin Doctor getting trashed. Looks like there's another Spin Doctor coming. That was three clicks for five credits. Was that what the math was? Oh, plus Valentina for free, right? That's worth something, I guess. Yeah, five credits and a Valentina. Okay, Spin Doctor. So jogging is looking for something to score out. There's sometimes Ikoas gets stuck in hand. Fall off second click is bad. Yeah, it is pretty bad. Uh, so we can Aqua Saris, but unfortunately, like a blade of barrier is so good into Aqua Saris, right? Like if we're spending four credits to trash in a blade of barrier, who's winning? Uh, it's not us. Draw. Okay, good. That's why we play Diesel. Okay, Banhar is really important. Uh, so I think we probably do Banhar, and like we still need Hanna. We still definitely need Hanna. We have slow econ. Can we afford to get the daily cast down? Or should we do Sir Gamble? Now, what are we throwing out? We're probably throwing out friend of a friend. So do we want five credits now? Four credits now or five credits over a couple turns? I think we want four credits over a couple turns. Well, with Fermenter, actually, I think we want to just have money now. Because we might have to install something ugly. Uh, Praxis gets us access to a uh, friend. That's it. So server three being a Rashida is the worst case here, I think, because this deck is not running seamless. It's on, uh, what's it called? Holloman. But I'm glad we're playing this because this is a sort of matchup where like you don't have time to do Seb stuff. Where like just having Hoshiko being incentivized to run, like that's the biggest issue. It's like you need to make some sort of value runs, and it's so hard to make value runs in Seb. Like running R and D, gaining a credit, flipping your identity, uh, getting a card, means I can afford to run R and D for a single, let alone pressure HQ. And we should be pressuring HQ. I think we should just be pressuring a bit more. But the problem is like pressuring is antithetical to setting up. 
I don't know what server three is. We're also as a deck like really weak into working prototype because we care about our resources heavily. Not that like we're turning wheel or twenty. Excuse me. Okay, so that's a Holloman. So this could be Holloman into an agenda. Uh, we just want to force some reses here. With this hand, should we force reses? I think we'd better put down our Aqua Sarah Screw Devil Charm. So we'll put Banhar on HQ. So this could be Holloman into move over score at server three. That actually would be a pretty wild line. So sorry, can I undo? Hey, Andre Penguin. Yeah, we were on Hot Pursuit Cat. How you doing? Let me move Banhar to the server three. I don't know what server three is. I think it might be an agenda or a Holloman. So I think this hand is bad enough. We can just get rid of it. Having a Lagu here would be good. Is that cool? Can you move Banhar? I don't think you can move Banhar. We'd have to do like undo turn. Okay, thank you. The other options we can practice to install Aqua Seris crew. Uh, from hand, install friend of a friend. Yeah, that's probably a bit better on tempo. Because I just don't want to lose these two cards. I'll take a net damage to check this. So Seb for Aqua Sarah's crew, friend of a friend for... That's fine. We'll install this. Then we'll run server three slash take net. Can I take net myself? Yeah. Continue encounter. I lost it, guests. Prototype, okay. That does make sense. We do need to get rid of that. Uh, so here we can probably friend of a friend to clear a tag, but you notice like with one card in hand, does Benhar do anything? Is this a matchup where we can float the tag? No, because I think you trash Benhar very, very quickly. So at least if this is a Holloman, we're not losing this turn. All right. We need a top deck, a uh, Lagu or a Diesel or a Steel Skin. The best thing jogging can do is not draw economy. <laughs> Like for us, because then like we actually do pressure two ice on their mode server. Uh, the deck is on three ablatives, one brawn. That's kind of tricky uh, because ablative does require something from us that we're not very good at producing. Brawn, though, is a bad resin to us. So we deal with MIC and brawn relatively well. We don't deal with drafter that well. We don't deal with ablative that well. I do think this is a Holloman. Could be a Managarm setup. Could also be a Mavirus. Okay, so unfortunately we can't do much here. Uh... I guess we'll put Banhar in server one. Action, in case you want a uh, purge, the fermenter. Us going to 30 credits doesn't have an impact on the game, funny enough. So we'll draw. I'm running HQ. There might be an Aqua in there. We just need to force some money out of Jogging's pockets. If it's a drafter here, it's not that bad. It's a gatekeeper, that's totally fine. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't want to trash that. Didn't want to charm that i'm trying to mash access hq a blade of isn't as bad as magnet we can probably get about seven crews this game if we really aim to uh the game will be over before we get seven crews so do we want to make this zero strength and aqua saris crew it punching hq might be our like only lion but i think we need to punch the remote server drawing three here is actually kind of bad for us yeah let's try and do it whatever it looks like his draw has been a bit ugly, so the HQ pressure might be fine. But we just need to draw and get down like a Lagu immediately. MIC, not good to see. Draw. Friend, okay. We could run server one and force a res. There's nothing with four subroutines that will kill us. And Jogging doesn't have a lot of money. So if one of these is Rashida, it's bad. Obviously, we know this is an upgrade in server two. Uh, putting on top of the Spin Doctor did betray that. It's a Lycian. Oh, wait, we knew that. That's fine. So we take three damage. That's okay. I totally forgot that we knew what this ice is. We lose this hand. This hand's whatever. Died him a virus. <laughs> this is Spin Doctor. Okay, cool. Not the most important thing to trash. Yeah, it's all good. So sometimes you actually let us trash it. Obviously, we trash it for free with Miss Bones, but with like three Ablative in the deck, having Spin Doctor on tap is actually valuable. Uh, so sometimes you do want to let the runner trash it, even if they trash it for free. It's something that I'm learning the more I play HB is like, there's a lot of recursion now with like, I don't think this deck is on a uh, course, but hospitality, but with three ablative barriers, it does make some sense. Nico. Okay. The deck is on one Nico. So that's probably what we want to pressure next, but like, 
You know how many card draws we would draw with Hoshiko? Ugly. That being said, we don't have Hannah. And we don't have uh, our shelter, which is exactly what we wanted. So now jogging needs to get enough money to make the remote server too difficult. So we're doing okay. We just need to face tank a bit more. Just keep face tanking. We have a, a 12 credit fermenter coming up. I always called it Bren. Uh, Bren? I don't know if we got a pronunciation guide on that one. Ice HQ? Draw first. Okay. Credit. Great. Now jogging did not develop the board. We love that. Uh, that's good for us. So we can probably put this on server three. Uh, we just need to draw a fair bit. And that forces uh, him to res this before we get through the blative. Draw. Draw. So on five credits, what's the most subroutines that could be resed? I actually think getting the Nico down and being aggressive is right. It's the cost of us drawing. Like if we draw and find a lag with this is better, but jogging has to res this. So the ice in the deck that has multiple, more than three subroutines, all cost six or is the Lycian. So if this is Tuno's net deck, which it looks like it is, this is a safe enough run. Because if you spend a drafter to take the two fermenters out of her hand or res a gatekeeper, like I don't think we care. Yeah, this is totally fine. Wait, what happened? Uh, what? What happened? I ghosted through that. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think uh, auto pass. Yeah, I've never seen that before. So trading three credits to take on the Nico, like this is a huge swing. Now, well, the Nico stays because we can't get through the blade, but we forced a gatekeeper res, which we're fine with that. So now we can run server two and take down the Holloman or the Mana Garm. So even with nothing we have, we are putting on enough pressure to slow the game down. Now there's three ablatives in the deck. Now resing an ablative when it doesn't do anything is okay. So now we want to take down a Holloman or a Mana Garm because then jogging has nowhere to hide. We don't have a hand. <laughs> like we need more than this. But if this is a Holloman, we're feeling pretty good. It's a Mana Garm, great. So Agenda's in HQ, don't really have anywhere good to go. Tithe, this deck doesn't have a Tithe. I know what this deck is. This is Tuno's deck. You don't see Leish in a lot of ASA group decks. So this deck's on like two, one Tributary, which at that point is going to be an issue. And then like two Holloman, three Spin Doctor. I think that's the influence. And then one, uh, the powers that be. I think that's all 15. I like this deck a lot. I've been grinding a bit of it. All right, so this one's different though, like because with Holloman, it's not like the Wage Workers decks or the Cohort decks, where if you trash those, sometimes it's hard for them to score on a remote server. So this can only be uh, a Luminal or Vitruvius if it's an agenda, because the deck is only on four twos and five threes, and it kind of needs Holloman. Fermenter on seven. I will put it on server one. Draw. Hannah's great. Hannah's really good. Draw. Hermes is good. Honestly, I'm going to start putting more random seams and snares in the deck. Surprise, the damage is good these days. It is. It's definitely good. The deck's also on Tuma Virus. No, okay. So we could do Hermes Poke Centrals. We definitely want to get the Hermes down. Oh, that's exactly what we needed. We needed this a year ago. Nico draws two cards there after man with mandatory. So now jogging suddenly on nine credits. Purge, totally fine. We wanted the turn off there. So now the question is like, how do we get Hermes down? Because Hermes can pull the game apart. Hermes and Benhar is enough pressure. We actually have no good use for this money. This Fermenter is a bait we have no breakers so hq is the the threat there could be a spin doctor again it wasn't rezzed if it was a prototype it wouldn't have been rezzed there uh we got a drop your ability to reverse engineer opponent's deck is impressive uh it's a good deck i like this deck a lot stargate is definitely good so i think we just set a pressure this turn we install the hermes what does praxis give for us uh it's hard to ice up archives but praxis gets us friend aqua Seras crew it can install daily casts so like we could privilege access here. Wait, uh, we don't have enough clicks, but we could privilege access for Hannah. I think we just installed the Hermes. I don't like showing this. There are only so many aces with Lycian. Yes, that is the biggest thing. The Lycian was the biggest tell. If I didn't see the Lycian, I wouldn't immediately be like, oh, I know what this list is. Server three, okay. Uh, always trash. Nice-ish. Okay. So let's talk about this. I think there's an agenda in HQ. We have shuffled nothing back with Spin Doctor. Actually, I haven't been paying attention. We've gone through 23 cards. We've seen two points. So one of these is an agenda. It's probably not Server 1. Server 1 could be a Holloman or Working Prototype. 
That's almost all the deck or powers IV, right? Uh, so server two, server three, one of them is an agenda. And no matter what hollow in it, it goes somewhere else. So I think our play is pressure HQ, force a res, and then we can charge server two. Uh, we can probably... Hermes is actually really good in this deck, it seems. Thinking. We can also like first go ahead and practice uh, archives. If we practice archives, we can get back... I don't know. I generally don't know. I just don't want to lose the practice to like Banhar damage. So should we like practice preemptively? Because if we can get a res here and a res here, then we can do Stargate and go for it. So maybe we should keep the practice because if we lose the Stargate. We cut Amanuensis. Yeah, floating tags was pretty bad. Crew? Could be the crew. The thing is like crew into this matchup. It is a prototype. Okay, it's an ablative. So that just gets rezzed. So we're just going to take one damage. That's probably the best case scenario. We lost the crew. Okay, so we could have crewed that ice. That's fine. We'll hit an agenda here. Yeah, we definitely will. So we need to return one of these to hand. Our options, thinking, is if we want to go like wild mode, we install Stargate. So our like... Imagine we lost the target there. We could actually install the target from the bin. That'd be kind of really click compressed. So one of these is an agenda. One's a hollow man. No matter what we bounce, it means that we don't score. They don't score out. The other options we can bounce the R and D ice. We can crew archives. Install Hannah. Install Aquaceris crew. Then we can run R and D. Like the safe play is bouncing one of these, but like the really cool play is stargating and going wild. Hermes is good in many decks. Good day. Yeah, Seymour, how's it going? I said this earlier on last stream. I really liked your comment about the uh, the the tier list not being perfect because we didn't for an audio log. So like bouncing one of these is the safe play. Bouncing this is sick. Then what do we do? We privilege access our archives. We can float a tag in this matchup. We can privilege access our archives. We install Hannah from hand. So that is kind of credit neutral. We get an Aqua Ceres crew down. Install a fermenter. We don't actually need that because we spend a click to gain. Yeah, we don't need to do that. But if we install Stargate, like imagine we lost a Stargate to damage. If we install Stargate, go Stargate. Let's just do the safe line. Okay. Can we run server two? Yes, we can. MIC could hit us. That's totally fine. We can't flow Texans. Banhar is too important. Oh, that's true. That is true, actually. Yeah. So I think now we just force reses here. Uh, the deck has two Vovos as well. So this is Vovo into Braun. If it's a Braun res, like we're really, really happy. Uh, I think we just force the res here. How bad is Drafter? Drafter is kind of bad, actually. We probably should respect Drafter by getting uh, multiple Praxis down or Aqua Ceres Cruise. So I think if that's the case, we probably privilege access for Aqua Ceres Cruise. Have you provide feedback? Yeah, it's really good feedback. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think I think letting drafter fire here is a huge problem for us. If this is luminal, we get blown out. Yeah, let's go while we can. Play safe line. That's not anarch. I know, I know, but uh, we we just didn't have enough clicks to get the stargate down. That's our next line. So we'll do Sebastian to install uh, Hannah. Getting cards out of hand might be wrong. Play a resource. Aqua Ceres crew is the most important, and then we'll botulus. The deck has no magnets, so we can botulus R and D ice. And then that'll be a problem next turn. And then we don't have a friend of a friend, so we just have to remove the tag normally. Yeah. Professor Work, thanks for the tier list. Hey, my pleasure. I tried to look it up. It seems like it's pronounced with a rolling R and a longer A. Bran. It's Welsh. Yeah. I'm not expecting you to say it. I have no idea how to say it in Welsh. I'd love to hear a Welsh person say it. So the more aggressive we are, the worse working prototype is for us. It's a spin doctor. Okay, so we need to get that out of the way before we go to our... Uh, Stargate. But that being said, if the working prototype bounces one of these, it's like kind of ugly. Server four, we have a hand to check that unless they Asa it up. Okay. Trash. Lost of Praxis. Drew a botulus. Fair trade, maybe. But now I think we blow open HQ. So we've seen two agendas. We've gone through 26 cards. So we're expecting three more agendas in play. I think this is an agenda. We bounced it. Uh, but the problem is like res, res, bounce happens here potentially. But at least we get all the information. Yeah, yeah, you're good. 
Yeah, okay. Res, res. We're going to bounce something. Haul him in. There you go. So the, the, usually the bound heart goes back. Yeah, this card's messed up. This card's really good. So six cards, and the card goes to the top of the deck. Are we looking forward to DJ too? Yeah, DJ would be good. Some fair trade botulus and Trader Joe's the other day. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> tank, tank. So which one? Obviously, Banner is like very powerful because we have no like pressure this turn. Um, but that being said, we don't have to pressure this turn. It's like Rashida, we have to pressure this turn. We can always strap Botulus to this. It was Benhart, yeah, that makes sense. So we need to get Benhart down this turn. Uh, Spin Doctor is going to do pretty good work here. Now, Aqua Saris crew does almost eat the server. We did lose a Praxis to random damage, so DJ Steve HQ would be like the the, re the awakening we want here. We could run server four. I'm a bit scared of Drafter here. I think Drafter is going to have a huge impact on the game. Devil Charm, though, now we don't have to give a shit. How bad's Rashida for us? Is Rashida bad for us? I think if Jogging draws three, like, that makes HQ more ripe. I think he has agendas in there. This is a good game. So if we run the Rashida, we can install Devil Charm, run that. We have to trash this for two. We'd be down on one credit with a Fermenter. Uh, running HQ, we also have a chance to just, like, find the Mavirus sooner than later. We also could use, I think going HQ finds an agenda. Rashida on so maybe we'll get rid of Spinny. Yeah, that would be like the best case is that we let Rashida fire. Because I actually want Jogging Devil loaded hand here. Because probably the line is like Managarm, Remote Server, and then Ice, and then Agenda. And that's fine. We're fine with that because we're not running the Remote Server. So if that's the case, like we probably just draw, get down Badhar, get down uh, Devil Charm. Oh, sorry. We don't draw. We just do this. It's like we're not using Sebastian this turn, so you can always like Sebastian the remote server. And no matter what happens, you're happy. Like if jogging reses, that's fine. If jogging doesn't res, it's fine too. Admittedly, one of them maybe forces the Aqua Saris Devil Charm interaction. Maybe we should just be playing a cleaver. I think I found this when I played Shaper too. Is like there's so much ping and ablative out there. Just having like a cheap breaker uh is totally fine. Like, do you break what is the text on propeller? I don't want to search it there. Uh Propeller subroutines or strength? Oh, but it's zero strength. Okay, so Propeller is not infinite, cheapest ablative tech. All right, she to draw three. Eight cards in hand. Spin Doctor might get taxed out here. Banhar is back on the table. Only three cards in hand, but we're definitely going to get a fourth card after we get an install here. Botchus will be at three. Unless there's a Mavirus on the table, even there is, we can Devil Charm Panic. We might have to crack the Fermenter this turn. Rashida plus discards will maybe get rid of Spinny. I just read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Server four. Lagu. Asa goes first. Nice steel in hand. Very, very good. Cheapest is probably Corroder. Yeah, Corroder. Cleaver's not bad. But Corroder is like good. Technically fine. So weird that I've come across. Apparently it's pronounced ablative. I always say ablative. Ablative. I think ablation falls into like the lever lever camp where I've heard both of them. Maybe I'm thinking of ablution, but like. I've said ablative before in my life before this, and I don't think anyone's looked at me strange. Ablative or ablative? Ablative. Not sure. Best case scenario, steel skin scarring hits um DJ. We have one DJ in 12. How many practices do we have left? Uh none. So DJ's the only way back in. This step is not on Amakua, no. We probably should have. So there's the Managarm server fully operational. Uh oh, money solved. Card draw last click though. Love it. A blood of not a blood of <laughs> I pronounce it a blade of so two cards in archives. Uh botulus fermenter. Where are we putting Banhar? This is huge. So this is probably agenda manic arm. Matryoshka would be good. It's like we're tr trying not to break ice. Matryoshka would be okay. It's just like so much deck slots, and like we already struggle with deck slots in Seb. I think Amaku is almost definitely the right play because Amaku Aqua Saris crew, and then it has a reason for us to run centrals. I would see Amakua being probably the most correct option. Or just my fly like for, for weird situations. Okay, so R&D is probably free. Server 4 is either Vovo, Managarm, or Mavirus. Two cards in Archives also could be Mavirus. So if that's the case, we need Spin Doctor to get popped. We probably run HQ here. Which means if we're running HQ, we likely have to Aqua Saris HQ and just get like a nice rip. So I think we're going to put this on Server 4 just to make Jogging uncomfortable. 
You spent all those credits on Lava Zoma to keep. How's it going? I don't even know it's that good. Tank, tank. <laughs> Amaku Leech is very hot. Yeah, that's where we started when I first built Seb. Is that exactly? So we're going to ferment her here. So now we probably Hanna for clicks this turn. So we want to force a res here, but with 20 credits, forcing a res doesn't do that much. So I'm going to run Archives to force a Spin Doctor, and then based off of how this interaction goes, we can either go uh, for HQ pressure, or we can go for... Uh... Okay, it looks like there's agendas in there. So now we can go um, Hanna, Stargate. My C strength for Amaku Thresholds, another thing that Sub does better than the host. Yeah, exactly. That is one of the few things it does. He does better. Looks like one unseen. Okay. So do we handle the remote server here? No. I think we just do Hanna. There still could be a Mavirus on the table, but that's okay. We have Chisel Charm. So we'll gain a click, Stargate. And then we just have to hit a 3-2 on here to bounce one of these cards and hope it's the agenda, which is a 50-50. It's an ablative. Okay, we're not a threat three. That's sick. Uh, unfortunately, we well. Oh, we're on threat three. Oh, damn. Never mind. I forgot we was on threat. <laughs> I've been playing around a blade. We're on threat three. What are you talking about? HQ also probably has an agenda in it here. So after this, we can run HQ if this doesn't pan out. So blade of installs non-agenda card. And it has to be on a different server. So uh, options here. Rashida coming back. Managarm coming back. Important. It installs from hand too. A spin doctor is not, we don't have to worry about all three spins are out. So we're actually going to have like a good, hopefully mid to late game with Stargate. Now, the thing about Holloman is like you can score out any agenda in the deck and have clicks left unless it's a 5 3. And if jogging is scoring out the Hall, it's a mana garm. Oh, so that means, yeah. Oof, lost the Aquaceris crew. Am I seeing archives would be an option too? Yeah, putting it on archives, but we just run back, right? We can't win this turn, but we have to get lucky we bounce the right thing because this is probably Volvo into Managarm or double Managarm. I think we would have seen a purge here if there was a Mavirus. Uh, okay. Oh, and one from hand. Okay. So we know this is also probably Mavirus. So we know the first one has to be an agenda, right? Because it can't be double agenda because of the way the Asa works. We might get our stuff bounced this turn, so please get lucky here. Ah, uh, that was good. So this has to be the agenda of the innermost. Okay. Res Managarm. But why? To not bounce the Managarm? GG? No, I have no clicks. It's not GG. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. So we'll steal the Luminal. And very much because Asa Group says, we know that the first one has to be an agenda. Or, sorry, this is not an agenda, and then this is not an agenda. So we'll steal the Luminal. The Vitruvius is in the bin. There is no more recursion the deck is on only powers that be so this goes back to the hand so jogging has to figure out how to ice up this sufficiently enough uh and we have botulus into devil charm banhar aqua Saris crew so hard to get out of this but um hermes pretty cool wait there's no agenda in there right you're just protecting hall of men yeah this deck is not a corporate hospitality uh, it's on, I forget. I played this deck like last night. I had a lot of fun with it. We're going to have gameplay up on this, on the channel. I'm just, so we're not here on Thursday. So I just recorded some like very straightforward gameplay and I'm just going to put it up on the channel without fanfare just to have like, not a deck dive. Cause I didn't build these decks that we played. But trivies with the counter would save them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it would go into HQ and we have a shot at it. Uh, but we know that this is an upgrade. Yeah. Over advanced with trivies would have gotten there. Yeah. Trash the top cards, but don't you have to get this out of the bin? Okay, there you go. Yeah, I just think I know what this deck is, and it has no way to pull it out of, of the bin besides Spin Doctor and Vitruvius Counter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and the Powers That Be. Powers That Be could do something, but it's clearly not on the table. Yeah, this is really, really hard. So what did we prove it? Hermes, good. Gives us more reach. Stargate, good reason to run. Ice Destruction, good reason to run. 
The problem is we set up so inconsistently. We're like, this is why I love diesel is that it's the most fastest thing we can set up because inherently we need all these cards. Friend of a friend honestly feels terrible. It just feels like a card you put in the deck so that your ability does something. And it honestly feels kind of rough. It feels, I, I think we played it really poorly on tempo, but getting your Lagos down is so important. Getting your Miss Bones down is so important. Now do it up. There's nothing they can do to survive Benhar, Charm, and Crew. Uh, no, nothing. Undo turn. Yeah, okay, sick. So while jogging sorts this out, I'll just show you what this deck is. It is this one. So things that bring it back. It's just fully up hedge fund. So the ice we have to worry about, we know where the Lycian is. We know where the Blade of, and Blade of, mind you, doesn't install agendas. So the ice that could be on the remote server, Tributary doesn't do anything. MIC Gatekeeper, maybe MIC does for a turn, but you have to win the whole game with the 3-2 in the bin unless you can score a Vitruvius with a counter. Uh, but this deck is really good. It's actually one of my favorite Ace decks right now. They could try a line that bounces Banhar or Crew. Yeah, bouncing Banhar is, like, reasonable. Uh, it's still hard, but it's reasonable. Friend of a friend probably feels better with actual breakers where the money's more important. But the thing is, like, to me, Friend of a Friend doesn't feel like a great Econ card. It feels like a smoothing card because you have to clear tags. But like, how many tags did we take this game? And I think that's inherently the issue, right? Is like, Seb. No, you're good, you're good. I appreciate the predicament you're in. I want to ice R&D, but that's bad, yeah. Even like, still R&D is a way that we can win the game. So we think there's an agenda in hand at a minimum. So two, four, five, six, because we bounced one. 79, 10, 11. So there's still nine points between R&D HQ. Stuff is good. So they could res like Mavirus into something. Army Stargates could be. Yeah, it seems it's uh, it's enough pressure. Yeah, but this is really cool. like I I think if we had like Manuel here, well we actually technically would have won on R and D, but um this just feels like more pressure we want to put off, especially when we can threaten like one or two strategic ice destruction. Baseline friend of a friend is sure gamble value with hoops plus plus. Yes. And I think hoops is a really hard thing in standard right now. Like as much as possible, you want to avoid hoops. Again, I think Jeff said it. It's like really difficult in a faction that can just do busted things with a single card that you have like pretty good things with multi-card combos. What the hell? Wait. Oh, that's an agenda. Oh, so they jogging did install ice. So we couldn't tell the Asa. I thought that was the Asa install. Oh, super cool. I thought you double installed in the remote so I could tell where the agenda is. Yeah, we didn't pay attention. So it was installed, then this, then in the remote server. So it was a 50-50 which one the agenda was. Very cool. Okay, that's scary. So now do you need two Vitruvius counters? Yeah, Vic counters for the win. Yeah, Vic counters is really good here. Let's do this. So we have more of a game. So two Vit counters means Stargate is an issue. Uh, so the question is, do we just contest this stuff? We've seen every ablative. So the recursion is done in the game. Uh, we can balance something to hand. Prototype is probably fine. Man and Garm is still tricky to deal with. How often do you use Friendo for tag plus minus tag? As much as possible, we want to do minus tag. We took plus tag this turn in this game and it wasn't great. Uh, so now this also allows, allows net jogging to reposition ice. I don't love that. I don't love that for us. Fair bit of discarding to do here. That means HQ will be a bit nicer. So Vitruvius counter, mind you, goes into hand. The other option that might have been right there is to do one Vitruvius counter and then install the agenda in here. Obviously, like, you still have a Stargate problem. Okay, uh, this is going to be tricky. So I think we're going to put Benhar on server four. So now the money goes, because that was very expensive. So we run server four, we're going to lose this hand, which is fine. Jogging has to res here. If jogging reses here, we can trash all this sort of stuff, but we want to do that before the Vitruvius counter. Place to run archives, run HQ three times. I think it probably is. Uh, we definitely start here, because I do think we're going to end up running HQ. The problem is like we can only run HQ. Well, we have to Aqua Saris HQ, HQ. We have no good way to get it on tempo tag. Oh, we can. We can Aqua Saris crew the ice just to install a Hannah. That actually is probably correct. 
So Vitruvius is in hand, one and six. Mavirus, we got hit. That's annoying. Um, that's definitely annoying. Okay. So now we have to think. We have one, three one and sixes on HQ, and I actually think there might be multiple agendas in there. I'd be surprised not to. We've gone through uh, 33 cards, and we've seen four points. So we probably run HQ, use Aqua Saris crew to destroy this and install the Hannah to get more clicks. And we just take like four shots at HQ, I think. I think it's the best line. You can also pad HQ to make it a one and seven. But if you pad HQ, then you're worried about... Uh... He also needs to get the last Iqua to win. So we won't double charm it. We'll Aqua Saris crew to take a tag to install Hannah. Then we'll trash it. Then we'll get a couple shots at this. Oh, just that one, I guess. <laughs> Uh, only one in there? I think there's a chance. And like you just have to hope that R&D holds. And obviously Jogging knows better about what's in uh, his hand. Oh, wow. Uh, that like, if that's the only one in hand, you have to be a bit scared here. But it might be right to do one Vitruvius counter and then jam into this remote server. Because I don't know. Maybe we can deal with a single Ice Manicar. Maybe we can. Hey, hey my pleasure too. Thanks for the game. Hey, cheers. Yeah, it's been a while since we saw Jogging. Bye, chat. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, always in caps. That's really funny. Sick. Oh, my. Okay, cool. Lol. Very neat. Later. Hey, bye. Let's just check really quickly. So I'm going to do search control F. Can I search Sebastia? How soon before we find? Uh, okay. So we want to say uses Sebastia. Okay, so uses Sebastia. Let's see how many times that this worked for us. So I'm going to go to the top, I think, and we'll see how many times Sebastia fired. And like, it's hard to tell how good that is because sometimes just getting like the Hannah installed clicklessly this turn is actually fundamentally very important. Uh, so let's see. So we installed Valentina. That was a bad turn. We installed an Aqua Saris crew. That was good. We installed the Hannah. That was good. We installed the Hannah. Seb fired four times this game. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Four times this turn, this game. And like, we're putting pressure on. We're trying to do as much as we can. I think Seb would have fired a bit more if we were a bit more aggressive. We're obviously not going to play this perfectly. I think this deck is a bit complicated. But like, that's the thing. The more we play it, the less Seb it gets and the more something else it gets. So maybe there's a couple cards you could consider to put this faster. This would actually be a good matchup for Hot Pursuit. Would we rather have Hot Pursuit than Hermes? No. Nuva much? Oh, you can Nuva more than that. I think you can Nuva more than four times. Uh, anyways, that was that. I feel like it's not great, but it's not awful. It's not great, though. And, like, when you're playing against Hoshiko and stuff like that, like, it's easy to be great. It's easy to just get a free card draw. And you can still play some of the most powerful cards there. Right? Like, we have deck slots to make our thing make sense, and I don't think it has to be like that. Like, you can just play general stuff, unfortunately. Thanks so much for hanging out. It's a Tuesday stream. We won't be around for a while. We're gone on Thursday. Uh, we'll have some video up, I hope. It's going to be like something straightforward. It's just going to be like gameplay without context. Besides like, this is a net deck you can play. Like for instance, we played that Asa group deck a bunch. We played some of Sebastian K's Wormwood deck, currently undefeated on JNet. Um, so check that out in the next couple of days. It'll probably be like a bit different than it usually is. Uh, huge shout out to a lot of people, especially these names here and daily cast patrons that help support the channel. Taking a whole Tuesday afternoon off to stream is honestly an absolute pleasure, but it only really makes sense with the financial support from all these names and more. So thanks so much. If you kind of like this sort of stuff and you want to see more of it, you want to support the channel, any amount of uh, support is incredibly appreciated. You can find a link in the description. Uh, yeah, thanks so much. Not sure if I should even mention it. There's a little card game that I think you might find interesting to take a peek at sometimes, though it might be complex enough for you, but even at, even the name, but it's not even out yet. And even the name isn't certain yet. Uh, you can... Beagle, you can name it, even if I don't care about it. Maybe someone else who watches it does. GG's, yeah, thank you. Four clicks and eight credits is honestly not too bad. Each sub triggers a lot of compression. It is worth knowing, though, that a lot of times the sub triggers did something bad for us. Like, we installed Friend of a Friend to use Friend of a Friend to get a sub trigger to install a Valentina. That Valentina fired three times that game, I think. Uh, so, right, like, it give you two credits, but at what cost? Oh, Wormwood, the game. Yeah, I'm familiar with Wormwood, the game. Um, I've read through the rule book. I'm interested to see more when it comes out. I know what that one is. I read through the rule book and I thought the rule book was like, obviously the game's not out yet, but pretty messy. And specifically it was a game that said, there's no timing structure. So just resolve it however you want to. And that's like such a weird red flag to me. I want to play the game because it has some like interesting ideas in it. It's like Netrunner adjacent. Uh, there was a preview of it a long time ago on Shut Up and Sit Down. I think we we're also critical about Wormwood because we thought the art was like AI art and that's not my favorite thing. But it turns out after some research that art is not made for Wormwood, but a lot of that art was licensed for Wormwood, which is why the art looks, you know, 
like very expensive for considering someone's first board game that seems to be independently produced. Uh, thanks for stream wave. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think a game that has a, no timing structure, I've heard feedback from other people that the game collapses in on itself once you play more than two players. Uh, that's something they probably need to fix. I don't think you can have a game that's like now running and say no timing structure. Like that just seems ripe for uh, issues. Any cards you quickly change your mind since the last tier list? Oh, many, many. Do you want to do it real quickly? Actually, I, I hate to do the fake sign out for those who don't uh, hang out as soon as you hear someone say it, that's just about it. This is for you. So let's check really quickly. Kind of guys Tuesday and saw your streaming. What's good? Yo, we just played Seb all day. Um, we played a faster Seb. It's like seems like an okay deck. It just doesn't seem better than any other Anarch you can do. How are you doing, Jectivist? You're not doing Mansion Runner stuff, are you? Um, tier list stuff really quickly. What do we change on? I think we're definitely with Jeff gonna go hopefully in the next month or so do a recap video on what we think about it. Just on the runner side, oops. Uh thing that we're wrong about. Amelia is probably unplayable. Fazerum is really good. I think Fazerum is very good, but mostly in context of Shaper, it's very, very quite good. Um, uh, this one, the criminal one. That one's good. Wind of Opportunity is actually very, very, very quite good. Uh, not too much else. I think there's a chance of, like, it's hard to tell whether breakers are good or not in a set release. It's a problem we've always run into on the basis that, like, uh, you can't tell what the corporations are up to. I like my own video. Don't, don't make fun of that. No mention runner snare bear cabin instead. Oh, very cute. Very, very cute. More Radlands, more Dune, and more of everything else. Is that this weekend? On the corp side? Ah, ads. Jeff makes money off this, so this is totally fine. Canadian tire is not good. Super frustrating. We booked out a card, a tire change appointment at Canadian Tire. Booked out on their app, showed up on Saturday morning. Oh, we're not open on the weekends. Why can I book out a tire change on your website? This one we don't watch. Um when you're not open. Why is that a, a possibility? Uh, other things here though, what's good? I think there's a chance that these two are bannable. I think we were a bit soft on this, but I do think like ban me please probably should put Holloman and I'd have to argue that Tributary goes up there. Uh, I think working prototype is probably, it's not a faction staple, but like it is very, very good. It's just not every HB deck will run it, but functionally I think just about every HB deck that's doing assets will run it. This card is way better than any of the other stuff. It's way better than uh, than than Piranhas and all the stuff. Working prototype is way too low, and I think uh, Warm Hospitality or this one should be lower. Otherwise, it's hard to tell. I don't think we've seen a lot of like adventurous stuff on the corp side more than we have seen runners. We've seen a lot more runner decks where people are pushing the envelope. A lot of the corp decks, and this is not too surprising, are just like, oh, it's the same stuff but better. Right, like, oh, this is Asa with Holloman. This is Asa with Cohort. Oh, this is Ag Infusion Glacier with, you know, Charlotte. Uh, the Charlotte also should be higher on this list. I think Charlotte's very, very good. Better than Cohort, maybe. That was a fast reaction to cover the vid with your face. I'm, I'm watching. I love seeing these decks because they're so different than what I'm used to. What do you mean? There's some gameplay videos now I haven't noticed to be a problem, but if it is, I'll see that they fix it. Oh, cool, Beagle. Saucy from list definitely got elevated above slots are hard to the role player. I was banned me please on Saucy for a while. Oh, not until June. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I think those are my biggest things that I would change on the list. Oh, Boto. I think Boto is actually really good. I think Boto is a faction staple. I think if you're playing Barriers in, in, in Jinteki, you're playing Boto and then you're playing Braun. Uh, sorry, Ablative. And then maybe you're playing Braun too, especially if you're Ag Infusion. But Boto is actually really good. And I think Hammer is playable, meta dependent. Uh, we said these were tech cards, but like I think Hammer is still technically a tech card. I also think Nuvum is... Uh, but Boto is definitely fine. Is Cohort on the list? Yeah, it's at the top. I think Cohort's a really good card. Yeah, it's a faction staple. I think it arguably is. Uh, yeah, that's mostly it. But Charlotte's really good. I'm slightly wrong. Powers that be. I think this active policing too, like we'll see decks where it makes more sense. I just think there's a lot of cards here that are like inherently weird build arounds that people have not made. But I think our runner side's more accurate than the corpse side. But corpse side, I think takes a while to like lock onto. But yeah, really fun. I'm excited to see what we both think about this in like, you know, a month after this. Faction Staple seems high for an asset card. Do we think it does stuff outside of assets? Cohort? Cohort specifically, yeah. Yes. I just think like Cohort's playable in every faction that's playing assets. Like I think it's one of the best assets in the game. Right, like I played it in NBN a fair bit. Um, it's obviously very good in HB as much as like you do give your opponent a lot of ability to deal with it. Uh, it's obviously very good in Atea. You don't play an Ag Infusion, right? Cohort is the moon pool of the set. I'd argue that it's more playable. Like moon pool, you have to build around more. You can just put this in any asset deck and feel okay about it. Right? Like you can play moon pool NEH, but that's a weird deck. But if you put cohort in your NEH, it's a fine deck. A staple of the asset fan faction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is true. It's like when we mean faction staple, like 
that's like a weird thing that comes down to the last one is like Fiserum and Tangler is probably a faction staple, but in Shaper. So it's not always that faction or like archetype staple, maybe. But um, I just think Cohort is very, very playable across a lot of stuff. So maybe that's a failure of the, uh, you know, the names. That's a very, very good feedback, I think. Uh, we're also like seeing some amount of play right now, which is kind of fun. Okay, that's it. No fake outs anymore. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, hopefully for those I'm seeing on the weekend, safe travels. I'm excited to see all y'all in person. Uh, we have to update this deck because I'll share this. So wait, actually, let's do this really quickly because I do this behind the scenes. Why not do this in some company? Fake out again. So what do we do to this make this deck good? We cut these. We cut those. We played two diesels. Uh, we cut the console. We played Hermes 2X. Uh, what else did we cut? We cut all the breakers. And then we played two botulists. Whoa, no, no. Then we played Daily Cast, which is really funny. And what else did we do? Thanks for stream. Yeah, thanks for dropping in. There was, can I remember what else we did to the stack? I don't think we were on three botches, were we? Hold on, I closed Jaina. I just need to update this because this is the list I usually share. I usually share the last list. Yeah, double fake out. We're, we're, uh, having a hard time there. Oh, it is three botulus. Yeah, okay, it is three botulus. And then what's our last card? Oh, two Banhar. Wait, but we're on 45. Three botulus, three fermenter, two stargate, three aqua Seris crew, two miss bones, two Banhar. We must have cut something because this is too many cards. Does anybody know what we cut? Are we on three casts? Sorry, I know my camera's in the way. Um. Oh, no manual. Okay, cool faster so yeah man thank you august all right I, I, I this deck is definitely playable you can definitely play it it does do things it's fine on that note see y'all next week ciao